Prof Mahanu, please unmute. Okay, good morning. Good morning, good morning students, good morning colleagues. We are happy today to have you in our midst. Today it is the 15th of February and we are all excited to see all our first year students who have gathered here for the module BPT 1501. These are the students from Higher Certificate, ABET, all the B at B at Foundation Phase, B at Intermediate Phase, and also PGCE student B at Senior and FET. We welcome you in our student orientation program. May we just observe a moment of silence in honor of uh, those who lost their families due to the pandemic and all those who lost their loved ones, their parents, their sisters, their siblings, friends, and all the other myriads of uh, death cases that occur in our society. Shall we observe a moment of silence? Thank you. As we start with our program, I want to quote the words that go with us as human beings. All the I will quote this words from the phase, Holy Bible. At I hope phase. also other religions may have similar words. They are taken from the book of Genesis 8, 22. The verse reads thus, as long as the earth exists, there will be seed time and harvest time, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease, will never stop. So what does this scripture mean to us? As students, this is our seed time. As you are being orientated today into various aspects as we see on the program that is displayed before us, we are planting as academics, as support staff within the College of Education. And we are awaiting to see the seed growing into a plant. And uh, we want ourselves one day to benefit from the seed that will be planted and there will be a fruit. I'm now going to call upon our executive dean, acting professor Makwe, to welcome the student of the College of Education. Professor Mpine Makwe, our executive acting dean, can you ascend the podium? Professor Makwe. Prof Mahanu, Prof Makwe wrote on the chat that she is struggling with connection. I'm sure she's trying to join with her phone. Okay. Uh, Maud, can you call her in? Talk my when she's in. I think she needs to unmute.
Professor Makwe, are you in? Okay, while Professor Makwe is struggling to join, can I call the Dean of Students or a representative from the D Office of the Dean of Students, Dr. Sipuka, but I know Dr. Sipuka is not here. Can I get a representative from the Office of the Dean of Students? Uh, can you mention your name so that your mic will be unmuted on the chat? Mod, check the name of a rep from the Dean of Students uh, so that we unmute. Nato Tepo. Nato Tepo, if we can unmute his mic and uh, he represents the Dean of Students. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sepo Nato. Um, I have the privilege of representing Dr. Sipuka, who is the Dean of Students. He unfortunately is unable to be with us this morning. Um, I'm going to be brief so that we, that we allow the program to get along. Um, as I said, I, I represent the Office of the Dean of Students. My, I, my active role is Manager Student Governance in the Office of the Dean of Students. I think it's a very important uh, initiative this morning that to, to have um, student orientation um, as we're having it this morning. The Office of the Junior Students is, is responsible for all student related matters uh, at the university. We engage uh, with student dealership, uh, SRCs, uh, issues of student governance, uh, student. Um, student structures and organizations. We also work with students with disabilities. Part of what we do, colleagues, is to... Students, you know, Hello? Part of what we do is play an advocacy role for students, particularly when students are facing issues uh, of difficulties at the university is to ensure that we, we make sure that the SRCs, uh, student structures, are able to interface with various departments and institute, institutes within the, within the university. We make sure that the SRCs and student structures are able to present the issues before um, the leadership of the university as in management or executive management to colleges, to deans, to directors across the university so that we are able to uh, as far as possible, maintain a cordial relationship between students and, and management to ensure that um, the gap that may exist between student and management at the university are as close as quickly as possible um, to ensure that through advocacy, we represent the issues that some students are unable to take forward. We will know colleagues that the university has been facing uh, difficulties over the last few years or the, for the longest period on uh, service delivery issues. Our role as, as the Office of the Dean of Students, as I said, is to make sure that this interface between the SRCs, student structures and management do happen with the one uh, objective in mind to, um, to resolve issues when they arise and to advocate that some of the recurring issues um, are dissolved, are resolved permanently. You know year in, year out, in fact, for the last few years, we have had to deal with issues of, for example, uh, higher certificates, which um, on a yearly basis become an issue, a burning issues across the university, leading to student protests, leading to campus shutdowns, which some of them recently ended. Um, to resolve issues around student data, uh, particular data for um, examinations, to resolve issues of release of, of results, um, so we, we constantly play that role to bridge the gap between the university uh, management and the SRCs. Second to that, we, we, our role, colleagues and, 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 and students, 
is to ensure that we develop a layer of students, uh, student leadership that can represent uh, your aspirations, your interests, uh, and your desires for this, for this university. You may not know, colleagues, that uh, over the course of the last few years, the number of students who uh, joined the university from, um, from high school, directly from high school, have increased exponentially, leading uh, the university to be in a position where it has to rethink its interaction with, with students. Younger and younger, yeah, more and more, more, more and more. that will be held today the, that will be held this week this is the first of the three-day student orientation and support seminar i greet you all and i am really really humbled and honored to welcome you to the first um seminar to uh, to the university first i want to welcome you to the university of south africa and secondly to our beautiful, beautiful College of Education. Some of you may not have studied at university, let alone studying at a distance. Learning at a distance can be a very lonely process. And learning online as well is completely different. And it's COVID that has introduced us to these type of learning modalities, especially learning online. And sometimes, because it's an unfamiliar environment and, and it's something that we are not used to, it can be daunting. But in this new environment, in this new online environment, or a village that I may call it, is you just became part of, we do things differently. And because we do things differently, it's also important to welcome you in style, to let you know that you will not be lost. And the whole idea of this student orientation seminar is to take you by the hand and show you and introduce you to different things on how things are done around here and where you need to go should you find yourself in the middle of the maze. That's why Professor Mohano and her team will show you all the rooms in this house in this massive village that we live in, and in this particular home that you will be residing in. And, um, and that's why in this house, you will need to know what is in each room. Um, as you study in an online space, you'll find that it's like a house. There, it will be a place where you reflex with friends, which we call it a chat room in a virtual language. You'll find another room where you gather information you need, which is your library. You'll also move to the next room and find your tutor or teacher there. There is another space where you will be able to see how you are performing. So all these rooms are there to assist you to become part of this, um, this college. Your learning journey has already started. You have signed up to become a member of this family of SEDU, a home to 100,000 students, which is the biggest college in the university. However, you'll never feel that you are one of the 100,000. We are going to embrace you. We are going to make sure that your individual ambitions, dreams, and aspirations for the future you desire will be looked after. And, and our role here, is to ensure that you reach your destination. All these dreams and aspirations, you will reach them. As a distance student, as, as I mentioned before, it's a lonely, lonely journey. There are times when you will be lost and you won't have anyone to ask questions to. There are times when you take one road and it takes you to another place. There are times when there'll be big rocks on your road, but that you may need to climb or go around them. However, as much as the road is not as smooth, all these are part of your journey as a, a UNISA student. 
as a, a said student. And you need not to worry because you have a formidable team of lecturers, support staff, and administrators who will ensure that your, your learning journey is as seamless as possible. Today, as we begin your journey, all the presenters of the students' orientation and support seminars are here to hold your hands and show you around this big, big university of ours, and not only around this big university of ours, but around this home that you chose to become part of. We can only assist you, but 100% of all the work, it's all you. So you need to, to prepare for your studies right now on day one. There is no time to waste. I'm told that you'll be expected to submit um, something every week as in, in a form of assi assignment. And there'll, there'll be no one telling you to do this. It's all you. So it's important that you start your day and you start already now. You've just gone through your first hurdle by deciding to study at this August University. Let us all stay focused in our specific lanes. You do the study, we'll do the academic thing, but we all run together in this academic race. It all needs all of us as students, as lecturers, as support staff to be creative, innovative, passionate and com committed in our own different spaces, in our own corners, in this big room, in this big house that you are working on, to become a solution to what you would like us to do. We need to stay resilient in order to achieve our goals. The completion, of it, the goal of completing your qualification as a registered student at SEDU. I'm particularly thrilled that you are in good hands. My colleagues will be right there by, side, by your side, supporting you through your studies. And this is a most special student orientation and support se se seminar for signature courses. Signature courses are one of those courses that we are extremely proud of as a university, that we went out into the world to show them that even in our context, where there is connectivity issues, we can still present a fully online course. So in doing so, let's try to be to, to get together and work together towards this goal of completing our qualification. Every village and every home has a, po has a person who keeps it warm and makes sure that you are all well fed and looked after. And in our in our SEDU home, is Professor Makanu, the manager of teaching, learning, and student support, and her team will make sure that all these are done properly. And hence the student orientation and support system. They didn't want you to walk into this home and get lost and not know what you need to do. I'm also thankful to the presenters from the different departments who will show you how things are done in this village. And above all, I'm grateful for you, students of SEDU, for choosing us, for choosing this home to be your home for many years to come. Yes, we all need to stay in our specific lanes as students and staff members and run our race with perseverance, patience, commitment, determination, and passion. And yes, we need to, to do this in order for us to perform. A, a perform and be accountable in what we do. Performance, excellence, and accountability do not mean being the best, but they only mean doing our best in order to achieve what is planned. They, all, they only mean ha having an adequate shared understanding of quality processes being creative in order to produce what we need to produce. We therefore need a culture of responsiveness and agency. Let us focus on the student as we also value capacity. We value you as our students. We value building capacity and being accountable. So in all this, we are grateful that you are here to, to be part of this seminar. It therefore gives me great pleasure, dear students and colleagues, 
to welcome you all to these important events. The Student Orientation and Support Seminars, whose aim is to empower students in their quest for knowledge. So we believe that the presentations that will be delivered today will be of assistance in small and big ways that add another touch in doing your work as a College of Education student registered for our qualification. As you sit and listen to the presentation, dear students, kindly note some questions and comments that you can share with the presenters and academic lecturers that you can share with all of us for the sake of good practice. We welcome you in this village and we hope you'll help us build this home together. I thank you all and for honoring the seminar and I hope you'll find the sessions fruitful, empowering and, and being what you expect them to be. Thank you so much and enjoy the presentations and enjoy your day forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mbakwe, for welcoming all the students here. And I believe they now feel at home. And I like the analogy that you used, that SEDU, SEDU meaning the College of Education, is a home with different rooms. And in this home, we are having so many apartments and people that will be taking care, taking care of us. And Professor Makwe as our acting executive dean, is the mother of SEDU taking care of us. And I am in the teaching and learning. And uh, there's a team that is working together with me and all the academics in the College of Education, we will take care of your needs. Um, I see some comments saying, how can I record? The recording will be available on your module side. When we are done with this session, we are going to post it on your module side. So don't record, don't fiddle with the appliance. We are recording the session and it will be on your module site. So the questions that you are posing, there's a team that is responsible for answering. The academics are on this platform. They will respond to your module questions. And the student support team, we have uh, Mr. Shabangu Steven, we have Mr. Tebazo Moloto, we have Ms. Raisibe Matome, we have Ms. Maud Ngobeni, we have Ms. Um, Maliwa Skosana Vuyogasi. We have Ms. Dihangwane Mapula, who will be responding to the administrative questions. And the academics will respond to the module-related questions. And specifically today, we are addressing the signature module, as uh, Prof. Makwe has already mentioned that. So we are going to write the questions on the chat site and there will be responses given to your questions. Without any waste of time, I'm going to call upon the student representative uh, council member, that is the secretary of NSRC, that is Ms. Shatadi Poshoko, to come and address you and tell you what is NSRC in higher education and what is its function, what is its role. And when you are out there in the regions, wow, how will they help you? How will they liaise with you? Because they are on main campus. Ms. Shatadi Poshoko, over to you, ma'am. Address your students as a leader of the students. Over to you, Ms. Shatadi Poshoko. Shatadi. Okay, if if Shatad is yet available, can we allow Mr. Karaboshai Sedusa 
chairperson, that is College of Education Student Association. Mr. Shai, the platform is yours. Thank you very much, Program Director, Prof. Mahano, for giving me this opportunity. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, support staff, General Secretary of the National SRC, Mrs. Shadadi Pashoko, Regional SRC, Sejusa Leadership, Office of Student Support, Academics, School Directors, of the Department, the Office of the Executive Dean, Prof. Magwe and Prof. Mabunda, fellow students. My name is Karabo Shai, Chairperson of Sejusa. Sejusa is a College of, of Education Student Association. It's a UNISA student academic structure under the College of Education and the SRC. Sejusa is a representative student body that, that takes care of the academics affairs of students in an environment that is devoted to excellence. Our mission is to promote student achievement and preparation for competitiveness by fostering and providing sufficient knowledge to fellow students at large. Sejusa in supporting students, this current COVID-19 pandemic changes not only the utilization of technology in education, but the pedagogy strategies in the future. Despite some of the challenges we are facing, we at least the student adapt the new learning in a positive way. We have received many inquiries from first-day students regarding to my UNISA website. It is not that complicated as you think it is. Just give yourself a time, you will understand it in no time. We encourage students to use examination tools that were implemented by the university. For an example, IRIS and Invigilator app to avoid compromising of the qualifications. I have highlighted uh, most of the things that we are dealing with at Sejusa. We advise students in choosing the modules that are offering under their various qualifications curricula in order to avoid choosing non-degree purposes. We, we update the student regarding the up, upcoming application period and registration. We advise first-year students on available programs offered by the college. We assist the students with applying for bursaries, for example, example, NSFAS and, and Funzalu Shaka. We assist the student with appeals due to um, underperformance. We advise students to register with South African Council of Our Educators, says, especially when they are doing third year and fourth year. When, then when they are done with their qualifications, they can apply for permanent SAIS card. SAIS is a professional council for educators. That is to enhance the status of the teaching profession, profession through appropriate registration, management of professional development, and in calculation of a code of ethics for all educators. The requirements of this are certified copy of ID. When are you using smart ID, copy both sides. Certified copy of metric, academic record, for first year students, they will also require proof of registration for current academic year, a police clearance, and 200 rand for registration fee. On behalf of the Sejusa leadership and student at large, we are pleased with the work done by the academics, sub supporting administrative staff, and entire college in supporting us through various initiatives which are aimed the for supporting students. Through the initi initiative, we are located within the same category as student in University of Florida, Florida University, and Mexico State. As we embrace the importance of the gathering today, we are saying to the college, let's continue to put more focus on schedule as parents of all, of all student educators. We have regional office at Sunset Campus Building 10. Um, we also have a Facebook page called My, My Sejusa. We open Monday to Friday. We also have WhatsApp group where we assist the student on a daily basis. If you want to be a or you want to ask any question, you can kindly text uh, our Secretary General, Mrs. Adelaide Mafafo, at 079 546 4877. Thank you and have a fruitful year. Thank you, Program Director.
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shai, our chairperson for SEDUSA. SEDUSA stands for College of Education Students Association. Thank you very much for making it clear how the students should join SEDUSA and what your role is in assisting the students. So thank you very much. The NSRC will be represented by Ululuto Gwabeni is the deputy secretary. I hope he is in the house. Uh, Ms. Modungobeni just unmute Ululuto Gwabeni to address the student. What is the National Student Representative Council for? And what is their role in supporting the students? So we just want to hear from you, Ululuto. We are waiting for you. Uh, I'm happy about the questions that are coming on the uh, chat site and also the responses that the student support team and the academics are giving to our students. Ululuto, uh, is he in? Yes, he is available. Okay, thank you, Ululuto. This is your platform. Address the students. Tell them what your services are, how you will represent them, how you will assist them, how you will guide them in an ethical manner. Over to you, Mr. Gwabin. Has he been unmuted? Yes, Prof. Okay. But we can't hear him. Ululuto. Okay. Um, I can hear me. Can you oh, hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. Continue, Mr. Gwabini. The students are waiting um, for your address. Uh, yes, first and foremost, um, let me let me thank this initiative for bringing the National SRC here. I must I must say that um, students um, of the University of South Africa, because of the of the uh, of the problems that we have been facing of COVID-19, um, campuses have been distance. Um, campuses in general have not been uh, operating um, from what they used to operate in the past, where we generally, as a student leadership, had interactions with our students on the ground every single day. But also because I was told that I must state it very clear, what is the role of the SRC? Um, the role of the SRC is to be a vanguard of students, but also the role of the SRC is to bridge the gap between management and students. Our role is to make sure that we become the voice of students who cannot be heard. Um, our, our role is to make sure that we are there for student-related problems. We are there to make sure that we service our students, but also we are there to commit 
uh, to the demands of our students. When our students have problems of study material, we must be there to make sure that we assist them to get study material. When our students are demanding that they must get proper services, our role is to go there and give them the proper services and to speak to management about the problems that are faced by our students. So that is the role of the SRC. But also the role of the SRC does not end there. The role of the SRC is to make sure that we, we become part and parcel of initiatives that seek to transform institutions. Um, in this instance, in UNISA, our role is to make sure that when students of UNISA are facing difficulties with respective new innovations like your invigilator app and all other issues that students might have, our role is to come there and say, how do we then make sure that our students get the best service? And how do we then make sure that they become assisted? So I really want to thank this initiative for us to be invited here because it means that our students have a voice. It means that our students have someone that they can actually trust to make sure that that person gets to go to management and states out their own problems with regards to what is happening. We are availing ourselves as the student leadership to say that to all first year students, that worry not about difficulties that you will face in this institution. You have the voice called the National SRC. This voice will always be there anytime when you need it. We work over time, even at eight o'clock, uh, in the morning, you can get hold of me. Even at eight o'clock during the night, you can get hold of me. So the SRC is there to make sure that students find it easy to operate in this university. Students find it easy to get services that they need when services are not delivered to them. But also we're saying to you that we plan to be your friends. Not only do we plan to be just student leaders who are there servicing your problems, but we plan to be your friends. We plan to be people who are going to be much closer to you, closer to you than your lecture that you communicate with online, closer to you than your mother that you live at home. We want to be your best friend, student. We want you to understand that any difficulty that you might have will always be here for you. As you would know that some of the students are coming straight from high school. Now, the difficulties that they face is that they come to an institution called UNISA, which is quite different from other institutions where you have your, your, your physical um, interaction with lecturers and other students. This university is different from other universities. But we plan to change that because we believe that we have students who are coming from high schools who come to UNISA and get their service. So we plan to change that by making sure that we become easily accessible to our student. But also it's not just a lip sync what we are saying. We are saying that students must not worry about what will happen tomorrow because their best friend, which is the SRC is here. So that is the main objective of why we are here. Um, I didn't want to, um, have a, a, a broad, I wanted it to be a friendly experience so that students can identify me, through, can identify themselves through me. They must identify me as a person or as a body that students can generally speak to whenever they have difficulties. And that is the reason why we are here. We are here to make sure that whenever you feel that you need someone to talk to, the SRC is there. Because we believe that beyond that, we are a stationary body of the institution. We believe we have a sense of responsibility in making sure that our students get to interact with us anytime they want to interact with us. Yes, our students have problems with regards to data. We are planning to make sure that students get their data because the university is leaning on in online assessments and students need data each and every day. I will leave my contacts in the chat box so that our students can get to understand and get to know that there is a body called the SRC that today is represented through myself, Ululu Tokwabe, who is the Deputy Secretary General of the National SRC. Um, so that's where that's what I wanted to say, but I didn't want to speak for long. Whenever students need anything, they can. I will just write my numbers and my contact details in the chat box, and whenever I am needed to come and 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 assist my students, I will be there in assisting them. Thank you.
to this initiative and thank you to everyone who has invited the national SRC here. I just want to say that we are your first friend on campus. Uh, we are your friend and we are not planning to devote our responsibility in making sure that we give you all the support that you need. May you know that institutions of higher learning are not a easy place. That's why we say that uh, we have a, a understanding that we are first community members before we are students. Uh, we understand where we come from in our communities. We have a sense of responsibility of helping others. Even here in this institution in UNISA, we understand we have an obligation and we have devoted ourselves to make sure that we help you when you come to this institution. Thank you so much to the to the chair of this um the event, but also to the program directors who have made sure that this thing happens. There's a saying that out of nothing comes nothing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Gwabeni. Indeed, you said a mouthful to be friends with the student body, to bring transformation, and also to be closer to all the students, to make sure that you are the vanguard of the student. I like that weight to give a backing to the student body. And uh, we also, as College of Education, we have been working closely with SRC from as uh, late back when I started in this portfolio 2017. We do not want to be far from SRC and Sedusa because we know that's where we are able to put our ear on the ground and try to service. Mind you, the College of Education is the biggest in, in this institution. So if we don't listen to SRC, if we don't listen to the demands and the request of the students, we will not be in a position to assist the students. Thank you, Mr. Ululuto Gwabeni. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy that you were able to come and join this session. I am now going to give just a brief, brief uh, outline on why we are here and uh, what is it that we are expected to, to gain in this session. Um, oh, I don't know if I'm sharing the right document. Uh, Maud, can you guide me? Am I sharing the right document? Now it's uh, a calendar that is visible. Okay. Is, is it the right document, this one? The pictures of all the presenters? No, this is a calendar. Oh, sorry, sorry. Let me reshare again. Am I right? Uh, I can see the presenters. Okay, fine. Yes, this is the presentation that I want to show. Uh, our dearest students, these are the people that will be talking throughout the day. At the helm, we have the student uh, dean represented by Mr. Tsepo and uh, Prof. Makwe has already spoken. We have the school director for today, it will be Prof. Patudi, and Prof. Matlon will be speaking tomorrow. I think uh, maybe they've swapped. Uh, Mr. Rankweteki will be talking about uh, the uh, academic integrity issues. Your lecturer, Ms. Mudipa, who will be addressing you on module BPT 1501, issues of student living with disability, Mr. Nkuna, Dr. Silitabani, curriculum transformation, Mr. Mohao Mukwena will be addressing you on issues of Odell and the teacher centers, how you will be seeing the recordings of lessons from all academics. Professor Jojo, who will be telling you how do we write when we are at a university, academic writing. And then uh, Ms. Shatadi Poshoko was represented by Mr. Ululuto Gwabeni. Karaboshai, you listened to him from Sedusa. Then Dr. Mpasele is going to teach you how to access your study material, 
how to access your learning management system, how to post your assignments online, and how to communicate and interact with your lecturers, your tutors online, because we are an open distance and e-learning institution. Dr. Hannaway is going to unpack the curriculum of all of you who are here today in what is in the B.Ed. and uh, how will you qualify one day as a B.Ed. graduate. And Mr. Steve Shabangu is the coordinator of student support team within the College of Education. When you are crying, you have problem with credits and whatever, just uh, send to Mr. Steve Shabangu. He has a team that he's working with, Mr. Muloto, uh, Ms. Uh, Raisibe Matome, Ms. Maliwa Skosana, Ms. Modungobeni, Ms. Mapula de Hangwane, they are all in the student support team. Ms. Moloisani is in the exam section. We'll be talking together with Mr. Uh, Daniel Rasebota today. Then Ms. A. Stradom is uh, from the library. We'll be talking with Ms. Mutati. Ms. Uh, Treasure Tipe, will be telling you about the tutor system. The tutor system is uh, like another teacher who's supporting you other than your lecturer online. And Dr. R. Wells is for counseling issues. So counseling issues normally are to deal with psychosocial matters, stress and other matters that may pertain to your mental issues and health related or any other issue that may be troubling you. Ms. Zianda Febana will be addressing you on student retention. It's another form of student support. Why are you not supposed to drop out from this institution? And uh, Ms. Masalesa will be talking to you about the regional uh, matters. And uh, I'm here. Then we have Ms. T, Dr. T. Kodisang, is also in the psychologist um, fraternity and talking to counseling related matters. Mr. Daniel Rasebota exams. Mr. D. Mulukwani will be addressing you on the Invigilator app issues pertaining to proctoring during exams. Mr. Shibambo will be talking to you about disciplinary issues, academic integrity issues. And this is myself here. And let me just give a brief, a brief background on who we are as the College of Education, SEDU. The College of Education, we last year's results in 2021 and 2020, we are a college that is performing so well. In 2016, if you can see this graph here, in 2016, our pass rate was 85.9%. 2017, it was 85.9%. 2018, it was 88.1%. 2019, it was 86%. 2020, it was 92.7%. That was when uh, we started to write um, at home, no longer at examination centers. Then 2021, when the Invigilator app was now put into action, the proctoring systems, our results came to 87.1. So we expected 491,000 um, stu students to write. The pass, gross pass rate was 74%. The written sitting, the actual sitting was 421,382 students and our net pass rate was 87.1. We are doing well as a college because we start with the year. When the year commences, we orientate our students. We don't want mistakes so that you know exactly how you are going to maneuver. That is why our pass rate over years, from 2016 to 2021, we are between 85% and 87% pass rate. That's who we are, and we are bringing you here today so that you can understand where we are going 
and how we are going to manage this. This is the context of our students. The reason why we want to orientate you, we know that you don't come from exactly the same place. There are those who come from this kind of area where there is always noise. You can't even study properly, but there are regional centers where you can go and you are able to get your study material. You are able to sit in the library and study. We hope that COVID will be over so that you can walk to the library uh, and then you are able to study. There are those who are here where data is very scarce. And that is why Ululu Togwabeni was saying, we are fighting that our students should have data. There are also those who are in deep rural areas. For instance, uh, it here I think it's a picture of uh, Eastern Cape, where it's difficult to connect. So how do we assist these students? How will they get hold of the study material? Mr. Mukwena will be telling you how you're going to get your lessons, your videos, the recorded lessons. And there are those who are in affluent areas, for instance, Santon, etc. And what kind of learning approach or modality do we use? We use online and we have also the tutors that will help you. We have people at the regions that may be in a position to see you and to assist you in the nearest region. Although they won't be teaching you that module, but they will be offering academic literacies. Ms. Masalisa will be telling you about that. You go to the nearest region. So in the past, we made use of paper, but now, unfortunately, due to COVID, we switched quickly to the online approach. That is why you see here students are connected. Even the exams, the assignments are fully online. We submit everything online. And some of the lectures, you are going to receive them face-to-face -face via Teams, when your lecturer will be saying, let's connect on this day, and then you'll be learning this lesson. Now, from high school to tertiary education, I was watching some of your chat comments there where you are saying, I don't know where to start. I'm confused. It's true. It's like this man who's jumping from one cliff and to the other side. The possibility is that this boy may fall into this ditch, but we don't want you to fall into this ditch. That is why we have academics here who are going to tell you exactly how do we write academically, what to avoid, what to follow, and how to succeed. Then let's quote Martin Luther. The function of education is to teach one to think intensively. Here you are no longer going to give answers true, false. No, match the following, fill in the missing ways. No, but we want to teach you to think intensively and to think critically, to analyze intelligence plus character. That is the goal of true education. And that is our purpose as the College of Education. The time is always right to do what is right by Martin Luther King. So this is briefly our intention today of having this uh, a seminar with you today. We want you to gain, we want you to go forward having uh, acknowledged and having attained a good uh, or grasp of what is the College of Education? What do we want to do? I thank you. Without any waste of time, Mr. Mukwena, ascend the stage and tell them, you, you saw the context of our students. How will a student in Lusigisigi manage to deal with the online education? How will a student in Santon manage? How will a student in Ramashashani, in Limpopo, Mshabuya Lingana, in KZN manager. Over to you, Mr. Mukwena Mohau. Thank you very much. In the same spirit, I would like to introduce a capable young man who will do the presentation on behalf of the team. His name is Mr. Tabang Dulamo. And tomorrow, the presentation will be done by Mr. Rosang Madiope, who I will introduce. Then the presentation of Thursday will be done by myself. So colleagues, Mr. Tabang Dulamo is um, the multimedia production 
Branding and Communications Officer. Um, he will be presenting. Uh, over to you, Mr. Dulamo. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Mogwena. Uh, thank you to, to, to the pro program director, um, to the dean of the college, um, and a very, very, very warm welcome to, uh, to the students of 2022. I uh, hope this year will be a fruitful year for you all. So I just want to present something. Um, as Mr. Mogwena had said, uh, my name is Tawang Dulamo. Uh, from the Odell Acceleration Unit. Uh, so the Odell Acceleration Unit is a student support function of the College of Education, actually. Um, it is an initiative to try and strengthen and improve the Odell mission of the university as a whole. So Odell meaning open distance electronic learning. Um, so our mission as a team is to make the College of Education the paragon of Odell in the University of South Africa. So we're very driven and very passionate about using technology to reach our students and drive Odell and be the leading college of Odell in the institution, in the entire institution. Um, our team consists of uh, a few branding elements that, that we that are all active in trying to improve the student experience um, for the College of Education students. So from the top, we have the OAU as explained right now, and then coming down um, on the side of infrastructure and facilities, we have e-learning labs at teacher centers. So this is formally a project, um, ceasing to be a project next year, and it will uh, formally become a student support function of the College of Education going forward. So the e-learning labs, uh, ICT service uh, centers, which I will dive in deeper in the next few slides that are located across the country. So we have 33 of them across the country right now, soon to be 45. Uh, and in terms of multimedia based learning, by multimedia based learning, we mean that we try to reach students through video, through audio, through graphic design, through any sort of communication that the modern student today will appeal with. So our main brand in this light is TippyTube, which is a video content sharing um, channel, which is currently uh, split now between YouTube and Microsoft Stream. We'll also go in deeper on that uh, a little bit later. In 2022, uh, we're launching Tippy Books, um, conversations in Tippy Podcast. So Tippy Books is study guide audio books. Uh, something that students have not had in UNISA for a while is actual audio versions of their study guides so that you are able to actually study on the move because we do know that you guys are modern students. The the model of education has changed to, 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 to the previous years. So we're just trying to provide as much information, as much module content to you guys as possible in as many different ways. Um, on the far right hand side, we have applied tech innovation, which is just a few initiatives that uh, that that uh, sorry, which is just a few tools actually that we use inside the Odell Acceleration Unit to actually get content to the students. Um, starting with WhatsApp Business, uh, we'll get deep into that later on, and then we use YouTube for Tippy Tube, uh, and then we use Microsoft Stream right now to share module content in 2022. To go deeper inside the e-learning labs, um, what are they? So as I said, the e-learning labs at teacher centers are UNISA ICT centers that are located in the rural areas of South Africa. Um, there's 33 centers across the whole country. Um, each of them have UNISA Wi-Fi, each of them have a UNISA support employee, and very important, each of them have 33 laptops and study facilities to be used by not just students of the College of Education, but any student in UNISA that is close to, to, to any of those centers. Um, the laptops and the study facilities are very important, well, along with the Wi-Fi, because you are able to register, you are able to um, log into MyUNISA, you are able to download study material, you are able to watch videos at no extra cost to you because it is UNISA Wi-Fi and those laptops are fully charged and available to be used by you. I will go in deeper as to where all the centers are located. Um, so these, this is how each of the centers look like. All 33 of them are equipped with laptops like this, um, tables, they have a conference screen, they have a, a monitor, uh, aircon server, UNISA Wi-Fi and everything. So these operate 
uh, sort of like a, a mini campus off campus. These are very much extensions of the university that are located in the rules of South Africa for student support, for students to actually visit and use them as much as they can. Um, as long as you are within their operating hours, there is no limit as to how much time you can spend there. You can go there every single day. There is a UNISA student, uh, UNISA employee, sorry, to help you with any support queries or any sort of trouble that you may have with regards to the, the university. Uh, this is a post uh, that's to be shared with the students very soon. So I just want to go down um, the, the, the list. So we have 33 centers across the country, but about 30 are operational right now. So I'd just like to list the towns so that if you hear your town, just know that there is a center near you. Um, in Gauteng, we have one in Forgeville and Binoni. In KwaZulu Natal, we have one in Madaden, which is Newcastle, Banguize. We have one in Chatsworth, Jolivet, Josini, uh, Paul Petersburg. Mapumulo, Richmond, Mbazwana, Ndwedwe, Phoenix, uh, Elupepeni, um, Singa, which is Tugela Ferry. Uh, we have one in Dandi and Umzinkul. Uh, in Mbumalanga, we have one in Barberton, Bushback Ridge, Mkulu, Shongwe, eh, Elukwatini. Uh, in Northwest, we have one in Atamelang. Uh, in Kuma, which is between Poch and Lexdorp, uh, we have one in Dertech, Madiboko, Madikwe, and Macau. Uh, so these are located very much uh, distributed across the whole country. So we are still yet to 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 uh, branch into Limpopo, into the Free State, and into the Northern Cape, which will happen this year with the leading uh, with the leading uh, senses that are still yet to be open. So if you do hear a town that is near you, please make the means to visit a lab. Um, this, the services are listed on this poster. It's just application and registration support. We offer e-learning and study facilities, uh, teacher development, especially for when you will be doing a teaching practice later on. Um, this is very important. You are able to use these facilities to, to, to work on your, uh, your portfolio. Um, access to video-based learning resources. You are able to view any video resource um, due to the UNISA Wi-Fi. Um, student support through WhatsApp business. The, our WhatsApp business function is operated actually by the staff in the centers. So you are able to get proper, proper student support. Also, we are working directly in hand with the student support fun, uh, office of Mr. Steven Shabangu and Rai and Tabato. So there's a very close relationship there. So we are all focused on student support. You can access the UNISA e-library from the centers and also events of community engagement and research later on in life. You are able to use the centers to conduct research on your own. Uh, the e-learning lab support have two social media functions. Uh, we have this Facebook page, which is supported by the UNISA College of Education uh, College of Education page. Please make sure to follow that. And then we also have a page that says the e-learning labs at teachers uh, at teacher centers. Please make sure to like and follow both those pages. Um, on WhatsApp business, we do have groups that are operating as regions right now. So um, if you are seeing this, it is very important to save this number, but this number also, it, it, it will be available. It is available on Facebook for you to communicate with us and be added into a uh, regional group. So we have two regions. We have two groups in the region of KZN, which is a north and a south region. And then we have a northwest region. Uh, and then we have mixed in Pumalang and Gauteng region. So you are very welcome to save this number, send us a text, we'll get an automated response and we'll place you into the group so that if ever you are in need of student support, you have a group uh, that is operated by a unique employee that will answer your questions um, in your language, in all your preference. Um, that is very important why our regions exist so that we are able to offer student support in the relevant language to wherever the student is located in the country. Uh, just to move on to TipiTube. TipiTube is a video based uh, sharing platform that we, we originally started on YouTube. Um, it exists to, for us to share module content basically. Um, we chose YouTube because at the point it is and it was and it still is the largest video sharing platform. So we found that it would be a great way for us to actually reach the students because the students are located there on a, on a regular. I know the students are watching all sorts of things on YouTube. So we just thought that we could actually slot ourselves in there and provide you proper module content, quality recorded module content, engagement with lecturers. Um, 
all at the uh, at your fingertips. Um, this year we will be migrating all the module content from YouTube to Microsoft Stream so that you are able to access the module content part of it using your My Life email um, and your My Life password. Right now, TPTube, uh, as it stands on YouTube, uh, we just passed 5,000 subscribers. We are sitting at 5,100 subscribers. So please make sure to go to YouTube and subscribe to TPTube as we are trying to grow it. We have 100,000 students in the, in the College of Education, so we still have a long way to go in terms of um, subscribers. But our one goal, our one main goal in for TPTube and why we produce module content in this format is student academic success. That is our only reason, that is our largest reason. We want to make the learning experience easier, want to make it fun, want to make it accessible to wherever you are. Um, with the provision of data with the students and with the access to regional centers and the, 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 the centers, we just want to provide content that you can watch on the go wherever you are um, as comfortable for you. Um, just to skim through uh, the, the subscribers, we have uh, as I said, we, we have plus 5,000 subscribers. So last year, um, we hit 230,000 views, so which is a major success for us uh, since we started the channel at the end of 2019. Um, we'd like to get the channel to a million views because we know we have the numbers. We know that the students uh, are there to support us and grow the channel. Uh, we know that the lecturers as well, a very great thank you um, to the lecturers and the academics that have recorded with us ever since our conception. They are a big uh, motivation as to why we do this. Their support keeps us producing content for the students. So thank you to them as well. Um, and that is our presentation. Uh, please make sure to subscribe to TPTube. Make sure to like the College of Education page on Facebook. Uh, make sure to like the e-learning labs at Teacher Centers on Facebook as well. Um, and thank you. Thank you very thank much, you very Mr. Much. Tulamo. This was an excellent outline. All the students in KZN, in Pumalanga, in Gauteng, um, in also, is it Limpopo? That's where we have the teacher centers. And uh, I saw one question on the chat saying, what about Cape Town? In Cape Town, we have our regional office in Pero office and also in George, that's where we have our centers. And these videos of lessons that are recorded, they will again be on the module side. If a lecturer of BPT 1501 records a lesson uh, via this team. It will be posted on a YouTube link, TPTube. Tabang has already given you the details. And then from there, you will be able to see all the lessons and to contact the lecturer where you have a question. Guard against the bogus tutors out there. Don't waste your money or your parents' money by seeing these people who post all over and make money out of UNISA students. We have lecturers who are teaching you. We have lessons which will be recorded by this uh, team of Mr. Mukwena, Mr. Dolamo, Mr. Rorisa Madiapo, Mr. Sibutuma. There will be lessons for every module in the College of Education. Stop wasting your money and affiliating to groups that are bogus lecturers and bogus tutors and who will be writing assignments for you. Don't waste your money. As long as you have registered with the University of South Africa College of Education, tuition is free. You don't have to pay anything to watch our lessons and uh, to do assignments. So don't waste your money. And also watch in which space are you affiliating. Let the lecturer, let the tutor employed by UNISA be the one who's teaching you. Don't be taught by any Tom, Dick and Harry, because when you fail, you'll be surprised. Please let, let us gut against that. We are recording the lesson so that our students can get the voice of the lecturer, can get the tuition from their own tutors within the College 
of education. Stop wasting your money. Stop paying your money to any person who's not employed by UNISA. Thank you. Uh, I think other colleagues will be talk to will be talking to this. Ms. Febana Zianda, Student Retention Unit, the platform is yours. Over to you, ma'am. In the meantime, Tabang, can you place the teacher centers where students can go and get help? Oh, thank you, Mr. Mukwena. Uh, students, watch on the chat box. You're going to see the tutors, I'm sorry, the teacher centers where you can go and get assistance. There are laptops there, free Wi-Fi, and you'll be able to do your assignment and post them at those centers. Just watch on the a, a chat section. Thank you very much. Ozianda, the platform is yours. Good morning. Um, good morning to all staff members at um, UNISA, um, Sedu College. Um, good morning to all first year students and congratulations on this journey. I will be sharing our PowerPoint presentation from the Student Retention Unit. Uh, if you could please bear with me. Um, can I get a confirmation that you can see my screen? Yes, just do a presentation mode so that you enlarge. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, so as, as uh, Prof. Machano has um, introduced me, I am Zianda Fabana and I'm a student success practitioner. At the, at the Student Retention Unit in UNISA. As we all know um, that um, transitioning to first year in any university is challenging and also quite confusing at times, which is why we have platforms such as orientations to guide us through the first year experience so that our first year of transitioning is an important and successful one. We at the Student Retention Unit also um, support students through our first year experience program at the University of South Africa. And today I'll be going through our roles and services of the Student Retention Unit. Our first year experience, abbreviated as FYE, program aims to provide extended support to students entering UNISA for the first time. Um, we do this by providing essential information during crucial points uh, in the student journey. This is done to ensure student success. This is, in, this is done to ensure that you have a positive experience of um, your academic journey. The, our FYE programs has different programs in, in it. We have the FYE support site, which has trainings for students to in order to equip them of the necessary skills that they will need to navigate um, their first year successfully. We also have the FYE MOOCs. Um, Ms. Yanda, can you explain what is FYE? We are talking to first years here. Okay. Don't abbreviate, speak full, full English. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, bro. So the first year experience is a program that is run by the Student Retention Unit. We abbreviate it as FYE. We emphasize on the first year experience to be a positive one at UNISA so that students entering UNISA for the first time are successful in their journey um, in uh, the first year of their studies and also throughout their studies up until graduation, post postgrad and also in um, their working experience. We have tailor-made um, this program to ensure that students uh, succeed, to ensure that we hold students throughout their first year journey at UNISA. And this is what we call the first year experience program. It's, it's for us to make sure that, um, that your experience as a first year is indeed a pleasant one and a successful one that will launch a successful career. We do this by providing information that is vital, information that will support you, information that will guide you um, in, 
in your studying at UNISA, right? I will explain in the slides to come on how exactly do we ensure that students have a successful um, year in their first year journey. We do this by offering these programs. We have a support staff, a support site that is specifically um, catered for, that specifically looks at first years uh, and how to support first years in their studying, um, how to ensure that they have the necessary digital skills, how to ensure that they have access to all the support programs that are within the university that uh, can help and support them to ensure that they are successful in their academic journey. We also have MOOCs. MOOCs are uh, massive open uh, online curriculum um, that we develop as a unit to order for students to um, register on them, to learn about the necessary skills that they will need. I'll, I'll go into the different topics, the different programs the students can look in, into the most so that they could be equipped in being self-reliant and self-sufficient students within their academic journey. We also have our mailbox that is dedicated to student queries and how best we can solve whatever issues that they are facing in their academic journey. We also send communications to students to make sure that they know that we are still there. This might be a huge college and sometimes we might feel overwhelmed because UNISA has so many students, but we send communications to students to make sure that they are never alone in their academic journey. And lastly, we also have broadcast, broadcast of videos that um, aim to share information with relevant support staff members um, and academic staff members. These are available to students to watch and so that they are better equipped in terms of whatever um, challenges that they are facing. I'll go into the topics that um, are mostly covered in the broadcast. Now, first off, we have the support staff the support site, as I mentioned. Um, that is um, the web link to go to the support site at um, the student retention unit. It's www.unisa.ac.za slash FYE. This website was created to bridge the gap between students, ad administrative, academic staff by providing information that's related to online student orientation, student support services that are available to all UNISA students. This also includes first year related information on the various services provided to first time entering students. N note that we are emphasizing first year because we know that your, as you sometimes say, first um, experiences of first uh, first experiences counts because we want to launch you into an academic um, career that is filled with success. This website is also updated on a regular basis. We also then have the MOOC, which the MOOC, its main purpose is to prepare, orientate and familiarize students with the UNISA environment. We all know how it feels to transition from higher education into, uh, sorry, from um, grade 12 into higher education, or we might be coming from um, in contact universities to an ODEL experience. Now what the MOOC serves to do, it serves to prepare you on what the ODL environment is, on how you can familiarize yourself with it, and also give you an orientation that has self paced learning so that you are able to always go back to that information and able to equip yourself so you can become a successful first year student. Now we have the FYE 101, which is titled, Is UNISA for Me? This FYE was completed during the registration period and students, with, we aimed there too, so that you can come into the UNISA environment equipped with knowledge on how to become a successful UNISA student. We also have the FYE 1500 and this 
FYE 1-500 is it covers topics such as how to use my UNISA. It, it gives you um, an orientation to our library services. You also in there would find student affairs services such as the um, the student the, the SRC. You also have um, digital literacy skills. As we all know, that COVID has uh, propelled us in a digital space. And therefore, we understand as a student retention unit that, that we all need to equip ourselves with digital literacy skills. This is what we cover as well in our MOOC. So you can go in there and brush up um, your literacy skills, your digital literacy skills. If you don't have any, this is also a place to learn what digital literacy skills are and how important those are in the UNISA environment. We also have courses like that will cover numeracy skills, study skills, and also academic literacy skills. As I mentioned, we have our broadcast, our, our broadcast, these um, are hosted regularly by um, the Student Retention Unit, and they cover regular um, programs, regular topics that are related to your first year of study. Now, these topics include how to manage your time better um, so that you can get the best of experience as a, a first year student. You'd learn on how to navigate my UNISA library services. It, these topics also include on how to best prepare for assignment and exams, um, how to access e-tutors, and also wellness and coping skills, as we all know, especially now um, in the aftermath or during um, the pandemic, that we all need to be um, mentally and emotionally um, well so that we can make sure that we are successful students. Um, these topics are broadcasted with academic staff, support staff, and other various speakers who are knowledgeable on these topics so that you can get the best experience from, from your UNISA journey. We also stay in communication, as I said, so that you feel that you don't feel overwhelmed, you don't feel that you are alone in your journey. We send emails to students, and these emails are sent at different intervals. We also there trying to cover uh, various topics, such as how do you prepare for your assignments? How do you prepare for your exams? What student support is there? And how do you uh, make sure that you access the student support services? We also have motivational messages, because we, know, we all know that every now and then we need someone to motivate us through our journey to know that it was possible and everyone is capable of becoming a successful student but please make sure that you claim your my life uh, email address to receive these um, emails from the student retention unit these emails are sent to your my life address after registration you then have the mailbox the mailbox, again, as the student retention unit, will try to be a bridge um, in, in, in the academic space um, where we would receive the inquiries or queries from students. We'll make the necessary referrals. We'll contact the relevant colleges, lecturers, and department, and we'll respond to the students with a referral or the answer to the query. So please feel free to email us at fye at unisa ac.za. Thank you again um, for your time this morning and we wish everyone a, success, a successful 2022. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ms. Ms. And the FYE stands for first year experience and you saw the email address. Um, I don't see students uh, taking down the email addresses. Instead, they are putting here WhatsApp so that we don't know. Just know that those WhatsApp groups are not from the academics. They are not from the lecturers. So be careful which group you are joining. The email address, uh, Ms. Yanda, can you write your email address? First year experience. 
uh, whatever on the chat so that students can know who to contact, who is officially employed by the University of South Africa. Don't, don't join groups that we don't know. All those WhatsApp groups that you are affiliating to, they are not from the academics of the College of Education. We don't know who those people are. So be careful which group you are joining, which group you are giving your details to. So just, uh, Ms. Yanda, write your what, uh, email address on the site. And Tate Dolamo, write also your email on the chat so that the students know whom they are contacting and then uh, so that they get official and authorized and authentic help. So if you need anything and you are a first year, this is the email address on the chat site, fye at unisa.ac.za. And then also for the student inquiries, I saw Mr. Tebatsomoloto writing it on the chat site, edu inquiries at unisa.ac.za. So use the official correspondence. Don't find yourself joining groups that we don't know and they are not authorized because you may find yourself in trouble. Then I'm going to call upon Dr. Mpaselem, who is going to tell us how to claim my UNISA account and the Odell space? How do we operate in the space? And uh, this is very important because that's how you are going to get your study material. That's how you are going to communicate with your lecturer. That's how you are going to liaise with your tutors. That's how you are going to get your teacher assist. I mean, the teaching assistant for your module. And if you do not have my live email account, you write to us with a Gmail address, with a Yahoo address, with a Hotmail address. The policy says we are not allowed to respond to any of those emails. So some of these email addresses that we see here, we do not know them at all. So the official ones, the FYE, the Edu Enquiries, and also the Mayor, Dr. Shilam Patele, is going to give you the enquiries. Some are created by bogus people. We do not know them. If I don't mention the name of the person here, ignore that group, please. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Mashiro. Ra sorry, Rama Ramashu Kompatle. Thank you, Prof and colleagues. Good morning. Once more, my duty is going to take you through how you get my live email and also how you get into the learning management system. Also, how are you going to be able to see your assignments and respond to your assignments and forums? I just want to quickly show how your emails when you use a, an email other than my life email, how do we receive them as academics? I'm just quickly going to share my email screen. They get quarantined like this. So what we see, it will just say prevented spam message and we just see the subject. So if I can go on and on on the list, you'll see these messages are prevented from us to see. So you can see here is one of the students. Uh, the student wrote the, uh, the, the module code, but I can't see the full email because I advise students all the time to say, use my life email. Another thing, students, is for us to understand or to know if we are really communicating with the relevant person. Imagine if it, it is not even a student, is someone who wants to see how you perform and they email us to needing your academic record or the information about your performance. And if we just divulge that information, we might find that it was not even yourself. But if you send your email using my life, already it has got your student number. We are able to see. And 
Another thing, students, make sure that when you send your emails, you include the module code because it's going to waste time when we go back and forth asking you what is the module code because sometimes you just send an email to everyone in the College of Education without a module code and we don't know how to assist you. So without wasting time, once you have been registered, especially those of you who are very new to UNISA, this is your first year. Firstly, you go to the homepage of UNISA. You can even just type it either on your phone, on the laptop or on the desktop. It is HTTPS double colon forward slash my dot UNISA dot AC dot ZA. So once you have typed this address, you are going to land on this page because at that time you don't have a, a, a password. You only have your student number, which you are going to fill in where it says username. So what do you do first? You go here where it says claim UNISA login. Then you, 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 you first have to claim UNISA login. And that is the second step. Then after clicking claim uh, my UNISA, claim UNISA login, you are going to be taken to this page where now you are supposed to enter that student number because already you have your student number. And then the student number, you'll, you'll enter it uh, somewhere below here on the page. If you can't see it or if you are on the phone, you need to scroll up a bit so that you see where it says student number and you click continue. After clicking continue, this page will appear wherein you are supposed to fill in your personal details, your surname, your full names. Make sure that your full names, you complete them in a manner which you completed them when you were registering. Do not add any name which was not there when you register. Or maybe if you, you added three names when you were registering, now do not add only two of them. Add full names as you uh, enter them when you were registering. And then your date of birth, starting with a year, the month and the day. And if you are a South African, you are going to put your South African identity number. And if you are not a South African, you are going to put your ID from your country or your passport number, whichever one which you used when you register. And then you need to also know that if you have an ID and a passport, you do not use both. You only use one of them. And then after that, you click continue. You are now going to be on this page, which is about the guidelines. Please read these guidelines because you need to understand how now you are being guided about using this UNISA login and also the My Life email uh, after you have uh, done your My Life email. After reading all this, uh, guidelines, you need to acknowledge. You click on acknowledge. You can only go back if you feel like you still uh, need to do something in the previous page, but if not, you just going to click on acknowledge. After clicking acknowledge, now you are going to be taken to the page where you are given your password. Your password will be given to you on this page and also you will receive an SMS on your cell phone. And on top there, you'll see that your student number is written and you get the message that you are almost done. Then you'll be given your My Life email, which is mainly your student number at mylife.unisa.ac.za and your cell phone number there. Then you copy this uh, password. Why am I saying you copy it? Copy it because it is case sensitive. If there are letters and numbers and some letters and caps lock, and maybe there are also uh, some symbols. If you make a mistake of putting a small letter instead of a capital letter, then your password will not be accepted. So it is safe for you to copy this password. And remember, your password for my life and my UNISA is the same. You are not going to use two different uh, passwords. 
So after copying this password, you'll go to the first option here that says, click here to access my live email account. Remember what we were doing now, you were accessing my UNISA. Now we are done accessing my UNISA, we are going to accessing my life. Once you click uh, the first uh, option, you are going to be taken out to a new window, which is Microsoft Outlook. Then the page will look like this one, and you now have to enter your email address in this box here. And then your email address will be your student number at mylife.unisa.ac.za. You paste that password, which you copied from the previous page, and then you are going to click a sign in. So after clicking sign in, you are going to be taken to another page. You're not signing in yet because you are still set up in your My Life email. And then now you need to choose the language, the preferred language that you are going to use. And I'm recommending that let's choose English because this is the language we mostly use at UNISA. And then below here, you need to choose the time. If you are in South Africa, you can choose Harare, Pretoria or Cairo. Then in other countries, please select your country's time. Why is it important for you to choose the time? Is because when we uh, schedule like uh, Teams meetings, uh, if you chose the time of your country, it will give you the correct time when is the meeting. We know in other countries, we've got a difference in time zones. So if you choose the correct one, you will be able to attend the meetings at the right time. And then now you will be taken to your mailbox. Now you are done setting up your My Life email and you will have the first message which comes from communications at myunisa.ac.za where now you will receive a welcome message that will show you your student number and your initial password. So sometimes when you forget your password because it's still new, you can look for this email, comms at my.unisa.ac.za. You search for it on your email mailbox and then you will get it. Make sure that on your cell phone, you, you activate this uh, My Life email so that you receive your emails on your cell phone. Also on your laptop, make it the main uh, email where you are receiving your emails because we're sending emails regularly, especially to this email address, you will not receive them on your Gmail or whatever personal email that you are having. Now that you, you are all set up, you have my UNISA account, you have my life account, we are ready to go. So how are we going to access the learning management uh, platform? In the step four page, I've shown you the two options. We, we clicked on the first one to set up my life. Now my life is set up. So for you to get to the learning management platform, you need to click the second one. Even if you don't want to go back to uh, this page, you can just type HTTPS double colon uh, forward slash forward slash my.unisa.ac.za. Please, as you are on this page, do not start by entering your student number and password here. Make sure that you see a, a, a page like this first, wherein you are going to enter your student number here, and then you continue, then you will get a page like this. Nowadays, our site looks like this. You need to see the current site, wherein now you are going to enter your student number here and your password here. Once you have uh, entered your username and your password, you will see this page. If you were a student in 2021, you are going to see my modules 2021, and you are also going to see my modules 2022. If you are a new student, you won't see my modules 2021. You will only see my modules 2020. For now, we are 2022, I mean, for now we are going to focus on my modules 2022 because this is the current year where we are. So what are we going to look at? We are going to look at the lessons and the assessments. So let me quickly switch uh, to a different window. 
wherein we are in, in the learning management platform. Once you have logged in with your student number and the password that you had, make sure that you keep it safe, you don't forget it, it's for your both my life and your my UNISA. Once you get in, you will see a page like this one, but what you do, you start by clicking on my modules. When you click on my modules, you will see the list of the modules you are registered for. I'm just going to choose one module, which is, a, a, let me choose the one that is for this year, PTV01. You will find a welcome message where your lecturer is welcoming you. Some lecturers will put their pictures, some won't put pictures. Some will put a picture maybe relating to the module, but you, what I, I would like you to understand is how you navigate. When you look on the left-hand side, you will see they are, there is a menu. When you click on these icons here, they will take you to where you find information. Like this one, introduce yourself. When you click on learning unit one, it will take you to learning unit one. Learning unit two, it will take to you to learning unit two and so forth. However, once you choose, what is very important is that once you choose the module from this list, when you see your welcome message, you can also just scroll down on the right hand side. When you scroll down, you will see other information. This information, you can also navigate it from the left hand side. But I just want to tell you also that we do have four formats. This is one of the formats. When I say format, is how this module uh, site look like. You can see it looks like cards. The learning units are displayed in the form of cards. This format, we call it advisor, which uh, the layout is cards. I'm going to quickly show you different formats because your modules, according to your lecturer's preferences, it might not be the same, but majority of modules looks like this one. There's a catch with this uh, uh, format. The catch is the, the, this, this first cut, which is activities, and this is where mostly you'll find your formal assessments. Our formal assessments will look like this one, which you see here. This is an assignment. For you to identify, uh, our, our icons are different, yet they are the same in color. The one with an arrow facing down is an assignment where you are going to upload a file. So there is a little arrow here. Some of you might not notice it at first, but today, because I'm telling you about this arrow, uh, you will now notice it. Once you click this little arrow, it will open up uh, down. It will expand where now you can see other hidden uh, activities. So once you see this icon with some three stripes, it means this is a quiz and this is where you're going to get your uh, multiple choice, your matching column, your fill in and other types of questions. But this one is only where you're going to do the file upload. You remember previously, those of you who uh, were registered with UNISA previously, you used to get your questions in a tutorial letter. We no longer getting questions in a tutorial letter. The questions are either going to be in this activity or this activity. This one is called assignment activity. This one is called quiz activity. And then some of the assignments will be in an activity that looks like this one. Uh, the, the icon looks like the one of an announcement and we call it a forum. So once you see this icon, mostly there they are forums. And I advise you that in this activity section, please go to the announcement and click. Once you click, you will find announcements that your lecturer has made, and they are very much important. You need to go and read those announcements. For example, here you can see, I already posted announcements for my students. When you want to go back, you don't have to go to this arrow here. You can just look on this gray area here and then you go back wherever you wanted to go. If you want to go back to the module code, you, you go back there to the year to welcome message. Like now I, I can just go back to the welcome 
message without clicking that arrow of back there. So I'm still back here. I just want to quickly show you the different formats in which you can see your module. I, by so doing, I need to quickly change my role because here I'm, I logged in as a student to show you how as a student you will view the module. Let me quickly change to my normal role and show you uh, the other formats. You will not be able to do what I'm doing. This is what your lecturers will be doing to change the format. So I'm just quickly going to change the format so that you can see the other format. It, it is still at Wiser, but the layout can be the card, the list layout. We were on the card. I'm just going to save so that you see. I don't want you when you see a, a, a different view of your module, you think you are on the wrong uh, module side. So this is another uh, way. Let me change my role to a student so that you see how my students will now see this one. So this is the list layout. They, they are no longer cards. This is now the list. It shows uh, unit one, unit two, they go down uh, following each other like that. We have another one which is called, let me quickly uh, change, sorry about that. I am a student, I forgot. Let me switch to my normal role. I'm going to show you another one which majority of uh, academics have opted for, which is called tiles. So I've seen majority of academics likes uh, tiles, and I don't want you to think uh, now you are lost. So I'm going to save quickly and display. So some of you, this is how you will see your modules. And, and uh, even if I can uh, say change as a student, this is how I will be seeing. So this is another way. You can see there are no longer those cards which we saw at the beginning. There is learning unit one, two, three, four, five. You can click on each learning unit, then you'll get the content. So the most important thing which I wanted to share with you is to how are you going to respond to your assessments? The, uh, the formal assessments, you will find them under uh, next to announcements. And then if you are on advisor, you will see it is the section called activities. So the tutorial letters, we advised academics that they need to put tutorial letters in additional resources. When you click additional resources, you will find your tutorial letter 101 and other study material. You'll find them under additional resources. And some of uh, the, the, the study material, you click, you go to the left-hand side on this menu, you click official study material, and then you will find them under official study material. Mine does not have uh, anything on the study, official study material, because I opted to put them under uh, additional resources. So uh, I'm going to go back to uh, that view where I am, the view which I know majority of you, you will see, which is advisor card layout. Let me do it quickly to show you how now you respond to your, to the different assessment and how do you get uh, that assessment. Let me go to advisor. Card layout, I'm saving and display. So now I am a student. I'm switching role again. I am a student. This is where the formal activities are. I'm going to go down a bit and then I'm going to go into assessment five. You click on the assessment. Then once you click on the assessment, you will find maybe the instructions from your lecturer, but you will have to look for this little icon here and the name of the document. It will mostly be in a Word document or in a PDF. Then that's where you are going to click on it and then you download the file. And then after downloading the file, it will be up to you whether now you go offline because we know 
majority of you do not have data. You just download the, the assignment, you go offline, you type, or you write by hand. Then that's where you are going to upload back later. I'm going to show you how you're going to upload. So what do you need to take note? Some of these assessments are going to be marked by using marking guide. So you need to scroll down. Once you see the assessment, don't just go. We lost you, Dr. Mpatlele. Dr. Mpatlele. Mod, check if uh, she's not mute. Dr. Mpatlele, Mod, can you unmute Dr. Mpatlele? Mod? Mod? Okay, students, can we take a break for 15 minutes and then we will come back? Can we take a break? Can we take a break? It's now 10.55. We'll come back um, 11.05. Okay, no chat, Prof. Thank you. Let's take thank, a break. Thank you, Prof. Thank Drink you for, for this. Tea. This is very interesting. Come back. Thank you.
Okay. Okay.
Colleagues, students, we are back. It's 15 minutes. Um, let us just give one minute or two minutes for those who are still uh, uh, drinking tea and a sandwich. Dr. Mpatlele, I see on the chat, uh, some students are worried. They say if they missed a step, should they be worried? Others are saying they did not get a welcome message. Uh, others say they couldn't claim fully the My Life email account. The system, I think, kicked them out. Um, I, I'm also appealing to all other presenters. Can we give Mem Patlele, Dr. Patlele, an opportunity again to address the uh, concerns of the students, because if we don't do that, then we shall have missed the mark. And uh, I, I want us to just go back a little bit and uh, try to redo some of the things, because uh, if we, we do not use my life email account, we are in trouble. And then some of the module sites, students are not yet uh, fully, fully, I think, prepared. Don't worry. Uh, I will communicate with all the lecturers that they prepare their module sites so that you are able to claim your, um, sorry, your study material, to get the tutorial letters, to get also the assignment. So uh, let, let us watch again Dr. Mpathele, who will uh, explain how you get onto um, Mayunisa, how you gain the login details, etc. Mayunisa is also the Moodle site. Don't don't worry, it's it's uh, the Moodle site. So le let's listen again attentively to Dr. Mpathele and pay attention because this is crucial. If you miss the step, this whole day is useless. If you miss the step, then you are off because you won't get study material. You won't communicate with your lecturer. You won't get your assignment. So this is crucial. Actually, now we are in grade one here. We are learning the steps. Over to you, Dr. Mpatlele. Unmute, Dr. Mpatlele. Maud, can you unmute, Dr. Mpatlele? No, I, I, I unmute, Prof. There's someone who is muting me on the on the other side. Oh, Unfortunately, oh. yeah, I unmuted. I even moved my mouse away from. Okay, the, the thank platform. you. Now we hear you. We hear you. Maybe uh, 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 allow me. Prof, I just want to check with uh, uh, the students before I, I even uh, get on and on on this one. I want to stop this uh, presentation quickly. It's just that it is not showing me the option to stop. Thank you. I want to get out of it. I want to log in. Uh, uh, before I log in, I just want one student who is saying uh, they missed the step to quickly type the student number in the chat. So that we use the students, uh, uh, so that and it's practical. I see here is Kul Sumbani Bim. Kul Sumbanu Bim, can you write your student number? Yeah, it's Thank one. You. Two. I, I got it. I'm going okay. to copy the student number quickly. Okay, when you get here, you're going to click on Claim UNISA Login. So you are taken to this page. I was showing the pages on the slide the other time. Now I am live on the system. So I'm pasting your student number here and then I continue. So you're getting this message. I wanted to show uh, sometimes you'll get an error message if you have already uh, done something here. It is saying, please enter your student. The initial UNISA login for this student number has already been claimed. So the, the point I wanted to make here is that if you missed a step, where you have missed a step, you'll get an error message 
telling you if you have already claimed uh, the my UNISA login or if you didn't. So I'm going back to the presentation quickly to show the steps again. I just wanted to show you that if you have claimed, don't worry, it will let you know that you have already claimed. So this is step number two, where, where you are clicking on claim UNISA login. And if you did, you will receive the error message that tells you that you have. And now it means you have to remember your password and go and log in. So step number three, if when you, when you enter your student number and then you click continue, you don't, you don't get any error message, then you'll be taken to this page where you are supposed to complete your personal details. And then if your My UNISA part is claimed already, maybe you are left with only my life email, we are going to get there. So, but if your My UNISA is not yet claimed, these are the steps. Then after filling in your personal information, and here I emphasize that, remember that if you are not a South African, you either can put your foreign ID or your passport number. And then again, if you are a South African student, some South African students have got passports. So do not put both your ID and your passport. You just need one. And then we go to the page where now you get the guidelines. Make sure that you check these boxes. After you read every guideline, you check these boxes and then you're going to click acknowledge. You acknowledge that you have read and understood this information. And then you, when you click acknowledge, then you get to this part where you receive your password. Your password is case sensitive. So it is important that you copy it when you are going to uh, create your, or set up your My Life email. You copy it, and then now you click here to access my live email account. I will show you quickly how now you get to my live account if you have completed the steps, but you forgot to claim my live email. But if you are still in these steps, then you can uh, uh, click on this step. If you have already passed all these steps. Now you are looking in again. You can type on your uh, where you you are you are you are typing uh, any uh, URL. Whether you are on Google Chrome, whether you are on Edge, on the search box there, you can type HTTP double colon forward slash forward slash mylife dot unisa dot ac dot za and then forward slash mail. I am going to put uh, this uh, uh, email, uh, I mean URL also on the chats when I'm done uh, so that you can just click on it and then it will take you to now these steps where you are going to set up your My Life email. Because some of you, you have set up your My UNISA, you are only left with My Life. So once you, you have typed that URL and then you want to access your My Life email, you have to see this uh, page wherein you are going to put your My Life email address, which is your student number at mylife.unisa.ac.za. I just wrote one, two, three, four, five, six, seven as an example. Here, there should be your student number. And then that password, which I said, you need to copy it, then you paste it here. The reason why I said copy it, I said it is case sensitive. And then remember this password, you do not create it. It is given to you. And then after that, when you click sign in, you will be taken to this page wherein you are supposed to choose the language. Choose English, South Africa, because that's what we mostly use. But the most important thing is the time zone. I indicated that if you are in another country and then you choose the correct time zone, when we set up meetings like this one, you will be able to get the right time. I remember in the morning, there was one student who kept on saying, is the meeting now or 
later or what. So uh, once you are not in South Africa, you will receive the, the correct time zone of your country because our time zones are different. Then after choosing the, 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 the time zone and the language, then you will be taken to your inbox. This will be your inbox wherein you're getting your emails. And some of you have been saying you did not receive the welcome message, maybe because you didn't come to the last step of setting up your My Life email. Once you came to the final step, you will receive a, an email that comes from comms at my.unisa.ac.za. I'm going to quickly type uh, uh, that uh, URL for claiming my life email. I'm going to put it quickly in the chats so that uh, you can quickly use it. It's HTTPS, double colon, two forward slash, mylife.unisa.ac.za stroke mail. Once you get it right, please make sure that on your phone, you set up this mailbox so that you receive your My Life emails on your phone and also on your laptop. Uh, make it the main mailbox where you receive your emails. So after we have set up everything, then we are going to uh, go into You've set up it, now we have to access uh, my UNISA. To access my UNISA, again, I'm typing the address in the charts for you. Maybe you can go with me step by step as we enter the LSM. It's HTTPS, double colon, forward slash, two forward slashes, my.unisa.ac.za. So this is the link where now we are going to access our learning management platform. Once you get to the learning management platform, once you've typed your student number, and then you will see this page where now you have to log in. And this is where I was before I was cut off earlier on. And then I was saying, once you want to claim, you go here. And then if you get this message, it means you have uh, obtained your UNISA login. If you forgot your password, you are going to click forgotten password and you are going to be assisted in that regard. So I am going to put in the login details. For you, you are going to put your student number here and then you put that password here. I'm putting my password that I use on daily basis. If you put your student number and your password correctly, you are going to be uh, taken to the window that we are going to see now. There we are. So you are going to see my modules 2021, my modules 2022. The only people who will see my modules 2021 are the students who were registered in if you were not registered last year, you will only see my modules 2022. So my modules 2022 is the classroom where we are going to learn this year. Then you click my modules 2022. It takes you to your classroom. This is your classroom. And then in your classroom, you are going to choose different modules which you are doing. By choosing a module, you click on my modules, the list of your modules will appear there. This is the list of the modules I am teaching. But as a student, as a student, this will be the modules which you have registered for. I'm going to choose one of the modules. What do you do? You choose the module which maybe you want to uh, look at. So remember, it is important that you, you, you go through all your modules just to check what your lecturers are saying to you. Like I said earlier on, you'll find a welcome message. Some lecturers have not edited the welcome messages yet. Uh, if the, the welcome message is not edited, I want to show you how it will look like. 
the welcome message will look like this one. This is the default message which we get uh, uh, from UNISA ICT, but as lecturers, we edit this uh, message to suit our modules. So sometimes you will see a message like this. If you see this message, it doesn't mean you are lost. It's just that your lecturer did not edit the welcome message yet. So when I go to this module, which I want to uh, show you about, you will see that uh, there is a welcome message where I specified the module also uh, to say I'm welcoming the students in 2022. And there's also my picture there. So some lecturers will put a picture of the module or some will not even put a picture. Remember, I'm not talking about a specific module here. I'm referring to different modules. I'm just showing you how some modules will look like. And maybe before I was cut off, I was talking about the different formats. This is the format which most of the modules use. It is called advisor format. And this is the card layout of advisor. And then this format, it has got sections. This is a section for activities. And this is where you will also find your formal assessments. So I'm sure here you see something is hidden from students is because I did not release yet this a uh, formal assessment. When you click this little arrow here, it will expand and then you see other information in this activity. However, one thing that I want you to understand about these icons are this. When you see this icon with an arrow facing up, this is for assignments where you are going to upload a file. You are going to submit. A, you, you remember previously at UNISA, you would go to my admin to upload an assignment. So we're no longer doing that. You are going to upload assignments that needs to be uploaded on this assignment. Then your lecturer will tell you if uh, you are now uploading on assignment one, two, and then they are not written assignment anymore. They are called assessments. That's why here we have assessment one up to assessment six. The one with three rows, I don't know whether to call them lines or rows. This is a quiz. This is where mainly we are going to get multiple choice questions, uh, matching column questions, uh, fill in uh, other type of questions, but here we only upload files. So I am go going to show you how you will be uh, responding to this uh, assessment. I'm quickly going to uh, show you another format because some of your modules won't look like this one. Uh, what I'm doing now, you will not be able to do as a student, uh, is what your lecturers will be doing when they are changing the course format, because lecturers changes course formats according to their own preferences. So this is still advisor. It has got another layout called list. I'm going to show the list. Sometimes you, when you log into your module, you will find that this is how it looks like. And remember, these learning units you see here, you might not see in all the modules. Some lecturers use learning units, some lecturers use study units, some lecturers use lessons. So this is just to show you uh, what you might get in other modules. And again, we have a navigation panel on the left-hand side. If you won't see this panel, you just click uh, this uh, icon next to dashboard. When you click it, it disappears. When you click it again, it comes back. Then you can still use uh, this navigation pane to navigate. If you want to only see learning unit one, you click on it, and then only learning unit one will appear. If you want to go straight to learning unit six, you click there, and then you will go straight to learning unit six. Some modules do not have this information yet your lecturers are still busy putting it together. If you don't see it, do not despair. So I showed you 
a, a, a different list format. I'm going to quickly show you. I'm just going to show you two formats because those are the formats I know majority of lecturers prefer. So I'm going to show you the one that is called tiles format. So some of your modules will look like this. They will look like this, wherein you will see uh, this kind of uh, 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 icons. So this is a tiles format. If you see the module looking like this, you shouldn't think you are on the wrong uh, platform. It's still the same platform. It's just a different format. So I'm going back to the format, which is common to most of the modules. And then I'm going to show you how you are going to respond to the questions. I'm quickly changing again to advisor. Card layout. This is the most preferred or is the, is the format that comes by default. So where it says activities, that's where you get your formal assessments. So I'm going to change and become a student and show you how you are going to respond to your assignments or your assessment as a student. Now, I am a student. When you get to this point where maybe you see activities and you just see uh, maybe these three icons here, this one is an announcement. I request all of you that you start here on announcement. Please click on announcement because they are announcements which your lecturers have put for you to read. Once you click on announcement, you will find list of announcements and then you just have to click on the announcement and then you will be able to read what the announcement says. And some of these announcements, they are uh, reflected in your My Life email. As the, the lecturer posts the announcement, it also goes into your My Life email. I know some of you, you are saying your My Life emails are not yet set. And then that's why you might not uh, have access to. So this is where you just view your announcement. Remember announcement, you cannot respond to it. You just view it and uh, get the message. Then let's go back. When you, go, when you are in the learning management platform, because another role that I'm playing today is to show you how to navigate this platform. You shouldn't always go back to this uh, arrow here. Always look at this gray area and then choose wherever you want to go. If Because if you go in, let's say you want to go back on, on 2022, it means you have to click this button many times. But when you just go back to click uh, this module code here, uh, you click once and then you are back where you want to go. And then we go down a little bit. There's this arrow. If your lecturer is using this format, please sometimes look for this arrow. Sometimes you won't see it. If you don't see it, it means there is nothing underneath. If you see it, just know that there is something underneath and click on it, it will expand. So, and then if it is facing up, it means it is expanded. So you can just uh, collapse it. Once you see this one, I said is a file upload and this one is for multiple choice. I'm going to start with the file upload. What you do, you just click on the assignment. Let's, let's use this one, assessment five. You click on it, it opens. When it opens, you are going to see a little a PDF document there. This is where you are going to click and up, uh, download your assignment. The instructions are inside this document. You no longer getting the instructions in a tutorial letter. You're getting them here. So you're going to click on this document. You, you, go, you get all the questions that are asked about this assignment. And you'll see the due date. Then you shouldn't just download the assignment and go and start writing. No, please scroll down and see all the information. Some assignments, lecturers are going to use rubrics or marking guides to mark them. So make sure that you scroll down like this one here, it has got a marking guide. A marking guide will also guide you as a student to say how this assessment is going to be marked. Like here, the lecturer is saying, 
Question one, if you give description of online learning, I'm going to allocate you 20 marks. If you give an explanation of online facilitation, you get 10 marks. So now you know that description needs you to put more effort so that you get your 20 marks. And then it doesn't end there. Remember now you uploaded your assessment. It's either you were writing by hand or you were typing. If you were typing when you are done, you make sure that you save it as PDF. And if you were writing by hand, you make sure that you scan your assignment, you save as PDF as one document. You don't submit different files because here, you scroll down again. Earlier on, when I was talking alone, I already uh, came here and submitted. Usually what you get, it will be at submission if you didn't submit yet. You can drag the file wherever you saved it, you drop it here. If you don't want to drag and drop, you click this icon. The icon that looks like a page of a document. You click on it, then it will say choose file. You click on choose file. You go into where you have saved uh, the information that you want to uh, upload. You can double click on it and then it will be there you click upload this file and then the file will be uploaded and then you are going to save the changes. If you feel after uploading like this, you feel this is not the right file, you can check the box, you click this delete button here and then you delete it. Then you load the correct uh, document by going again, choose file and then you upload the document, you click upload this document then you are going to save the changes. For this assessment, I didn't uh, set up the submission button. For some assessment, when you scroll down, down, you will see submit this assessment. This one, as you save, the saving you are submitting because this message here is saying to you submitted for grading. And uh, some lecturers, will set up the submit button where you're going to click submit for grading. But if you don't have it, don't worry. Once you click save and then you look on the submission status, if it says submitted for grading, you should be satisfied. And again, you will receive an email in my live email address saying that you have submitted. So you see it's important for you to get my live email because uh, when tomorrow the lecturer says you didn't submit, you'll have a proof in your inbox of my live email that you have submitted. So this is the file upload assignment on how we are going to submit. Suppose you do not get an opportunity to resubmit because some lecturers will lock the resubmission option. What you do, you will find this option of comment here. You click on comment. You write a comment to the lecturer. Suppose you submitted a wrong file. Then you ask a lecturer, you say, dear lecturer, you, you write a message to say, I submitted a wrong file. May you kindly allow me to resubmit this document. And your lecturer will reopen this specific assessment for you to resubmit. So in certain assessment, resubmission is not automatic. In certain assessments, resubmission is automatic. So bear in mind of that. So I am moving now to the other uh, submission for multiple choice questions. Yes, Suwaya, uh, uh, you get confirmation for every assessment, even if you are posting a, an, 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 a for, in a forum, you get a notification. So for your multiple choice, you also get. Let me go back and show you how now you will see your multiple choice. You remember previously, you will get your multiple choice questions in a tutorial letter. And when you go into my admin, you will find a mark reading sheet where you will a, a, a punch on your correct answers. We no longer have that. Every multiple choice question will be in a, a, a shell like this one. Some will be assessment one, some will be assessment two. Mine here is assessment six. Then you click on it. 
when it opens, you might find a message. Some lecturers might not give you a message. Then here I'm giving my, my students a message. A message is saying they must note that some of the questions are multiple selections so that uh, uh, they need to know that they want they, they are not going to choose only one answer. They have to choose multiple answers. But I've got another message for these students to say, make sure you went through lesson activities in learning unit one to four before attempting this assessment. Another student earlier on asked, how will I be taught? We are teaching you uh, uh, on lesson activities. And there are also other resources where we put additional resources. So if you get such a message to say you need to go through a lesson, then you are going to look for learning unit one. Learning unit one is this one, learning unit two, learning unit three, learning unit four. So you can just go quickly here. You click on your learning unit one, you go through it. These are the outcomes of learning unit one. When you scroll down, you will get a quiz in learning unit one, you get a lesson, you get a document, you get a forum, you get a forum. So this means you have to go through all this before you take that quiz, because that is a formal quiz. Then you go to your learning unit two, you also get the outcomes for the learning unit two, you also get a lesson, you also get a document, you also get a module play. Then you go to your learning unit three. Like I said, you, yes, Christelle, you won't see learning units because maybe your lecturer is not using learning units. Here, I'm giving an example to say some lecturers are using learning units like myself. Some lecturers will have study units. Some you, lecturers will have lessons. You'll find that they say lesson one, lesson two. So you don't have to see learning units. I'm giving examples. Thank you. Then, Suppose you are my student. If you are my student, now after going through all the learning units which I said you need to go through before taking the assessment, now you can go back. Remember I said going back, you don't have to go to this arrow here. You can just go back here. You choose the module code again, and then you scroll down a little bit. You go back, you expand. Now you are ready to take the quiz because you have already a uh, uh, going, going through the learning units I said you should. Then when you click, because you are ready now, you can attempt the quiz. You are going to click attempt quiz now. And then as uh, uh, you are uh, attempting the quiz now, you continue. Uh, the quiz is giving me an error. I think I put uh, little questions. Uh, as a lecturer, don't worry, I'm going to fix it quickly. Let me go back. Because I, I just prepared this for this presentation. It's not my real assessment. So as I'm, I'm rectifying uh, this uh, assessment, I just also want to uh, tell students who are saying they are unable to see assessment. Maybe it's because uh, your lecturers did not release them yet. So I'm just going to uh, delete a certain questions so that I, I, I get to, um, let me just delete a few. Maybe I didn't have to make them many. I just delete a few so that I can show you how you take this. And some of the questions, remember, they will be uh, randomized so that we don't copy. And then I'm just fixing it. Let, let's hope this time my student will be able to take the quiz. I'm switching the role again to a student. OK. All right, let's attempt the quiz and see. Oh, there are still enough, not enough questions in the category. Sorry about that. Let me uh, go to because I, I, I randomized the questions, that's why. Sorry about that. I just want you to see how you answer the questions. Maybe let me just preview as a, let me delete them. I did the quiz, I'm going to delete all of them. 
Okay, select all. I can just maybe leave two questions. I delete the selected. Sorry about the delay. This can be some of the challenges when you go to the questions, you might get the message to say the questions are not enough. So you can alert your lecturer if your lecturer is randomizing so that they can fix uh, the questions. So let's attempt and see. Good. So this is how now you will get your questions. You no longer getting a mark reading sheet where you are putting, but some of you who already was re were registered last year, where some of your exams were multiple choice, this is similar. You just go into choose the correct answer and then you go into the next page and then so on and so on. This is another, you choose the correct answer, you go to the next page. Here, there are just three questions. As you are attempting the questions, you will see quiz navigation on the right hand side. And then you see my questions are both true or false and multiple choice. I indicated earlier on in the quiz, you can get a, a matching column, you can get a, a missing weight, you can get drag and drop, different types of questions. So I'm just going to uh, finish the attempt. There's a, another thing which as students you need to uh, understand to say once you are here, you can return to the attempt. When you return to the attempt, the questions might not be in the same order. You, you remember the first question earlier, it was a, a, a true or false. So as you want to go back, if the questions are randomized, you are not going to get the same questions. And then once you have finished the attempt, you can submit all and finish. And then once you submit, it says you will no longer be able to change your answers. Then you submit. And then after submitting, if your lecturer has set the quiz to say you get results same time, this is what happens. You see, I got this one wrong. I got only one right. All three I got wrong. So you get your results immediately. Some of the assessments, they are set up that you will get results when the quiz is closed. Some you will get them at a specific date, which is set by the lecturer. Because uh, I see some of you say you uh, have submitted the MCQ assessment, uh, but you didn't get the notification. Okay, sometimes if you don't get notification is because your lecturer have disabled the notification uh, button. I want to go back as a, as a, as a, as a lecturer and indicate that as a lecturer, you can uh, disable the notification, but uh, as we will be talking to the lecturers, we will uh, advise them uh, to make sure that you get a notification. I just want to see where is that. There is an option where you enable and disable for students to get uh, the notification. So, um, I think is this one. There, there is where we we allow. It's just that okay. I will I will check it, but I will communicate with the lecturers because I know uh, there is a uh, an option where you can disable that students do not get notification, and they you can also enable it. So sometimes when you don't get notification, it should be because it was disabled by your lecturer. And then while I'm still there, let me just uh, talk to the issue of unique numbers. You do not have to write unique number anywhere. The unique numbers already, they are linked in this uh, assessment. I'm just going to uh, show you quickly my assessment with unique numbers. This is the unique number here. Is already linked. Once you get in as a student and then you upload your assessment, there is no need for you to write any unique number. So, but uh, I think uh, Prof. Maranu will, will advise the DSAA people are still going to uh, present. They will also maybe uh, talk to the issue of 
unique numbers. But my point is, if you submit in the relevant shell, you don't even have to remember the assessment uh, unique number. So my, some of the questions will be the forums. So you will just go in. Let, let me take one minute to show uh, where you have to answer an assessment, which is a forum. Like this one, my assessment two is a forum. If you have such an assessment, you just click on it and then you are going to add a new discussion topic. You click there and then you type your information. Once you post the forum, your lecturer will be able to grade your work. Let me pause here, Prof, and uh, okay. see how about There are all. questions on the side. Vulenda says, can I print out the quiz? Um, everything is online, uh, Vulenda. No longer printing, no longer paper submission. Everything will be done on um, my, my UNISA, on your module site. There is no longer a printing. Uh, that, that is the question that I see that need to be answered. Then one is saying, can I take screenshot and come back later to the multiple choice question? Can I respond to that one? Yes, Dr. Mpatel. The answer is no. We are encouraging academics to make sure that questions are randomized. Once you get in, even if you get in, you just view the questions. When you come back, you open the quiz again, you get new set of questions. So the ones that you screenshot, they will be of no use to you. Because we are avoiding that you screenshot, you share with your friends, you come back, you just put in the answers without understanding. Remember students, these assessments are for learning are not for you to memorize correct answers. So we are encouraging you to learn. So that is why we will randomize the questions so that you understand the content you do not memorize. Thank you. Thank you. I think also Jessica is asking the same. Can we leave a quiz incomplete and unsubmitted? Come back to it later. Jessica, you heard the answer. Yes, but if, for example, you attempted one, two, three questions, then maybe you get load shading or anything. When you come back, you, you are going to carry on from the question where you left. You won't be able to start from the beginning. Once you open it, you will find it. If you were on question four, it will now load question five for you. Thank you. I hope the students understood this session. Thank you so much, Dr. Mpahlele. And uh, we, we really appreciate your time and to unpack where do they start by claiming my life account and uh, also getting onto the module site. Well done, Dr. Mpahlele. We really appreciate this presentation. The students are asking where will we get this? It will be on your module site. The recording will be there and uh, you will be able to view it again so that you get an understanding. Thank you so much, Dr. Mpahlele. Thank you very much. You can unshare your screen. And, Thank you, Prof. Uh, uh, before I unshare, can I just show students where they can get their tutorial letters? Mostly our tutorial letters will be on additional resources. So yes, if you please. need a, a tutorial letters, go to additional resources. Thank you. So if your, your MCQ have three attempts after you submitted, it means you will only get your, your feedback, your marks after the quiz is closed. So the attempt is for you to rectify your mistakes, but after the quiz is closed, that's where you will get your feedback. So lecturers, they set up the quizzes differently according to their preferences. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Dr. Mpasele. We appreciate your contribution towards the learning path of our student. It is no longer a mystery 
to study online. They have seen it. And I know this is the generation that is quick in technology. They have understood. They're going to play with it and they will get it right. Thank you so much, students, for being here. Up to this time, I still see the numbers are very high. Now let's go and unpack the curriculum. Who's going to unpack our curriculum uh, for B. Ed and others? It's Dr. Donna Hanaway, who is going to show us how to unpack our curriculum from first year onwards so that we do not regret that we chose wrong modules and which modules will be prerequisites, co-requisites, etc. Dr. Donna Hanaway, you, uh, the platform is yours. Thank you so much, Prof. Mahano, and good morning, students. I see um, I'm having a little bit of a technical glitch. Every time I share, it keeps popping back that I can't display. Um, so just give me one second. I'm going to try another route quickly. Thank you. So we, we appreciate your questions on the chat, students. We really honor your valuable contribution and concentration. It shows that you are listening attentively. And this is the kind of teachers that we want to see. If you are a good student, you will automatically be a good teacher out there who will be able to represent the UNISA name in a more respectable way. And a UNISA graduate who has the attributes that are really appreciated and valued by the community. I really appreciate the caliber of students that we have in 2022. Dr. Hanaway, I can see your screen. You can continue. Excellent. Thank you, Prof. Mahano. And good afternoon. No, good morning, still, students. Um, I thank you for your time. And as Prof. Mahano said, um, your your steadfastness in staying with us this morning. There's a lot of important information that is being shared, and I really hope it's going to orientate you well into your first year. As mentioned, um, I am the, the room owner of all the qualifications in the college, so I invite you into the room today as we go through our undergraduate qualifications. And um, obviously, you're all in different spaces and registered for different things. So please, when it comes to your um, specific section, please listen and um, take in the important information that is being shared. Just in general, I'm going to talk about our um, curriculum and then um, we will go through all the undergraduate qualifications in the college. We'll look at the higher certificates in education, our three Bachelor of Education qualifications, as well as our PGCE Senior FET phase. So in general, in the College of Education, most of our modules are year modules. Um, the only modules that are not year modules are those that are part of your qualification that um, are the signature modules and those that are housed in our sister colleges. So, for example, your language modules are in the College of Human Sciences and they, some of them are semester modules. And then just some important information with regard to the higher certificates in education. This is the only higher certificate that articulates into our B.Ed. Um, not a higher certificate in any of the other colleges will give you access into a B.Ed. So please take note of that and also realize that spaces are limited. And if you do complete a higher certificate, it does not guarantee access. You still have to apply for the B.Ed and be accepted into that. And then lastly, um, you register your modules per year, a maximum of 10 modules each year. But in your final year, um, if the need arises and should you require the extra two modules to complete your degree, you can register for a maximum of 12 modules in your final year. And the reason I'm telling you all these things now, even though it might only apply to you three or four years down the line, is for you to be able to plan your studies um, well as you go along. OK, then. Accessing your curriculum, um, Dr. Mbachlele shared a lot of useful information now of obtaining your MyLife email and getting into our systems. 
please go and access your qualification as well. Go to the College of Education and look there under the qualification information for your undergraduate degree. And if you click on that link, you will then be taken to another screen where you can select your qualification level and there's a whole drop down list of the various um, curricula and you can choose the one that you um, are in. Please look at this because it gives you all the modules, all the codes and exactly what is required throughout your studies. OK, so we're going to move on now. All the higher certificates in education students that are with us, this is for you. Um, our higher certificate in education, as I've mentioned, is the qualification that articulates into our Bachelor of Education. It is a 120 credits NQF level 5 qualification. It is a one year qualification, but you have up to three years to complete it. And we have it offered in two streams. We have a foundation phase intermediate stream and we have a senior FET stream. Please note that if you are studying this um, higher certificate, if you apply for the um, BA, you must meet the statutory requirements. It doesn't mean doing a higher certificate will automatically gain you access into the BA. And if we look a little bit closer at the higher certificate, as I've mentioned, all the modules are year modules except for BPT 1501, AFL 1501, EUP 1501 and INS 1501. So please, when you register, take note of um, the fact that you will be registering for year modules, except for those four modules. And then also important is that MTE 1501 is a compulsory module in the foundation phase intermediate stream, because this gives you the mathematics that is required should you want to study the foundation phase or intermediate phase Bachelor of Education. If we look at your curricula simplified, um, in the foundation and intermediate phase access stream, you have nine compulsory modules and there you can see that we have the MTE 1501, which is compulsory, and then you will choose one module from Group B. ATH 1501 and GRT 1501 are our foundation phase modules and the GCS and the IED are for the intermediate phase. So you can make your selection depending on where you are going into which phase of schooling you'll be going into. And then the senior phase and FET stream, you have eight compulsory modules in Group A and you will select any two modules from Group B. And so that is the higher certificate in a nutshell for you. Then we have one advanced certificate in the College of Education. This is also a 120 credits qualification. Um, it's at an NQF level six and it's 10 modules offered over one year, um, which you can take up to three years to complete. At the moment, we only offer one advanced certificate and that is the one in intermediate phase mathematics and first additional language teaching. This is not an initial teacher education qualification. This is for somebody who would like to upskill in a specific area. So for example, in this case, it is somebody who is perhaps already in practice um, and might be changing positions or might need further knowledge and skills in the area of intermediate phase maths and or first additional language teaching. So there will be more advanced certificates in the future, but currently we just have this one. Then we have a new qualification this year, um, new to the, the PQM, the Diploma in Grade R Teaching. This is a 360 credits NQF level six qualification. It consists of 30 modules offered over three years, and you have up to five years to complete the qualification. It is very important to note that students who are studying this qualification, it is a specialized qualification for grade R teaching only. It does not include foundation phase teaching, and it is also the minimum qualification in grade R. Ultimately, our um, employer would like all grade R teachers to have a Bachelor of Education 
So this is the stepping stone to moving into a Bachelor of Education Foundation phase. If you complete the diploma in Grade R, you will have 15 modules that will be credit bearing when you apply for the B.Ed Foundation phase and you can move across into that, complete the remaining modules and finish with a degree at the end of the day. That will allow you to teach Grade R as well as the other Foundation phase grades 1, 2 and 3. This qualification will only be offered until 2027 and the reason being is that it's it's a short lived qualification to upskill our grade R teachers who are already in practice and get them into the Bachelor of Education Foundation phase. Also, please note that this qualification will be offered incrementally, which means that we will only be offering the first level modules this year. The first 10 modules will be on offer and you must register those. And as of next year, um, your second year modules will open up. If we look at your curriculum in the Grade R Diploma, you can see there are 10 modules per level. And as I mentioned, you need to take only the first level modules this year um, to begin with. The modules in the orange colour, the peach colour, are the modules that are offered in the College of Education. Then those in the blue, the turquoise colour, are all the specific Grade R modules and those are housed in the Department of Early Childhood Education. And then we have outside modules with our sister college, which are your language options. And I will speak to the choice of your languages um, a little later in the presentation. And then finally, each year ends with a teaching practice module. You'll see as I go through the presentation, um, I will show each curricula and I'm stressing the importance of registering your modules per level and in the sequence that, that you are given them because the modules one to nine, your theory modules, will feed into your teaching practice. And we have designed and packaged the curriculum so that you learn um, with the modules in, in unison. It doesn't help if you take a first level module and a last level module and the knowledge across the two is not um, relevant. So please try as much as possible to register in the correct order. OK, so we're going to go on now to the Bachelor of Education Foundation phase teaching. This is our initial teacher education qualification. It is a four year qualification. It is 480 credits and it is at an NQF level seven. All modules are compulsory. It is a fixed curriculum, meaning that there are no choices to be made for subjects. The only choices that you will make are the different languages that can be selected. And as mentioned, I'll explain a little bit more about that as we go. Again, please register your modules in sequence per level. It is important that you build on the knowledge as you go. And then also visit our College of Education um, homepage. You will see that there are announcements up and um, most of the students, if you have claimed your My Life email already, should have received a curriculum for the foundation phase and the intermediate phase. It is a um, Excel spreadsheet which you can download and save on your device or print out and you can tick off your modules as you go so that you know you are completing the correct modules in order mm -hmm. and that as you go along you are acquiring the right um, number of credits for your degree. Here is a, a simplified version of your curriculum. You'll see there are the four years and there are 10 modules in each year. The modules in green are our education modules and these are offered in all the different departments in the college. Then these modules in purple are the ones that are offered um, specifically for the foundation phase. And again, these are offered by the departments of early childhood education. The modules in pink are your language options and these are the ones which you will select and then at the end of each year um, you will have a teaching practice module. Also just to note that the reading in foundation phase module, that module there in third level um, number seven, also has languages for you to 
select. So you can choose that module based on your home language. Um, so for example, if you've got um, Isi Corsa as your home language, you will take RFP um, in Isi Corsa. Okay, and then we're moving on to our next Bachelor of Education, which is the one in Intermediate Phase Teaching. It is the same as the B.Ed Foundation Phase, 480 credits, NQF Level 7. It is a four-year qualification, and again, all modules are compulsory. Um, you will choose your languages, and then you will also choose two school subjects, and these will be two modules per subject per level, so it's four in total. And I'll show you now um, when I get to the curriculum what I mean there. Again, I'm stressing and I'm going to say this for every qualification, please register the modules in sequence per level. And this, um, these students in the intermediate phase teaching B Ed, please make sure that your school subject relates to your methodology. So if you have done mathematics as a school subject, you've chosen that, then please don't go and do the, um, the incorrect methodology. Don't go and do the natural science and technology methodology. And again, um, you can visit the website and see the announcements and check your emails for the curriculum. Okay, so here is the intermediate phase um, curriculum, a simplified version. You'll see in the first level, those are our education modules. The green here are um, your language options, which you will select. And then in the orange are your school subjects. You will take school subject one, you will have two modules, and you will take school subject two, you will have two modules. And in your third level, you will continue with those same um, subjects that you selected. So you will take school subject one, the next two modules, and school subject two, the next two modules. You can't take all four choices and do two in the first year and a different, uh, two in the second level and a different two in the third level. Please make sure that what you are registering for in your second level carries across to your third level, and then the teaching methodology that you choose will be based on the school subject that you selected. So if you have chosen the mathematics, you will do the teaching methodology in mathematics, the TMN of that one. And then as with all our BEDs, every year has a teaching practice component. And I know that tomorrow we will be going through all the teaching practice um, things with our presenters. Okay. This is probably the trickiest part of um, our Grade R Diploma and our three B Eds. They are the language option selections. So um, I'm going to try and explain it simply and, and easily for you so that you can get this right um, from the get go. And it is important that in your first year, you select the correct modules because these are the ones that you are carrying through your degree. And these are also the ones that are endorsed on your qualification certificates. So if you have not completed the correct um, modules and you have not got the correct amount of modules, um, it's going to leave you in a, a bad position at the end of your qualification. So what you need to do is first select your home language based on your matric home language. If you have done Afrikaans as a um, home language in matric, then you will do Afrikaans as a home language in your degree. Then from that, you will choose your first additional language. It will obviously be something different to your home language. And if you have not chosen English as your home language, then English is compulsory for your home language. It's a requirement for the degree. And then lastly, you will choose your communicative competence. And that step there must be different to the other steps. So you cannot choose the same module, um, the same language that you have chosen as a home language or a first additional language. It sounds very confusing, but here is a nice easy table for you. Take a screenshot of it if you want. Um, it, it just simplifies your choices. So for example, if you have taken Isi Corsa in matric 
you will then take Isikosa as your home language in your degree. And you will see the module codes, it will say um, home language in, in the description of your module to select. Then it is compulsory that you will take English as your um, first additional language, and you can choose any other African language, so one that is not from the Nguni group, for example, Sesutu, Chibenda, um, as your communicative competence, or you could also choose Afrikaans as your communicative competence. And you need to carry these subjects throughout your degree. If you've taken Isikosa home language um, in your first level, when it appears again in your second level, you need to take Isikosa home language again, and the same applies to the others. OK, then our Bachelor of Education Senior FET phase teaching. Again, it's a 480 credits qualification at an NQF level seven. It is also a four year qualification, but can be completed in up to seven years. This qualification is offered in various subject streams. So the various school subject combinations have been packaged for you in um, a stream. There are more credits in certain streams where there are um, additional requirements. And um, this is all in your curriculum. So if you have chosen, you know, the life orientation stream, you will follow the curriculum for the life orientation stream. If you have chosen the agriculture stream, you will follow that curriculum for the agriculture stream. And again, please register your modules in sequence per level. Um, this is just an example of some of the streams that we have on offer. And as I mentioned, each curricula is packaged for the school subject that um, the stream represents. So if you are doing um, the HRG stream, the history and geography, you will have history and geography modules um, as well as the other education modules, whereas somebody doing the religious studies module um, stream will have religious studies modules. And then moving on um, to our postgraduate certificate in education. This is also senior FET phase teaching. Um, it is a 132 credit NQF level seven qualification. It is a one year qualification and it is a professional capping qualification, meaning that you have done a undergraduate degree with school subjects um, that are relevant and you have that knowledge and now you are um, perhaps looking at a career in teaching, and this will equip you with um, a qualification to go and teach the subjects that you have completed in your undergraduate qualification. It is also offered in subject streams, and again, there are um, more credits in certain streams where necessary. Um, the streams are limited at the moment in the PGCE, um, and we may expand them in the future years, but you are already registered in the one that you have um, chosen. The school subject combinations are specific um, and they're limited to the streams. So as with the B.Ed. Um, senior FET phase, you can't swap between the streams. You can't um, register for a life orientation stream and then halfway through decide to swap to a religious studies one. You need to complete because the, the modules are packaged in, in that way. And it is required that you would have in your undergraduate degree completed one school subject up to a third level and another one up to a second level. And now you are able to use that knowledge and, and through this qualification go and teach. Some of you might not have completed um, those prerequisites of a subject up to a third level or a subject up to a second level, and you are allowed to register a maximum of two non-degree purpose modules. So it's basically one level of a subject that you might still need in addition to the um, modules in the qualification. And then also part of the postgraduate certificate in education, students have to take a language of communicative competence. This is not a language that you have in your matric. It has to be a different language, um, one that you will be able to converse in. So 
myself, for example, I'm English home language speaking. I'm not going to take English as a communicative competence. I will rather go and register for SPEDI -E or ISICOSA so that I am competent to converse in those languages that I have not been exposed to. OK, that's all our undergraduate qualifications. I've said a mouthful. Um, just for more information, frequently asked questions, please, please check your MyLife emails regularly. If there's any changes to your qualification, to your curricula, important announcements, we do send out emails. And as um, we've all stressed in the previous presentations, the first step in doing that is to go and claim your MyLife account. And this is the official platform um, with which you must contact the university. Um, I'm not going to go into the reasons why. We've all, you've heard and heard them many times this morning. And then also read the announcements that are posted on the college websites, on your module sites. Um, these are the official communication channels of the university. And anything that is important will be communicated with you on these official platforms. That is all from me today. Um, I thank you. Keep calm and study hard. I hope that in a couple of years time, um, instead of sitting behind a screen, I'll be sitting on the stage and seeing many of you cross it with your qualifications. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you very much, Dr. Donna Hanaway. Just check the chat site and they respond to the questions where students want to know if they took Sitonga and they didn't take another language. So just respond to their questions. I see the team was responding to them, but you can also check and then add uh, some, some information where you feel it's necessary. And uh, I hope those who are confused with higher certificate and bachelors, I saw the team has responded to them. Thank you very much, Dr. Donna Hanaway. Without any waste of time, we are going to the center that is responsible for students um, living with disabilities. They support all the students. May I humbly request that students should not leave. We still are going to address the BPT 1501 module, the exam section, the invigilator app, the regions, the student support, the e-tutor, the academic writing, the library, the curriculum transformation. We are still having a lot in the port. May I request that the presenters that are coming now just to check on their time uh, so that we are able to get all these presentations. I see the numbers are being reduced now. We are now at 555, and when we started, we were at 700. So we don't want the student to lose the information, but we mustn't compromise the gist of our presentation. Mr. Nkuna from Upsuite, the floor is yours, Daddy. Over to you. Mr. Nkuna. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Program Director, Prof. Mahano. Thank you, uh, we can hear you. you Prof. Are Mahano, clear. can you hear me? Very clear, sir. Continue. Uh, thank you so much and uh, good day to our students. Uh, I must say that Prof. Mahano, each time she uh, organizes ev an event, she, she makes sure that uh, she accommodates diversity. That you can see from the sign language interpreter and also for the inclusion of ArcSuite. Uh, ArcSuite is the advocacy and resource center for students with disabilities. As ArcSuite, you always say nothing about us without us. And disability is not inability. ArcSuite provides the following support to students with disabilities. We assist students to complete application and registration, advise students to complete special assistance form. One may ask, what is special assistance form? This is a form that is completed by students who need uh, 
reasonable accommodation. For instance, if a student is blind, will require a real study material or audio material, it's important that students complete this form. We also convert study material for students with uh, different disabilities in different format. It provides sign language interpretation uh, for our deaf and hard of hearing students as and when required. Provide inputs to my UNISA, my life, to ensure access for students with disabilities. We also ensure that uh, whatever material that is submitted to our lecturers, it's in a format that they can read from our students. We established multi-purpose computer labs in different regions. These labs are equipped with access technology to accommodate different disabilities. In the spirit of nothing about us without us, we established uh, regional forums for students with disabilities and an association to ensure that students have a voice in matters that affect themselves. We provide training on orientation and mobility. One may ask what is, train, what is orientation and mobility? This is a training that is provided to blind and partial sighted students. Maybe in your community, you've, you've noticed a person, a blind person or a partial sighted person using a white cane to move around the community. Uh, these people or these students, they receive this kind of training to ensure that they are aware of the environment. We also request concession with regards to extension of assignments for students with disabilities. Uh, this is only done for students who cannot submit assignments due to their medical conditions or due to their disabilities. By so doing, we are not encouraging laziness to our students. We plead with students to try to make sure that they meet the deadlines unless uh, whereby your disabilities uh, hinders you to, to do so. We assist students to apply for special examination arrangements because for students with disabilities, it is important that they are reasonably accommodated uh, during exams. You may find that certain students uh, write very slowly. They therefore need extra time. We're able to assist with this as well. And those students who cannot type uh, their answers, we are able to also arrange uh, for oral exams. And in cases whereby our assessment does not accommodate a particular disability, we advocate for students to be uh, given an alternative assessment. We also advise our examination uh, office to consider students with disabilities whenever they are allocating resources. In, in collaboration with uh, the Student Funding Office, we assist students with disabilities to apply for financial assistance, which is bursaries, to cater for their study fees, prescribed books, and assistive devices. Assistive devices such as a laptop with screen reader, like JAWS for students who are completely blind, laptop with text magnification software, which uh, is Zoom text for students who are partially sighted and students with learning disabilities. Motorized wheelchairs for students who are quadriplegic, who are paralyzed from the neck downwards. Manual wheelchairs for students who are paraplegics. Digital voice recorders and hearing aids for students who are deaf or hard of hearing including the payment of sign language interpreters and human support. We encourage all students with disabilities who uh, received bursaries to apply for laptops that are accessible to them. One may ask, what is human support? For students with different disabilities uh, may need a support. Just to give an example, a student who's quadriplegic who's paralyzed from the neck downwards, may, may require somebody to assist them, whom we'll uh, refer as a caregiver. 
these funds for human support can be used to pay for a person who will be assisting you as a student. A deaf student may require a sign language interpreter to assist them. Therefore, the funds can be allocated to assist uh, uh, this, this student. We also work with uh, publishers both locally and internationally uh, to ensure that students with disabilities are able to receive prescribed books in accessible formats. Should a student, uh, should you need prescribed books, in a different format, please feel free to contact us. I'll share our uh, contact details at the end of my slides. We also conduct advocacy campaigns to raise awareness about the needs of students with disabilities. We provide training to staff members to keep abreast with disability related matters. We also provide support to the graduation uh, office. Just to give an example, in, in a case whereby you will be graduating and you are blind only to find that during the ceremony the program is only available inside head that will be unfair to you as a unit we ensure that the program is converted into a format that will accommodate you including braille and for also deaf students we uh, allocate a sign language interpreter so that they can follow throughout uh, the the program Ladies and gentlemen, I urge you all to join hands against the prejudice that constitutes the biggest barrier against students with disabilities. For those of you who did not disclose your disability, we encourage you to disclose and not to conceal your disability. Because why we, dis why we respect your right to disclose or not to disclose your disability? Students, who does not disclose their disabilities may not receive or demand reasonable accommodation from the university because we, we, we won't be aware of your individual needs. And I must emphasize that disabilities are not always visible. There are disabilities that are, that are not visible. Just to give an example, dyslexia. Therefore, even if your disability is not visible, please disclose so that we can uh, provide reasonable accommodation to you. We have two forms of disabilities and uh, people who are born with a disability and those who acquire disabilities. It is therefore important that after acquiring a disability, please inform us so that we can accommodate you. We can make your study journey uh, enjoyable. And uh, to the general population of students, it is important for you to know that disability can be acquired by anyone. Today, you may not be, you may not be having a disability, but you don't know whether uh, tomorrow or in future will acquire a disability. It is therefore important that we become sensitive to disability and accommodate our fellow students with disabilities. Uh, I must also, uh, make you aware that access staff members comprises of persons who were born with disabilities and those who acquired disabilities in their lifetime. As a result, we, are, we have the first hand information in terms of disability. Feel free to talk to us. Don't feel embarrassed. We are also aware of students who are reluctant to disclose their disability due to the fear of stigma and victimization, especially students who are new in the world of disability. Ladies and gentlemen, I can assure you that disclosing a disability will come with benefits to the university. No one will stigmatize or victimize you. And this is also important to use the correct terminology when engaging with persons with disabilities or fellow students with disabilities. Always find out from uh, your fellow student with a disability on how to address them properly. Just to give an example, always see the student first before the disability or see the, first, the person first before the disability. Refer to the person as a person with disability as opposed to disabled person. Just to give an example, uh, 
Uh, in most cases, people they tend to say students with disabilities are disabled. If you have an alarm system at home, when you disable it, does it serve any purpose? The answer is no. Therefore, we don't have disabled persons, we have persons with disabilities. It is always important whenever you come across a person with a disability or who's on a wheelchair or who's blind, talk to them, find out from them if they need assistance. Because most of the time, if you are a wheelchair user, when you are pushing yourself, you sit in a particular position. If you are being pushed by another person, you also adjust to a position so that you, you don't fall. And again, if you find a person who's blind at a robot or your fellow student, maybe in the in the library, talk to them, find out if they need help and where are they going? Because immediately you grab them without talking to them, they may think that you are mugging them or they are being robbed. They will fight you very hard. Therefore, please talk to persons with disabilities and please avoid petting guide dogs and don't shout when communicating with a deaf person. Simply look direct to the person and talk to them gently. The contact numbers of the Advocate Center for, Center for Students with Disabilities are as follows. For the benefit of our students who are blind and partially sighted, I'll read them uh, loud. Uh, to contact the academic support officer, send an, please send an email to pj at unisa.ac.za. For those students who require accessible study material, in different formats, please send an email to mooldld at unisa.ac.za. Our deaf and hard of hearing students who need sign language interpretation services, please send an email to mabasrs at unisa.ac.za. For, uh, for orientation and mobility, uh, send an email to zikhacg at unisa.ac.za. And regarding inquiries for buzzers, for buzzers and assistive devices, including a uh, human support, please contact uh, mashwmm at unisa.ac.za or nkunapj at unisa.ac.za and for other general inquiries you can send an email to axwit at unisa.ac.za uh, ladies and gentlemen in conclusion i'd like to leave with a quote by thomas edison our greatest weakness lies in giving up the most certain way to succeed it's always to try just one more time. I thank you. Thank you, Ms. Denguna. Thank you very much for your presentation. We really appreciate that. Inclusivity is the way to go. Diversity, making sure that all our students are included in the teaching and learning. Uh, Mr. Nkuna, can you take the last slide and, and paste it on the chat box for all those contacts? I know that students register and they omit to indicate and declare that they are living with a disability. And during exam time, that's when we get emails where they indicate that they are partially sighted or they need concession because they cannot uh, sit for three hours if the paper is for three hours, but they need more time. But without declaration, it is very difficult for the university to believe your story. Therefore, take all those contacts and um, touch base with the Tatenkuna and the support team to know what can you do because you did not declare in your initial uh, uh, registration. So Ntatenkuna, can you just put the, the addresses, email addresses on the chat side so that 
our students can declare and not uh, maybe get uh, 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 sorry scared when the exam paper is before them. Thank you very much, Ntatinkuna. Without any waste of time, we will go to the Curriculum Transformation Unit. Dr. Sili Dabani is going to give us a presentation on curriculum transformation. This is a, a cry that we got from the students around 2015 when they were saying roads must fall away with the, 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 the Eurocentric approach in our curriculum. So what do we do now? We need to involve our student also in transforming the curriculum. Dr. Sili Dabani, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Mahanu, and also for giving us this opportunity as the Curriculum Transformation Unit to present to our students today. And welcome to all our students at SEDU, and we wish you a very um, pleasant stay at UNISA, studying time at UNISA for 2022, and all the best. I'm not going to waste time I'll go straight into the presentation. I'm C. Lee Tabani from the Curriculum Transformation Unit. And you'll wonder as students what this Curriculum Transformation is all about. I am here today to present on Curriculum Transformation because in all our tutorial letters 101 at UNISA, when you open your tutorial letter 101, and you, there is section three of the tutorial letter. You will see that there is information on curriculum transformation. I'm not going to read this paragraph that is in the tutorial letter 101. I will share the slides with all the students after the presentation, Prof. Mahanu. So in this tutorial letter, all tutorial letters at UNISA 101, tutorial letters 101 at UNISA have this paragraph. And this paragraph speaks about curriculum transformation. I am going to introduce to you why curriculum transformation and what is this curriculum transformation. So in terms of what curriculum transformation is, and why do we even have curriculum transformation? Um, we, in South Africa, higher education institutions, not only UNISA, uh, have all begun to implement what is called curriculum transformation so that higher education offerings can become more responsive to the needs of the country and its students for authentic teaching and learning experiences. So we are presenting this, um, uh, uh, this on curriculum transformation because you will wonder why this piece in the tutorial letter was inserted. The tutorial letter guides us uh, on how we will be taught as students and how we will learn as students and how we as academics will teach our students. And as I say, I'm not going to read everything that is in my slides, but just to touch there and there that it's not only UNISA that is uh, talking about curriculum transformation. It is a nationwide um, call for all institu academic institutions to transform the curricula. Now, uh, they say a transformed university is one that accommodates changes in technology, the role of student support, the implementation of current pedagogies, and the alignment of curricula with corresponding changes in the politics of language, history, and student participation in, ch in change. And Prof. Mahanu also showed us the different um, environments that our students come from and that is why curriculum transformation is uh, 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 curriculum transformation has become a very important aspect of teaching and learning in academic institutions. Curriculum transformation addresses economic and socio-political uh, challenges that face universities. 
Uh, I'm going to the next slide that you'll just hold on. I'm a little bit. OK, my next slide is about I've already mentioned that it addresses the economic and sociopolitical re realities facing our universities. Now, uh, academics and students, not only students, academics included, require knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes, as well as support to integrate transformation principles. And the goal is to transform teaching and learning at UNISA by accommodating the changing technology and, as I've mentioned, to be responsive to the needs of the country. So another important aspect why we're presenting today on curriculum transformation is that uh, we as curriculum transformation unit, the curriculum transformation unit is going to develop a curriculum transformation online course for students. We are still uh, consulting with students to find out uh, what should be included in the course and how the course should be taught. And most of you first year students will be uh, 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 will be required to enroll on this course so that you are also equipped with knowledge and skills as to what is it that includes curriculum transformation, how we are going to be taught, how we are going to learn. I've, I've put here UNISA's vision that UNISA uh, is an African university shaping features in service of humanity. So through tra curriculum transformation, we are hoping that our students will be able to serve the communities that they come from. I'm also not going to talk a lot about the strategic plan, but UNISA has got a strategic plan 2021 to 2025. And this is just to, uh, this slide highlights that uh, curriculum transformation is very important and should be implemented at UNISA because it's also in UNISA strategic plan. I'm going straight into, uh, the academic, uh, the, the, the curriculum transformation online course. We have already started uh, equipping our academics with the required knowledge, skills, and values and attitudes uh, for their teaching and learning in terms of curriculum transformation. And the course is a three months course. Every year we train about 40 academics, but we also do go into colleges and engage with academics on this curriculum transformation journey. This year, we will be embarking on a course, online course for students, and we will be training our students and expose them to curriculum transformation principles that I'm going to share with you just now, not in detail, so that you as students can manage and understand the concepts in the learning process. Um, so the implementation of this online course, we are expected by the university that we train 40 first year students per annum every year. 40 students to be trained on curriculum transformation, what it's all about. And after training the first, uh, the, this first group of students, we will also be conducting uh, workshops with students across uh, UNISA uh, uh, regions. And we expected at least to train uh, 135 students. Why just 135 students and why only 40 students? We are going to roll out what we will be uh, calling curriculum transformation champions. So students who would have engaged in this in these workshops in this online course uh, regarding curriculum transformation will be um, curriculum transformation champions that we will also train them how to conduct workshops with other students in at UNISA. Um, my next slide is just uh, to highlight that we have what we call curriculum transformation pillars, and these pillars are going to inform the online course 
for the students. And just quickly, the pillars are also related to what we have developed as curriculum transformation guidelines. The guidelines are unpacking what the pillars are all about. So for example, we have one pillar that talks about infusing African epistemologies and philosophies. And this means that issues related to African, the use of African languages in our teaching and learning should be taken seriously. And we also talk about pedagogical renewal of teaching and assessment practices. And there's something that's called transformative assessment, scholarship of teaching and learning. I'm not going to go into details because I want to also share with you what the learning units, as uh, Dr. Mpatele said, other academics call it lessons, learning units, what those lessons and learning units in the course will uh, comprise of. We also have a technology, and um, Ms. Nankuna also spoke about um, te we using technology. How do we use this technology to reach out all students to make sure that uh, all students are benefiting from our teaching and learning processes? And to, to be student-centered, uh, diversity and inclusion becomes very, very important. But lastly, one most important part that we're going to be training students on, it's on monitoring and evaluation of this curriculum uh, transformation. This is important because the only way we can see that, remember on my first slide where I said curriculum uh, section three of the tutorial letter uh, talks about curriculum transformation. It's already informing students that you are going to be taught a little bit different, not so different because it's uh, UNISA, it's an ODL, ODL institution and which, uh, you know, uh, tries its all the best that uh, students who come from disadvantaged communities uh, gain access to this institution. So we will also need to monitor to see if this curricula uh, the teaching and learning processes have been transformed. So monitoring and evaluation will also play a very important part in this online course and in our uh, uh, students' learning uh, process. So I'm not going to go through the guidelines, but I will share this with students uh, later this presentation to say the guidelines are just unpacking what the pillars are all about so that when you monitor, you are able to say, yes, you know, in my course, they were using technology. In my course, the assessment was transformed, but we'll go back to, to the guidelines uh, when you have time to see what we mean by a transformed, uh, uh, by transformed uh, assessment practices. And then uh, the learning units, will be informed by the pillars. So in this online course, we'll have five learning units. And you'll see it's talking about monitoring and evaluation. It's talking about uh, diversity, technology, and African knowledge systems. Um, so I'm not also going to unpack uh, the learning units. Uh, because of time, but in learning unit one, when we talk about curriculum transformation and African knowledge systems, here we explore the meaning of concepts and principles of epistemologies. I know some of these terms are very, very, very uh, big terms, especially for us uh, first year students. And all it's saying in just uh, um, simple terms is that this learning unit will be sensitizing students, why are we transforming the curricula? And uh, what is it that we need to take into consideration when we transform the curricula? Then we go to the next learning unit. That one talks about diversity and inclusion. No student should be left out. And it addresses to, uh, uh, issues related to gender, sexuality, sexual orientation, and universal design as a method of teaching um, 
ensures that all students are included and no one is left out. Uh, the next slide talks about Learning Unit 3. Learning Unit 3 talks about transformative assessment. And in this learning unit, you'll know and understand when your lecturer says this is formative assessment, what is it that they are talking about? When they say e-portfolio, what is it that they're talking about? And um, technology, the importance of using technology, how technology should be used will also be uh, explored in this learning unit four. And the last learning unit, is monitoring and evaluation. In this learning unit, uh, students will be showed or taught, exposed to different ways that they can monitor whether academics, lecturers are teaching in a transformed way. So that's the last learning unit that we have. And in conclusion, without wasting time, curriculum transformation. Uh, 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 ensures that there is authentic learning. And also, how will we know that uh, there is curriculum, the transformation, the, the curriculum has been transformed? We will see in our tutorial letters that we receive from our lecturers that the curriculum transformation principles are included. So the paragraph that I mentioned that is in the tutorial letter, tells you how you will be taught. So at the end, you need to also evaluate and say, uh, yes, we were taught in a transformed way because all the pillars were included in our learning processes. And I'll just stop there for questions and comments. Uh, thank you so much for listening and thank you very much, Prof. Mahanu, for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Dr. Silit Dabani, for alluding to curriculum transformation and what is expected there. Thank you very much. You'll just check the chat site if there are questions related to you and you'll respond there. I see our students are still active. Keep it up, students. We love you. We love you. Thank you very much. Then we go to the library now because as a student, we really need to use the library. And you can ask yourself, COVID, how do I get to the library? How do I access the library material? Because we can't reach campuses. But now Ms. Tradom and Ms. Mutsati are here just to explain to us how are we going to access the library because we are far from the libraries. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Anna-Marie Stradom. The session is yours. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Prof, um, once again for including the library. And good afternoon, students, and welcome to the UNISA Library Services session. My colleague, Danisili Mutsati, will be presenting on Thursday. So this afternoon, it is only um, myself. I am Anna-Marie Stradom, and I am one of the two personal librarians for the College of Education. If you would like to access the library, UNISA library resources and services, the best way is to go to, the, to my UNISA and click on the library. I have circled it in red for you on the screen. Using my UNISA and keeping your password and access active is, of course, the best way. The UNISA library webpage is where you start. This is where you have access to all our services and resources. We place announcements here and we answer questions here. So if you are not sure how to use the library, then this is the place to go. Before we move away from the web page to how to search for material, I would like to highlight the lip guides button on the bottom on your right, at the bottom on your right. This is a very useful place and I want to call it a how to guide that was developed by the library staff for you. Here you can find information on a variety of different things. 
If you click on the library guide button, you will see that it brings up a list in numerical order, alphabetical order, excuse me. You can look for your subject, such as education, or you can also look by topic. If you are not sure what the topic is called or what is the name of what the name of the lip guide is, then you can use the search button. I have, for example, typed in ebooks and then you just click on search. What will happen now is that the lip guides covering ebooks will appear and you can then select from the list. It will, for example, ex explain what ebooks are, how to use them and how to access them. And I would really recommend that you visit this page. When we go back to the library page again, I would like to highlight two important buttons. Remember that we have branches right across the country. And you can access them with your UNISA student card. I saw in the chat earlier and I did respond. You don't need a separate library card. If you have a student card, then that is the card that you will use to physically access our UNISA libraries. You can use the, their facilities and you can, for example, have books couriered there. So please have a look at the list, which is now under branch locator, and you can visit the branch closest to you. Although we encourage students to use the online library, sometimes you do need to pick up a book or return an item or just have a word with the librarian. So then these branches are convenient to go to. They will show you where they are, their operating hours and what their contact details are. The other one is the frequently asked questions. Many questions are answered here. For example, how many books may I take? For how long? How do I request? And so on. I would like to move to the um, next very important point. We are still on the library webpage, and the button that we are now focusing on is click the Find e-reserves button. If you click on that button, it will show you the e-reserves that are available for your module code. Now, this will be indicated in your tutorial letter 101. E-reserves are prepared, recommended and prescribed material that is submitted by your lecturer in the previous academic year. It is then processed by the library and placed here and is available to students of that module. So you will see on that screen it is very easy to find. You just insert your module code into that search box. And then a screen will come up displaying the articles and chapters that were prepared for your module. Now, if your title, uh, your title letter, your tutorial letter doesn't say anything about it, please do not worry about it. There are subjects that do not have e-reserves. So once we've inserted our module code, here is the list of chapters or articles that um, is available for your code. Please make sure that you are working with the correct year. You will see that there are two years on, this, on, on the system and we keep the previous year for students that still need to write exams. So just make sure that when you are looking for your articles that you click on the correct year. Now, if you click on these, you will have access to the article or the chapter. It is already online available for you. You don't have to um, email or request it from the library. It is available there and you will be required to put in your student number and your MyUNISA password. And just like all the other speakers, I would really like to encourage you to make sure that the password is always functional and the same with your My Life email address. We correspond with you from the library via the email address, so it is important. Now, once you've authenticated yourself, you can access the article directly. As I say, you don't have to request it from the library. It is already there. You will see that you are able to um, either print it or email it yourself or save it on your computer and it is ready for use. Now the next 
um, part that we are looking for is when we are searching for book material, which is part of the UNISA library collection. We are back on the library webpage where you click on search the catalogue. If you click on that, it will take you to this first screen. If you know the title of the book that you are looking for, then you can leave the first block on title and you type in the title in the search block in the middle. You will notice that this the third block says view entire collection. I will a little bit later just show you how to change that and only search for ebooks. If you're not sure about the title, then you change the first block to keyword and then insert the topic, for example, inclusive education or educational leadership or research methodology. And in my example, I and use in my the to bring his light into our lives. I'm sorry, there's some other noise. Sorry about that. If uh, you are not sure about the title, then you change the first block to keyword that I've said. And then in my example, I used the in the first block, I used the author as I have the author's name. And now we have a screen with the author's name and the items by this author. Please note the additional entries button. I have circled it in red there for you. Um, please click there to see more. Maybe the item that you are looking for is listed there. Once you've located the item you are looking for, and the book is not in a specific library where you, uh, which you could access, then you can click on the request button. This will create a request and the item will be either emailed or couriered to you. Please make sure that when you look at your results, the postal request only collection must be requested. You can see it's just below there, below that circle um, around request. There is a collection that says postal collection request only, and that must be requested. You cannot go to the Michael Library to collect that item. It has to be requested. When once you've selected your item, screen will come up. Always make sure that you are requesting the correct book. And then in that special instruction box, you could write Courier Durban or Courier Paro or whichever branch library is closest to you. And then the item will be couriered there. If you leave that empty, then the library will automatically post the item to you. Um, I have to say, please remember that this is a process. So once you've requested, it goes into the system and then it goes to the departments that process these requests. We sometimes have a situation where students would request a book in the morning and then they arrive here in the afternoon. Or by here, I mean at the main library in Michael in Pretoria, and then they um, expect that the book is ready. You will always be informed through either SMSs or emails where the book is, how far it is, has it arrived at a at a um, at a branch library so that you so that you don't waste time. Okay. I would like to explain the use and availability of ebooks. The library has a very large collection of electronic resources. So while we are not traveling that much or you rather want to work online, then this is the option for you. You will use the exact same page that um, I explained earlier where we look for books. So the only change will be in the third column. I'm sorry, there's some noise in the background. I'm not sure, Maud, if you can do anything about it. Sorry about that, um, students. You will use the very same page and then instead of view entire collection, you just click on the down arrow and you click on ebooks. Now the system will look for items with this keyword and in electronic format only. Please remember that you do not have to request the item. It is available directly to you. That is why you need to always ensure that your MyUNISA password is functioning. 
this is what the screen will look like. You can clearly see the left arrow shows. It's an electronic book. There is also no shelf number and the status says to you it is online. So you know that you are working with an electronic book. So once you've clicked on the title that you selected, you will get this screen where it tells you that you can connect to that item. Remember, this is for registered students and staff only. And then you will, once you've clicked on it, you will be able to access the ebook. Um, we do find that students are sometimes cautious um, with ebooks, but it is a wonderful resource. And once you've used one of them, you will you will know what I mean. Then I'm going to quickly run through some administrative processes. The next one is extending the loan periods of books on your name. It is always very important to keep tabs on what is out on your name so that you don't incur fines or you have books that have been recalled or it should have been back in the library and you are still sitting with it. So when you are not done with the book, um, the physical print book when the due date arrives, then you um, are welcome to try and renew it. And this is done on this page where you click on the My Library slash Renewals login page or button. What will happen is that a list of books that you have out will display. You will always be able to see at the top, you've got a list of books and then you've got those buttons that says renew all or renew selected. Always make sure before you select the renew all button that you do have all those books in your possession. If, it, if not, then please contact the library so that we can see what is going on. Alternatively, you can only um, select the book that you want to renew and then request the renewal. The system will all immediately give you a new date and it will inform you if the renewal is not possible because you can only renew three times thereafter the book has got to be returned. And please re then return it either by mail, courier or at any of the branch libraries so that you do not incur fines. Then our, the last part of the presentation looks at Google Scholar. We do advise students not to use the general internet for studies and research because unfortunately, the quality of that information is not always good. It is better to use the UNISA library databases and we are privileged enough to have a large collection available for your use. But it the, the use of those databases will also prepare you for further studies so that you know how to search and where to find the information that you require. But you can set up your Google Scholar to indicate whether the UNISA library has the articles that you are looking for. So you go to Google Scholar and then you click on settings as I indicated here. On the next screen, you will click on library links and then type in University of South Africa on this screen. Please select the two options that are being displayed and then save at the bottom. And then Google Scholar will display the subscription when you do a search. You click on the UNISA library link and then you'll be able to access the article. It makes it much easier to use and you know the information you are getting is of good and reliable quality. You can then download the article and store it on your computer or email it to yourself. This is where you click on the library's database and then you are able to access the article right there. No request necessary, you don't have to contact anybody. This is exact. This is where you find it. That concludes my presentation for today, and thank you very much for listening. We hope to hear from you soon. Thank you, Prof. Mahan.
Thank you so much. I was on unmute. Thank you. Mewi Ningobeni, let's applaud Mewi Ningobeni. Anamari Stradom, thank you. Respond to the questions on the chat. Now we are moving forward uh, to academic writing. <coughs> Prof. Jojo Zingiswa will be directing us. How do we write when we are at the university? We are no longer going to write the way we used to when we were in grade 10. You are now going higher. You are now going to write in a logical and coherent way. When they say discuss, how do you link the sentences? How do you connect ideas and thoughts? Professor Jojo, we are, we are all yours. Please teach us how do we write academically. We are first years, we want to learn because our assignments are waiting for us. Over to you, Prof Jojo. Good morning, Prof. Uh, good morning to you students and good morning to colleagues. Uh, may I just confirm, Prof, if you can see my slides? We can see them just uh, presented yes. in a presentation mode so that they are bigger. Okay. Then where will I go? Um, All right, wait, Prof. I will, I will manage. Yes. That's the sign. Okay. Perfect. Now okay. the writing is big. Colleagues, students, uh, I am Zingiswa Jojo. I'm from the Department of Mathematics Education here at UNISA. I'm going to be taking you through writing academically. Now that you've gone to the library, you are preparing to write your assignments. You've been taken through uh, how to access, access those assignments on, on the system. Now you have to write. One way or another, it is either you're writing uh, them on a, a script, and then you will uh, scan and send to us and upload on the system, or you are typing your assignment. My presentation overview is very short. I've got, uh, I will explain what academic writing is. I will talk about the types of academic writing. I will take you through the importance of academic writing, the principles underpinning academic writing, and I'll actually uh, also give you examples. Now, academic writing is a process of writing analytically. It is the breaking down of ideas with the purpose of presenting information that depicts a clear understanding of a certain subject in a rational, organized, systematic, reasonable, and logical way. Now, for you to succeed as a student in the courses, you must write effectively. You can use what we call ADAPT. I will unpack what ADAPT each letter is talking to there when you're doing your in your academic environment so that you can remember. Now, you need to consider first the A, which talks to the audience. Who is going to read your work? Is it your lecturer or is it other students who will uh, read your students? You must know who, which audience are you writing for. Uh, your 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 script or your 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 information must have directness. Now, you do not have the luxury of eye contact in our case at UNISA or expression and follow up to clarify a meaning. So, whatever you are presenting, you need to express yourself in the clearest and most direct way possible, so that the reader can be able to understand. You also need to take authority. What is that? You add evidence. Now that can be in the form of statistics. It can be in the form of real life examples or other research. Uh, opinion actually is not enough evidence. In other words, what you think 
is, isn't that it should have some authoritative uh, information. Like, for example, you could uh, quote the Department of Education statistics. You can't just be saying there's poor performance in, in mm. mathematics in 20 for the past few years. You need to substantiate that with statistics that uh, you will be taking, uh, for example, I'm just making an example, from the diagnostic tests and all that from the Department of Education website. Uh, your statement must have a purpose. It, 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 it must talk to your own argument or voice or perspective on the assignment uh, topic. And you must also have a technique. You, you must use modern English grammar, including word use and order, punctuation and sentence structure. These elements help the reader to navigate your sentences smoothly with a clear understanding of meaning. Now, how will you ascertain that this is done? You'll ascertain it by you write your assignment. After writing your assignment, you read your assignment so that it makes sense. And then you take care of those punctuations, those uh, um, tense issues and other things. Now, let us come to the types of academic writing. There are four main types of academic writing. You are either describing something, you are analyzing something, or you are persuading a, a, a thought, or you are critically writing. And each of these types of writing has a specific language, uh, the features that are, are assigned to it and some purposes. And in many academic texts, you will need to use more than one type. Let's start off with the analytical one, which we sometimes call expository. This kind of writing requires you to investigate an idea, to collect and evaluate evidence that supports that idea, to expound on it and provide an argument that involves something and that explains something. Uh, when we come to the persuasive uh, type of writing, it requires you to investigate a topic, form your own opinions, generate evidence in support of those opinions, which is what I called earlier on authority, and convince the reader with strong arguments that okay. you are making a yeah, valid point. Now, sometimes it yeah, could either be a narrative. If it is a narrative, it requires you to tell a story about a personal experience, an anecdote, which is a short summary, amusing or interesting story about a real incident or person or a real life situation. Or you could be uh, asked in an assignment to describe something. So what will you do? You will have characteristics with descriptions of objects, of places, of persons, of emotions, of experiences, situations, and other things. You are asked to analyze something. So what you are doing, actually, you are painting a picture, but you are using words to paint that, uh, that, that picture. Now, how important is academic writing? The first step in completing an assignment is ensuring that you understand what is expected in the assignment, in the questions that require you as a student to analyze. That implies that you must explain a multifaceted uh, text or an idea by breaking it into parts. Now you must remember to state what the relationship between those parts is and also why. Or you would be asked to assess or evaluate. In that case, they are saying determine the significance or value of something by examining it closer. Uh, come to an overall educated opinion on the issue based on course readings, other research or, or some reasoning. Sometimes you may be asked to compare and contrast. What does that mean? In that case, you are required to examine two items to discover similarities and differences. Or 
and in most cases, we are, we need to paraphrase. In other words, you don't just take whatever you find in a text as it is, because that could be that could lead you at some stage to to more similarity or plagiarism or something. You would need to paraphrase. What does that mean? It means restate a passage in your own words. This builds students' uh, academic writing skills. You must reword the announcement using your own vocabulary. With my last slides, I will give a, an example of exactly what I mean by paraphrasing in academic writing. I'll actually give a, an example. Sometimes you are asked to reflect. It means you must think about an idea deeply and consider its impact or remember to remain neutral and objective when writing about the incident. Most of the time in education, we want to be teachers and you go and uh, do teaching practice. And at that stage, they will want you to reflect on the experiences that you encountered as a teacher in class. Now, that's exactly where you need to think deeply and look at the impact that that has done in you. Most of the time we are asked to summarize. There you are expected to express the main points of a reading in a shorter form. While reading, you need to pay attention always to the W's, the five of them, the who, who did what, what was done, why was it done, where did this happen and how did it happen? You need to find that in the text all the time when you're doing some, uh, summary. Now, you need to also support, support your work or ideas. You must justify your point of view by providing evidence. And that evidence can come in the form of statistics, examples, or another research, what I called earlier on authority. Now, there are principles of academic writing. You don't just uh, write. You need to be precise and complete. What does that mean? You must be conscious of choice of words that conveys exactly and gives complete meaning of what you are trying to say. You cannot leave the reader pondering and thinking, what, so what was this person saying? You need to be clear. Use simple language, except that there are technical terms that are required perhaps in your own discipline. You need to be brief. Uh, that means be as short as possible, straight to the point, avoiding unnecessary words or sentences where you will now find yourself repeating things or being redundant. Be effective in structure. That means make good use of sentences and paragraphs and well-organized uh, sections. Use correct spelling and grammar. It is important for you to clearly express and logically order your ideas in a flowing, coherent manner. The ideas, as you put them in the sentences and in the paragraphs, they must be coherent. You cannot speak here and there and touch up and there. You need to be coherent. Use simple and clear illustrations. That is indicating higher order thinking or more sophisticated understanding. Follow disciplinary conventions. Now, I'm talking here that before you deviate from conventions, you must make sure that you know what the convention is for that particular discipline. In other words, use specialized standards and guidelines for writing within your field of study. When I'm writing in my field of study in mathematics education, I don't write as if I am a social worker and take things uh, very lightly on. I'm becoming specific as of the need of my discipline. Now, there are phrases that you as a student can use when you write. For example, if you want to identify a, a debate, uh, that is the, 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 the scholar X is debating with scholar Y, you can say scholar X disagrees with scholar Y. Scholar X agrees with or is in the same school of thought as scholar Y. Or scholar X builds on the conclusions of scholar Y. Or Scholar X confirms the findings of, or rather Scholar X has got reservations about such and such, whatever, of Scholar Y. And there are key uh, signposts words that can be used also in critical academic writing. For example, 
when you want to show that you are about to draw a conclusion or make an inference, you can use uh, uh, conjunctions like therefore or things like consequently or thus or hence or for that reason. And when you want to justify or explain, you definitely are going to use words like because, like since. And if you want to provide a contrasting or opposing view or you want to criticize, you can say, although so and so did this and that, however, this is what happened. While uh, Nomsa was doing this, in, and, and you can say in contrast with, when you want to show the, uh, or to provide illustrative or supporting evidence, you, you then say, for example, and you say such as, and then you, you state what uh, some examples that you want to cite. When you want to make an additional supporting point or provide additional supporting evidence, uh, you, you, you then put things like in addition, so and so said this, or moreover, you've been talking, talking, and then you say, furthermore, that means you're still continuing with what you were saying before. Those are some of the uh, um, signposting words that we can use in academic writing. In academic writing, the entire point of writing is to synthesize or write about the relationships between issues or a subject. Now, the following words and phrases are very useful because they express specific types of relationships between ideas. For example, if you want to say in line with, you will say somebody is elaborating, that means that person is in line with, enters the debate or debates or breaks out, uh, out uh, of the, uh, and then is of the same uh, paradigm. And, and, and if you want to say something is linked to, you will say it contributes to the, or you will say it is of the same category, or you will say in the same vein, or you will say more specific or more general in the, or you are saying a narrow scope. In other words, you are still linking the same thing too. And lastly, if you want to say something is responding to, you will say research on, or you say in, in agreement with um, Jojo so and so, or in response to uh, Maposas, whatever, uh, in reaction against uh, the fees must fall, you know, you are responding and, 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 and you, you state a point and you say it confuses or it reinforces. Now there are do's and don'ts. There are things that you, you, you should be doing. For example, Spell out words, spell them out. Don't, uh, let's not write the funk language or the language that we use in our cell phones. We, we, we use uh, cannot, we don't say can't, we don't say don't, we don't say won't, we say would not, we say do not. We use personal pronouns sparingly. In other words, uh, when you're writing an assignment, you say in this essay, in this essay, I will argue. You wouldn't dare say, I think we can help our country. That, that becomes vague because you think, and who are the we? And uh, whose country is it, is it still including the we? It, it becomes vague and it, it's not uh, academical. You can say, uh, for example, you, you can say, uh, you keep your language very formal. They frequently socialize, you know? They, they, then, then in that case, frequently is, is actually bailing you out rather than you saying they always party because always can mean a lot of uh, many things. You use specific language. Most people discard plastic packaging from consumer goods because they are not designed to be recycled. You can rewrite and say people always throw away packaging from stuff they buy because everything cannot be recycled. That, that, that is the kind of uh, uh, do's uh, that we have. So always make sure that you, you, you are not really conversational or opinion based. Rather, you are formal and you are precise and there is evidence that you can provide as you are talking. I'm coming now to the examples, uh, one example where we, we can use paraphrasing and restate 
this thing in an so I'll first read it in a in a very casual way it is written it appears that more and more students are being bullied in high schools today in order to halt the progression of it something needs to be done Teenagers should feel safe so that they can learn and go to the next level. Due to the fact that bullies are constantly zoning in on others, many will not get uh, the chance. We need to put peer mediation and a no tolerance pol policy in place in all our schools. Now, if you would be going sentence by sentence with that, you would find that there are very many things that I just said under general and uh, I make some assumptions without providing any evidence. Rewriting the same paragraph academically, we will say many students are being bullied in high schools today. To halt the progression of bullying, educators need to implement policies. Teenagers should feel safe so that they can learn, graduate and attend college. Because bullies are constantly targeting others, many students will not get the chance. Educators and administrators need to put peer mediation and a no tolerance policy in place in all schools. Now you are straight and everybody knows what you are saying. And in finishing, uh, dear students, I want to say good writers are those who keep the language efficient. Keep it accurate and keep it clear. I'm borrowing from Ezra Pound and I thank, I thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Jojo. I see the comments on the side. The student are saying, can they have your presentation? Can you copy it and paste it on the chat box, uh, Professor Jojo? We, we really gained a lot. And also paraphrasing, because most of the students, they the fell students. into the trap of talking, plagiarizing. Then they were now into disciplinary uh, platforms and the cases are still there. So this is one way of writing. Don't cut and paste on the exam script. Learn to paraphrase. Thank you very much, Prof. Jojo. Thank you very much. Can you paste it on the site? Now we are I going to tutor. Thank you very much. Tutor support. I see some are tired. They say, oh, no, this is taking too long. It's true. This is university. If you are tired, just stand up, stretch your legs, drink water, and then come back so that we may continue. The critical part is coming. We put it deliberately at the end so that we lay the foundation. And when we come to the serious things, why are we now saying you, are, you have copied? And you are not aware that you were copying. You just thought the lecturer will prefer an answer exactly as it is from the book. This is what we are referring to. Learn to paraphrase, learn to summarize, learn to use your own words. Don't copy. Thank you very much. So let's hang in, stand up, get water, and then come back. We will finish, and we really appreciate your patience, students. We love you. You are going to be excellent teachers. Uh, can we clap our hands? Because we are teachers and you are going to be excellent teachers. We believe that. We believe that. Matty Petreja, tutoring. What is e-tutoring? What is, what is it all about? Come and tell us. Prof. Jojo, can you stop sharing? And then put it okay. on the chat for the students. Right. Thank you very okay. much. Our students, uh, uh, colleagues, you can see this year we have an excellent cohort of first years. I, I wish we can go to the regions and meet them personally. Uh, COVID, go away. We want to see our students, please. Metipe. Afternoon, Prof. Thank you. If you can share your slides. Are you able to 
see the slides. Can yes, you please confirm? We can, we can see them. Just make a slight presentation so that they are bigger. Is it in a slight presentation? Not yet. They are still smaller. Just click on the bottom. There's a sign that looks like a chalkboard. You click on it so that the slides are enlarged. Hmm. On the bottom of your screen, there's a weird note. You go to the right display settings. You then there's a sign of a chalkboard. Go to the right. No, not that one. Not that one. This one. Yes. Click on this it. This one. Fine. Perfect. Thank you, Prof, for this opportunity. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let me extend my special greetings to the college management, the Dean of Students, SRC, Sedusa, and my fellow colleagues. Um, now that the previous speakers have elaborated on different topics that play a very important role in your academic journey as students, such as the claiming of my UNISA account, your curriculum structure, the library services, your academic writing that was just presented by Prof. Jojo now, and many others that came before me. It, it is very important to know that we are aware that as a university that you will need support to navigate through all this information and all these topics that we have been presenting earlier. Now, that is where the eTutor office comes in. Ours is to help make your, your academic journey seamless, to make it enjoyable and hopefully lessen the burden for you. We know UNISA is a huge university and at times you might not know where to find which information. I will be discussing the role of eTutors within your journey as a student. Before I start with my presentation, let me also clarify that there are two different types of online teachers. They are those that are helping the, for the BPT 1501 students. We refer to them as teaching assistants. Most of the times they will be referring to them as TAs. That's their abbreviation. So please do not um, confuse them with e-tutors. E-tutors are for all other modules except BPT 1501. Our office, the e-tutor office, offers all tutorial services that you will need throughout your study. The main important role of, of these services is to try to bridge the gap. We are aware that it's a distance learning, open distance learning or DEL with an E. Online and we, we understand it might be a bit difficult to be studying alone in your own corner at home. Hence, we have these support services that will make the journey more enjoyable and easier. Now, the services will be provided to you by a qualified teacher. These are professional teachers that are appointed to help assist you through the journey and support you. The services are for free. Please note that point. These services are for free. You will not be paying anything. All you have to do is to make sure you use them. Tutorial services are offered for all modules from NQF level 5, level 6, and NQF level 7. They will be provided to you by e-tutors, those professional uh, teachers that I referred to earlier. They will help provide you with support to successfully complete your studies. The most important thing or the most beneficial um, thing about the e-tutoring e is that you can do it at the benefit at, at, at home Anyway, even if you're on campus, you can log in and, and access them. You can do it at, the, at your own time. There, there's no specific times where the e-tutor e will be. I will be online at 7. Please be online from then. I won't be responding to questions. Yes, there will be times where e-tutors will, will be. If you have questions that that are very important for example during exam times or, or assignment submissions 
and you really need to speak to them at that moment. They will give you slots when they will be available for immediate response. But otherwise, every lesson that they will be offering will be on the eTutor site. Now, the eTutor sites are found on my module uh, platform. That is our learning management system. This is the system that Dr. Mpakele was referring to that you need to claim my UNISA before you do anything. After you claimed my UNISA, you'll be able to access your module site and other sites as well, including the eTutor site. I have explained the role of your tutors in this in, in your journey, your academic journey. The other important thing that you need to note is that they will not only be helping you with academic support, having to, to help you understand the content of your module better or because you'll be grouped in smaller groups. Remember your module lecturer. You might find that a lecturer has three modules and with each module they might be having 10,000 students. So the role of an e-tutor is to lessen the burden on the lecturer and to give you prompt response when you need attention. A lecturer will not be able to attend to 15,000 students at a time. Now the university has provided the support in smaller groups for students to be able to go to get somebody who will assist them in their journey. The e-tutors e will help making your learning environment more comfortable. They will be there to help you with your administrative queries that you have. If you're having issues with finding your unique number on your assignment, if you're having issues with not seeing where your official study material is, these are the, the people that will be your go-to pe persons at that time. If you're having issues with your technical problems, uh, for instance, you are not able to log into my UNISA. Maybe you are unable to reset your password on my UNISA. You, you may pose a question to them. They will be able to help you with that. They are quite handy when it comes to all those. The main important question will be how am I going to I get access to this e-tutor? When, when you register, we wait for registration to finalize all the registration for the semester or the year. As soon as that is done, you will be automatically by the system allocated a group. Now your group of, 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 of e-tutor, you will see it on my modules 2022. I believe Dr. Mpatele has shown you where to find my modules 2022. I will still show you again in the next slide. That is where you will find all the sites that you are linked to. As soon as you are grouped, you will receive an email and or maybe an SMS stating that you are allocated to this e-tutor. It will give you a group number. If you can see where I highlighted in red at the bottom B, a group number, it will be exactly like your module, your module code, the year you are registered in, the semester or year, and the last two digits are the most important. That is the number and the letter E, the, a capital E at the end. That will be your group site for that module. If, for instance, you are registered for five modules this semester and you are grouped, you have e-tutors for four of them. They will all contain your module code for a specific module code and, and a, a letter at the end, letter E, a, a number. A number may vary. It might be a 2, it might be a 10, it might be a 20. So it will not be a, 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 a constant number. For instance, for all your four modules or five modules, you'll find that you have a 2E or a 5E. You might have different numbers at the end. But please take note of the last number and the alphabet that it will be your, your e-tutor side. As Dr. Mpatele has shown you when, when, he, when she showed you how to claim my UNISA, this is where you will find it under my modules 2022 tab. So when you click on my modules, you'll be able to see all the modules you are linked to. It, it, it's shown in the next slide. It's exactly how she has shown you in the previous session. All these modules, these are the ones that I'm linked to. You, you will find yours different from mine, the modules and your e-tutor sites will be there. Should it happen that you 
towards the end, of, let me say around the end of March, April, you do not find your ituta sites or you're struggling to find it. I will give you contact details where you will need to drop your details. Very important, always put in your student number and the module code you are referring to because it will make us finding all this information very easy and helping to link you very easy for us. Now, how will you be communicating with your e-tutor? When you land on, 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 on your default page on, on your group site, you will find all the different tools on your left as indicated on the slide here under my the grades you find your dashboard calendar and all those tools you will also find a discussion forum additional resources and and lessons other e-tutors remember they will work differently these are teachers they have virtual classroom the group site is their virtual classroom each tutor has their own method of teaching now some might prefer to um post in lessons you'll find the tools on your left they are they are named as lesson one lesson two lesson three some will be will name it a discussion forum so you all the information different lessons and discussion summaries and all your activities will be under the discussion forum so please go through the tools on your left under your welcome messages announcement check them all of them you will find information from your e tutors also, you will find that some also include information, additional information from the lecturers. For instance, if a lecturer gives them an article, provides them with an article that uh, the tutor needs to share with the group of students, you will find it under additional resources. If, if there's any information maybe regarding assignment information, contact details, how to get exam contact details, you will also find it under additional resources unless that issue prefers to send an announcement with all that information. So your e-tutor will be the go-to person regarding any other information that you are unable to get. This will help speed up the response of any, any response you require regarding administrative, technical, and your content. Uh, this will be the, 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 the last of my presentation. But please, please take heed. It's important to use these services. They are free. You will not be paying a cent. And the most important and nice thing about it is that you will be able to use them at your convenient time. In the comfort of your own home, you can drop a, a tutor a message on the group site at 2 a.m. They will respond the following day when they log in. But remember that our official platform is MyUNISA. So we can only communicate the e-tutor, the lecturers, they will communicate with you on the on, on my user. The e-tutor will use the e-tutor site, the lecturer will use the module site. I believe this, this brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, I would like to thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, you can post them now under the discussion chat. Um, my colleagues are also here with me, will respond to them. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Metipe. They are also requesting your slides. Uh, Prof. Jojo, I didn't see you pasting the slides. Metipe, can you paste them on the chat so that they're able to access the slides? Thank you very much. As I Thank wrote you. also on the chat, we are not asking any money for tutoring. And uh, as you need some students, don't waste your money affiliate with groups that we do not know. No, save your money, use the tutors that are here employed by UNISA. Thank you very much. Now it's yes. getting hotter and hotter now. We are now going to exam section. And the exam section we have Ms. Muloy Sani Mary and Mr. Rasewota who are going to uh, take us through the exam processes. And may we need Gobeni, our sign language interpreter, shall we give you the sign of love again? We really appreciate the work that you are doing to make us that show that we are inclusive and our students 
with the disabilities will be able to see and understand this presentation. Thank you, Oswini. Oswini, we love you with our, your sign language interpretation. Thank you very much. Exam section. Let's listen attentively for those who never sat for the exams at UNISA. Some were here last year. Maybe you came again today. Let's listen attentively so that we know what we are going to do when exams um, are here at hand. Um, there's somebody who's sharing her screen, uh, blocking the view for, for, for us. I, I, I can't see the name of this person. Um, okay. Thank you. Can can Mr. Rasebuta, can you share your screen again? The slides. And Memo Loisani, yes, now we see the slides. Thank you very much. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, colleagues. Program Director, Prof. Maanu, colleagues, students, a very good day to you. My name is Daniel Rasebuta, and I'm with uh, Ms. Megisiko, We'll be taking through you the presentation on formative uh, assessment. Remember, we do have a uh, formative assessment and summative uh, assessment. Uh, before I continue, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Mpatele for a detailed presentation information on how to navigate uh, on uh, my UNISA, more specifically on submission of uh, assessment, uh, visa assessment, assignment because uh, that's where it's important for us as uh, AAD or uh, Student Assessment Administration. Thank you, Dr. Mpakele. That uh, information is uh, worth, worth known because uh, it's where it's our interest. Let me start uh, by indicating that um, assessment is a important part of uh, teaching and uh, learning, and uh, which focuses on improving the quality of student uh, learning experience. I'm not sure whether the slides are moving that side. No, say we are still seeing the first slide. Uh, technical. It's a technical <laughs> problem now. If you okay, can. maybe let me just continue. Maybe it will move while uh, I'm uh, presenting, not to waste time. I was still saying that uh, unless if you can try to fix this now. You can unshare and share again and then don't make a presentation mode, even when it's small, it becomes easier if your laptop is freezing. Is, is this a weird document or slides? It's PDF. Oh, that's why it's difficult to, to move the PDF slides. Um, okay, let me just check the, the weight. And um, what do we have this the presentation from yes, our designer? Yes, it's right presentation. Okay. Can can maybe if you can go to it mod and, and share it from your site? Okay. Uh, I would love uh, Vuyo to assist me to project the presentation. Vuyo can assist. Memaliwa. 
Yes, Maud. But from my side, it's also the PDF version that I have from Mr. Rasibut. Okay. Can you make it Word? Save it in Word. It will go to a, a Word document and then it will be easy. To, to can, can you see my slide now? Yes, now they have moved, though they are okay. small. Can you enlarge them? Yes, that's better. Thank you, Dr. Rasevota. Uh, we will enroll you in the College of Education to be a teacher. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Now they're gone, okay. And Tate Shabangu, can you register one other student? <laughs> okay, uh, students, can you drink water? Come back while we are fixing our technical glitch here. Drink water and come back, stretch your legs so that um, the blood circulation Water, ne? we drink water. Ne? Yes, we can see Mr. Rasavata. Okay. Uh, unmute. Thank you. Now we can see. You can continue, sir. Yeah, maybe really I need to register. <laughs> yes, College of uh, Education will welcome you, sir. Okay. Uh, once more, uh, I was still saying that uh, assessment uh, is an important part of uh, teaching and learning and uh, focus on the improving the quality of student uh, learning experiences. And we shouldn't forget that um, what is important is that uh, assessment should be reliable and valid or fit the purpose. And uh, all students have to be assessed to show that uh, they've achieved the level of competency and they have acquired the required knowledge to pass uh, the module. This will assist students uh, in a working uh, force or in their career path to be able to apply the knowledge and the skills and values that they have learned during the process of uh, learning. As uh, part of the background information, we are guided by the and aligned to the assessment policies, assessment procedure manual, and other teaching and uh, learning uh, policies. And our role as DSSA is to support the administrative part of assessment in partnership with ICT to set up the processes and to set up the necessary system also. Remember, we are now in a, a technological, technological world, so ICT play an important role in the whole process. So our role, again, we are also handling all student inquiries regarding the assessment-related um, uh, matters. And we are also supporting all lecturers with assessment plans and capturing of uh, marks. Uh, Dr. Patel uh, talked about the submission of uh, assessment. That information uh, uh, derived from the assessment plan. The assessment plan is drafted uh, by the lecturer to show how assessment will be conducted which include the number of assessments to be submitted and the type of exam to be written. And uh, remember, all assessments should be online. Not forgetting that uh, each and every assessment has a due date and time to submit. So it's important for uh, students to adhere to those um, uh, due dates. And uh, there are more information which is available on uh, my UNISA portal for every active student to acquaint uh, himself or herself regarding the uh, assessment. The assessment information is also available on the tutorial letter 
where the student can access that information from uh, the tutorial letter. Another thing which is important is that um, uh, the inf uh, important information regarding the on assessment. Assess uh, assignment or assessment important is to assist with uh, achieving of learning outcomes of the module. And as I've indicated that uh, each and every assignment has a due date, please student uh, adhere to those uh, due dates. And uh, what is important regarding the due date, it will give you ample time to revise your work. It also give you ample time to check if there are errors on uh, your assignment. And those students who are using also the Turnitin, uh, they are able to check the similarity index if it's high. And but when you do the last minute uh, submission, you are, in, you are unable to check such uh, information, whether the similarity index is high or what. On our site, another information which is very important is that each and every assessment has got weight and those weight and, and contribute towards the year mark. Those weights will differ from one uh, module to the other. For example, uh, if a, a specific module or a, a subject, uh, for argument's sake, ENG 1501 has got three assignments, you might find that assignment one carries a, a, a 20 percent towards the year mark, assignment two carries uh, 60 percent towards the year mark, and assignment three carries uh, another 20 percent for towards the year mark. So why I want to emphasize that uh, there are some certain queries that we are receiving where students are inquiring that my year mark is low because, uh, on, 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 while I've scored 80% in the first assignment and 80% in the second as, uh, assignment. For, no, uh, forgetting that uh, each and every as assessment has got uh, a weight. As I've indicated that uh, the weight will differ from one module to the other. And uh, each assignment sub, uh, submission enabled student to get uh, exam admission. I'll discuss that uh, at a later stage, meaning that uh, it's important for the student to submit uh, assignment for them to be granted uh, exam uh, admission. So those the details regarding that information in submitting the, I mean, in granting student uh, exam uh, admission. And uh, not emphasizing that uh, I like to say all assessments are submitted online. No hard copies will be accepted uh, or uh, marked. There are types of uh, assessment. And, uh, the other one is single file upload in, in simpler form written essay type. Dr. Patele have uh, explained how to submit uh, that file. And we also have quizzes uh, and also have forums. And we also have uh, workshop activities. Workshop activities are allowed for limited peer assessment. And uh, lastly, on the types of uh, assessment, quizzes and forums information is available on the module uh, uh, site. Uh, regarding the submission and routing of assessment and uh, through the marking process, assessment are uh, submitted on my modules and they are routed uh, directly to the lecturer for uh, marking. And uh, as I've indicated in the previous discussion that uh, don't wait until the closing date to avoid uh, uh, unforeseen circumstances, uh, unforeseen problems regarding the submission of assignment. Because uh, some instance, some students are submitting only the cover page and uh, it's because they've submitted on the last day. Uh, some they are submitting the study guide uh, instead of submitting the correct uh, assignment. So only find that uh, during the marking process, the markers or the primary lecturers, when they are trying to mark those uh, uh, assignment or that assignment, uh, they realize that the student submitted only the cover page or the student submitted um, the uh, study guide. So it's important that uh, you submit the correct uh, information on the correct uh, uh, platform. I also want to emphasize that uh, there's no uh, resubmission of assignment is allowed after the due date and after the ass uh, assessment has been uh, marked or during the process of uh, marking. So there's no resubmission uh, with regard to that. If the due date has lapsed, if uh, the assessment uh, is in the process of being marked or has already been uh, uh, marked. 
And uh, when submitting the assessment on my modules, they must follow the, all the steps which Dr. Um, Patele have also explained until you receive the confirmation that uh, your assessment has been received. Make sure that uh, the content is correct and you must also uh, keep a proof of submission uh, uh, safe. To, uh, well, because if there are queries, you must also, if the university requests the proof of submission, you must be able to, uh, to vanish the us with such information of uh, proof. In terms of marking of assessment and feedback to the student, after marking the assessment are sent back to the student, and system is updated automatically in terms of marks. Student will receive uh, the notification with a link to access their marked assessment on their My Life uh, account. You can even download the marked assessment, uh, assessment uh, offline. If you want to discuss anything regarding the marked assessment, you can contact our lecturer for clarity regarding that. And, uh, in terms of the exam admission, as I've indicated that uh, this is also an important part. Exam admission is based on the criteria set by the lecturer on the tutorial um, uh, letter. There are different criteria uh, which uh, will differ from one module to the other. But in passing, uh, submission of uh, assignment is one of the criteria which is used. The other criteria, the, uh, the module coordinator or the lecturer might require students to achieve certain percentage for them to be granted uh, exam admission. And some of the uh, module coordinator or the primary lecturer, they might require a student to submit certain number of uh, assignment to be granted uh, exam admission. Remember that uh, no student will write examination if not uh, admitted. Simply means that uh, if you have not been granted uh, uh, exam admission, you will not be allowed to write uh, the examination. For inquiries from uh, our site, there is an email where students can send uh, uh, their inquiries to assign at unisa um, dot ac dot uh, z a. I think on that score, uh, I'd like to wish everyone the best for their studies for 2022 academic year. And uh, in conclusion, there are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation and uh, hard work. And uh, I can't emphasize more that uh, focus and commitment play a key role. I thank you. Thank you very much, Ntatera Sobota. Thank you. Um, one other thing, if I may add, because these are first years, we do not copy. We do not use board portfolios. Don't buy a portfolio. We are going to see that. Thank you very much, Dr. Rasulullah. Is Memo Loisani coming? Yes, Prof. Okay, over to you, Memo Loisani. Uh, good afternoon. And allow me to greet, a special greeting to Prof. Makano and team by ensuring that year in, year out, you create this platform so that our students are empowered. And also to the executive team and SRC, SEDUSA, colleagues, and our distinguished students. Um, let me share my, my presentation. Uh, Prof, just indicate if you are able to see my slide. Yes, we can see. Just make it a slide mode. Thank are you very much. To... Thank you. Okay. 
I would like to concur with uh, what you have indicated, Prof, that it is no longer a ministry uh, to study or to take examination in an online. And if I may say that uh, GenFEB, it is our sixth time in taking the examination in an online base. So many lessons have been learned. So that being said, um, our examination, it is categorized in three phases. That is the pre-examination, the actual, and the post-exam. So in the pre-examination phase, it is the planning phase. And uh, as I've already indicated that uh, many lessons, we have learned a lot of lessons in this mode of examination. And I believe that not only the first time students in UNISA are in this platform, we have even those uh, who will be, um, who have taken an examination, they can even attest uh, by seeing all this chat, uh, all communicate on the chat, that can say that uh, we don't have only the first time uh, students. So in a planning phase as a student, you will receive the timetable two weeks prior to the actual examination. And furthermore, on your timetable, there will be two dates. The two dates on the timetable are the starting and the end of date with time, also the starting time and the starting and the ending of the session. And furthermore, ensure that you have the gadgets or the equipment to write your examination. And also ensure that the area that you will be taking an examination it has a network. I know that uh, all of us have been affected by load shading, and this load shading, usually they will communicate with us. So as soon as you have your timetable and you can merge it with um, what has been communicated uh, in terms of the load shading, you can make a plan so that by the time you take your examination, you are in an area where you will not be disturbed and ensure that you have enough data. The institution, they provide data to the students uh, prior to the examination. So when you receive the data as a student, make sure that uh, that data, you will use it for taking examination. I believe that our students, uh, they can just note this one because once you get the data and you use it for any other things, by the time that uh, examination, you have to take examination and we don't want to find ourselves wanting. And furthermore, uh, you will receive um, the as you have received the timetable, ensure that uh, you will go and download your question paper 15 minutes prior to the actual examination. Let me just proceed with my slides. And student with the special needs, I do not like to say disability. So, Student with special need who require special examination arrangement must apply annually and in writing. And also they must just provide the medical certificate specifying the nature of the disability so that we may make an arrangement for you as a student. And now we are proceeding to the actual examination. On the day of examination, what is happening? 
the student must ensure that he or she is at the correct site in order to download the question paper 15 minutes prior to the commencement of examination. And further note this, no clashes will be permitted. And I need also to emphasize this, of which my colleague, uh, Mr. Shibambu, will just come and just discuss with you the zero tolerance of any dishonesty or cheating. This is just a disclaimer. Examination dates are subject to change by the university. No student can just request to, uh, for us to change the examination. And furthermore, take note of examination rules that is on the question paper. And uh, I know that uh, our time, you've been on this platform since in the morning, but allow me to take you through the examination rules, which also will be posted on my live. So students must upload their answer script in a single PDF file. Answer script must not be password protected or uploaded as a read-only file. No email script will be accepted. And also just to emphasize, you will only submit your examination script on the communicated platform, not any other place. Students are advised to preview submission or answer script to ensure legit legitimacy and the correct answer script has been uploaded. Students are permitted to resubmit their answer script should their initial submission be unsatisfactory. You might find that you have submitted page one or you have written your examination from page one up until page 10. And when you do your uh, uploading, you find that your system, maybe you have uploaded page one to, to page five. Hence, it is important that after you have submitted, just check that uh, your system has uh, uploaded all the pages. In correct file format, an uncollated answer script will not be considered. Incorrect answer script and or submission made on an official examination platform, as I've indicated, including the invigilator cell phone application, will not be marked and no opportunity will be granted for resubmission. Just note this one. A mark awarded for an incomplete submission will be the student's final mark. No opportunity for resubmission will be granted. As I've already indicated, if your all examination is page one up to page 10, and you find that you only uploaded page, page only two pages for argument's sake, and at the later stage you say that, but uh, can I be given an, another opportunity to, to submit all my examination? Know that the academic will only grade you for those pages that you have submitted. A mark awarded for eligible scan submission will be the student final mark. No opportunity for resubmission will be granted. And please know that once you have made your submission, just check again because what's happening is that some of the students they will submit the question paper or some they will submit any other document except the exam um, question, I mean exam script. Submission will only be accepted from registered students account. If you are registered for that module and you've been admitted to write examination, then your examination is eligible. Students who have not utilized invigilator of proctoring tool will be subject to disciplinary process. Let me leave this one for my colleague, 
Mr. Mulukwani, he will take you through of the do's and the don'ts in terms of uh, the proctoring or the invigilation. And colleagues, we should note also that in examination, examination, it will come in two types. That is um, the MCQ and also the portfolio. And with an MCQ, let me highlight this. Uh, students are provided two submission opportunity for the MCQ examination. If it is still within the allowance examination duration, no additional time will be allocated for resubmission. In a case that where you have made a mistake, you will be given only two opportunity. And if you don't use it or if it's outside the duration, then know that you will not be allowed. And students are advised that the examination duration time commence as the students start their examination. No additional reading time is provided. If utilizing your cell phone to respond to your MCQ examination, update your cell phone operating system before commencing your exam. Also clear the cache and cookies memory prior to your starting exam. Because with the cell phone always, it will always at the background see whatever that you have downloaded. Do not open your examination in multiple browser windows or tap at the same time. If you do so, the system will automatically submit responses on behalf without your knowledge. Marks awarded for automatic submission will be a final mark. No additional opportunity for resubmission will be given unless students utilize their second MCQ exam opportunity within the allowance examination duration. Do not click your browser back button while taking your examination. Students are at risk of losing previous responses should they utilize browser navigation button. Students are advised to always use Samigo navigation button to move to the next and previous, if allowed, to save and to submit. Save your responses often if multiple questions are displayed on the page. The system will automatically save your responses should one question be displayed per page as you click next to move on to the next question. I believe that you have catch it and I will also submit this on the chat. Take note that the year mark will only be considered for purpose of calculating the final examination summative assessment mark if a student attain a minimum mark of 40% in the summative assessment set for the module. In a case where student you will attain 30 in the examination and your year mark is 98 for argument's sake, know that your year mark will be disregarded because of this sub-minimum rule. The only time where the subminimum rule will uh, kick in is when you will attain 40% in the examination and then your year mark will be considered. I hope you are taking notes. In the post exam process, after we have written examination, what is happening? Please take note that from the 3rd of August 2020, in line with the requirement of the Protection of Personal Information Act 4 of 2013, only students' queries sent from my life will be addressed. So ensure that you download your My Life account 
as Prof. Um, Patlele has indicated, and all the speakers, they were emphasizing my life account. So meaning that my life account is, you know, is a tool that will assist you to navigate through your career um, life in UNISA. The university will regard all results to be correct and complete if no queries is received from the student within a period of three months from the date of release of examination results. It will be unfortunate when you have a query, you just leave it like that. And after four to five years, you will come and query about the results of 2016. We still have the students who are doing that. And I believe with the group that we are right now um, giving this information, as soon as you receive your results and you do not agree and you feel that is not a true reflection, it is your responsibility as a student to, to query at exams. Students who applied for a remark and who have been granted a supplementary examination in the module should continue preparing for the examination until the remark results has been finalized. It is your prerogative as a student if you are unable to sit for an examination, you can apply for an agrotech and you need to attach the supporting document. And the process for the student to assess the platform to apply for agrotech is as follows. Again, on my UNISA. Go to my admin. On assessment admin, select examination timetable. On a view of timetable, go to apply for an agrotech. Enter details requires there. Student, please, you need also to submit your 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 supporting documents and just to indicate um students we have the closing date for the remark and also the purchasing so for exam that is uh in january and feb the closing date for remark is the 31st of march and for examination that will be written May and June, the closing date is 31st of July. And examination that will be written in October, November, the closing date is the 31st of January. I hope that also you have noted all those dates. Um, these are the email address where you need to send when you make your queries for any uh, dis disabled students or special needs student here is an um, email address exam disabled with one word at unisa.ac.za and with the remark remark at unisa.ac.za and purchasing is purchase scripts with one word at unisa.ac.za and with the agrotech we still also receive some of the agrotech where students will make their queries via this email but we encourage students as soon as you know that you are unable to sit for an examination go to my admin and make your application there and for any other exam matters, here is an email address, exams at unisa.ac.za. Uh, it is at this junction where I would like to appreciate you connecting and listening to us. And uh, allow me to say that in the preamble of Prof. Mark, 
she emphasized that this can be a lonely journey. And however, she said that you are not alone. And furthermore, what I've also, uh, you know, catch it, she said that the College of Education, it is a home with different rooms. So colleagues, UNISA, we have collaborative approach in resolving examination uh, issues. So in a case where you will, uh, in an examination where you will start, you will need um, an assistant, take uh, this number, it's for our call center, which is 080-000-1870. I will also make this information on the chat. And also it's exam inquiries with one word at unisa.ac.za. You are not alone. We are here to service you. And all of the best for your 2022. Don't look down upon yourself. You can do this. Press on. We are them who are pressing on. You are tomorrow's educators. Thank you, Prof. Thank you very much, Memo Loisani, and uh, all those email addresses, if they can be put on the chat or the entire presentation so that our students can access them. Um, there are questions on the chat. What if you write the exam and you get an absent? instead of getting your results if you can respond to that and then the other question will be responded to by Ntate Molokwani who is uh, I, I think Jamie was asking where do we submit in Vigilator app or um, my UNISA so that one will be responded to by Mr. Molokwani if you can just respond to the absent the student writes an exam but Instead of getting the result, it says absent. Memo Sunny, quickly. Um, Prof, I think I will have uh, the student number. This is not um, something that I w we can just say that we use one approach. It happened, sometimes the student uh, was not uh, admitted in the examination. So when we publish the results, you find out that student uh, from our system is left out. So we need to get each and every student and investigate and will respond. OK, another question. What if I don't write my exams due to medical condition? What must I do? Student need to apply for an agro -tet within 10 days Thank and you. attach also the supporting documents. Thank you very much. I hope Swongile, uh, is it? No, no, Loazi, you got the answer. Um, okay, now then, then, then other questions are for Dati Molokwan. They are already here, the Invigilator app. <laughs> Your session is now. Thank you, Memo Loisani. Let's applaud Memo Loisani again for clarifying some of the issues. Thank you very much, Memo Loisani. You will put your presentation on the chat site so that our students are equipped even further because we are just bombarding them with information. There's a lot. Um, the platform is yours now. Over to you. Thank you, thank you, uh, Prof. Mahano. Am I audible? Yes, loud thank and you. clear. Thank you, thank you, Program Director, for the opportunity offered to me to actually do this presentation. I would like to greet uh, all our academic colleagues and all student formations that, that are here and, uh, and students who are not part of any of the formations. Uh, I think uh, what was shared by my previous colleague, uh, colleagues from exams, because I'm part of uh, DSA, which is 
Directorate Student Assessment and Administration. MIND is a process that comes towards the end, wherein when students uh, write exams. Previously, we used to utilize exam venues, but now, as you all know, that we have moved to online platforms. Uh, online platforms posed a challenge because uh, it was discovered uh, during the initial phase that more uh, there were students who, who were actually uh, soliciting assistance from other people to actually write uh, uh, on their behalf. And uh, in an effort for UNISA to curb this uh, kind of behavior, we had to come up with a, UNISA to come up with a way of actually preserving uh, academic integrity of our qualifications. It will be a very short uh, presentation. But I believe that there will be many questions and I hope that I will be able to address some of them. Thank you. I'm just going to uh, just uh, project my presentation. Please, uh, Prof Mahano, just indicate if my presentation is actually showing. It's coming. Not yet visible, but it's, I think it's coming. Is it projecting now? Mm, yes, it's projecting. Thank you very much. Very okay. clear. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as I've uh, uh, explained earlier on that uh, I, I represent uh, uh, Director of Student Assessment under Invigilation and Administrative Services. My name is Dominic Molokwane. Uh, the, the proctoring tool that UNISA utilizes or uses for, 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 for this college, uh, college of Education is what we call the Invigilator app. The Invigilator app, which is what is projecting now, is like a, a logo of an owl. <laughs> Some people were scared when we came up with to say that an owl. Oh, that's very scary. But uh, uh, it's, a, it's an owl, uh, it's logo. This owl, we, which we call the Invigilator. You can download it from Microsoft stores, Android stores, as well as uh, your any other stores, depending on what type of cell phone that one is using. You can download this app, where you get uh, apps for various uh, organizations or business units outside of UNISA. You can also get this Invigilator app. I saw on the chat, the student was asking, uh, how do we download it? You go through to that uh, uh, stores that I've actually mentioned to actually do the download. We normally encourage students to do the downloads before the exam commences. I know that uh, your exams will be commencing uh, around May, June. Uh, the date has not been uh, shared as yet because registration is still continuing. But once that uh, is shared and you receive admission, we will actually appreciate if, as a student, you download this app from the stores that I've mentioned. How does this app work? Which is this functionality? It's a cell phone based app. Why was it designed only for cell phones? It was realized that most students don't have access to laptops. So the, uh, uh, it was uh, an investigation was conducted and uh, it was discovered that 98% uh, of our students have got access to smartphones. So this app is actually geared to even low entry smartphones. You don't need a fancy smartphone. You can get a low entry smartphone uh, even at your pep stores. Some of them goes, uh, the price is 400 rand, 500 rand, et cetera. What it does, it actually creates an exam center feel for our students. Students must know that uh, they are being watched. Even if they are writing exams at their own comfort of their homes, they must know that somebody else is watching them. Big Brother is watching them uh, in the form of this cell phone. Uh, it is very much less invas invasive. Uh, as I've uh, uh, actually indicated that it preserves academic integrity. So in our effort as an institution to ensure that our qualifications remain intact and are recognized worldwide, 
we came up, uh, we, we actually shopped for a software that will assist in actually maintaining that type, type of integrity. And uh, so, uh, the Invigilator app was more, uh, more friendly and more accessible. And we realized that we need such a, such an, uh, a tool to actually ensure that our exams uh, maintain their integrity as well as our qualifications are recognized. No one, no one wants to actually study at the institution of higher learning after they've completed their qualification, they are told that that qualification is, is worth nothing. I have had colleagues repeating that uh, we've got teachers here and our teachers, we don't want teachers who will actually uh, pass uh, uh, having uh, uh, passed in a, in, a, in, a, in a manner that is not up, that is not uh, actually uh, applicable wherein there's a lot of misconduct and so forth and some people are writing on their behalf or you are, you are buying this qualification. We really need to have teachers that will represent us in our society and that will ensure that uh, our, our country moves forward. What does the app, what does the app do? The app what it does, it takes what we call random checks. What are those random checks? It will request you to actually take a photo of yourself. You don't take a photo if you don't receive the instructions. You need to wait for the instructions before you can take a photo. It does what you call random microphone checks, random photo of ID documents that you have. You can either have a passport or you can have a driver's license. As it instructs you to do that, you do that. But you have to what we call uh, be registered for this app. By being registered for this app, because you are a UNISA student, some of your modules, not all of your modules, some of your modules will be invigilated through the app, not all. Because some of your modules might be portfolios that you take for two to three days. With the, what the app does, it will only invigilate modules for a maximum duration of four hours. The maximum duration that it can actually invigilate is only four hours, not more than that. It can do three hours and two hours as well, but not more than that. Uh, on the day of the examinations, Students, before the exam commences, please note that you need, I, I will repeat it, you need to have downloaded the app. Within the app, there's a demo, a, a video that one can actually go through to know how to actually navigate through the app. When you register, please make sure that you use my life email address only, not any other email address. We have had instances where students are, are logging in on the app when they when they are registering on the app. They are using my uh, Gmail accounts. They are using uh, their other Hotmail uh, emails. No, the app will say people who have used it, students who have used it, they will tell you that when they try and register, it says we don't recognize this email. Please, con 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 uh, please uh, call your university so that they can verify this email. So all your email addresses and your my, your my life email uh, emails are shared with the with the company, wherein they will create licenses, and uh, your lecture will share what we call a QR code with you. QR code, we all know that is a, a, a QR code, it needs to be scanned so that you are able to be invigilated. That QR code will be shared with you two weeks before the exam starts. So I'm not going to take you through the process for now because your exams are all, uh, more than two to three months. Uh, uh, we, there's no date as yet, but they're still coming. But prior to that, you will know which QR code will be linked to your module and you will receive this information on my announcements. So all this information will be shared with you before you undertake the examination. So you will know. And I need to also caution that the QR code has got a time limit attached to it. 
for MCQ exams, we say that you can scan the code within the first 30 minutes when the paper is available. When you open the, the, the UNISA uh, site, which is the Moodle platform, I think you will be you will be educated further on the Moodle platform. When you open it the, on the my exam site, you will be able to, 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 to get the QR code. And for MCQ, which is the type of exam that most of you are doing, some of you are do, will be writing, you will, you will be requested to actually scan that QR code and it will only be available for 30 minutes. However, colleagues, I need to, be, uh, to, to, to expand on this. If your, 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 your MCQ is divided into various sessions, we ensure that the QR code is available for the duration of the, uh, of the session, the whole session. Whether you are in group A, group B, group C, or group D, you will be able to scan the QR code. With the take-home exams, we make it 45 minutes available to be scanned. Why we say that is that for the first 15 minutes, we believe that you want to, it's a take-home exam. You want to download the paper, so we allow you that administrative process to take to take to, to to happen, so that you go through that. But what we have discovered is that other students, I know not you because you are failing you, but other students are using that opportunity of downloading the paper to actually scan through the paper and forget to scan the QR code. So they go through the paper which is something else that we, we came across even at exam venues. When the invigilators were issuing the most question paper, instead of filling in their details on the answer script, what students will do will just rush and peruse the paper itself so that they can write answers. The same procedures, same rules that were applicable at exam venues are also applicable in an online platform. When we have completed uh, uh, scanning the QR code, the timer will start. It will show on your phone. During an exam, as I've indicated, the app will instruct you to take a photo of your script. It's an instructions that you, 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 will, you will receive from the app itself. There are two types of photos that you will take. It's either your ID or your driver's license or any other photo, your passport, that will show your face because we need to ensure that the student that is writing an exam is a student that is registered with UNISA. I hope, uh, I hope colleagues are following with regard to this app, colleagues. Uh, very important, very important. I'm just having some struggle with uh, with my, I just want to add uh, on the slide the, the issues that I want to share with you that are very critical. When you scan the code, you must ensure that your phone is fully charged or charging. Because if the battery dies, it means that you, you, it won't be able to actually finalize your invigilation results. So you need to ensure that your phone is fully charged or it is you are placing it on a charger. Do not lock the phone or exit the app during the session. Your phone should not be on silent and the volume must be turned on. What we have discovered is that some students will put their phone on silent and it won't be able to pick up the recording. But forgetting that we are able to pick it up on our site because it will indicate through the report that we get to say that this phone was on silent. So we don't want to, 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 to take students on regarding that. We are saying that let's follow instructions as they are indicated. As I've, I've alluded earlier on to say that all this information will be shared with you through what we call a student uh, guide regarding the app. All what I'm, I'm summarizing here is actually expanded on the student guide. 
So that information will be provided to you prior before the commencement of examinations. You need to be connected to the internet when logging on. And at the end of the timer, when it reaches zero, let me explain what I mean. It is a cell phone based app. It does not require uh, a lot of uh, data. However, when we have scanned the code, it only requires only 15 minutes, uh, 15 megabytes or 20 or 30 megabytes, just a little bit of data so that for you to scan the code. Don't turn off the phone. The app will do the invigilation in the background. If you experience uh, some form of uh, you don't have data, you need not worry. But you must ensure that towards the end of the session, because the QR code is set in such a way that it's the duration of the exam. If an exam starts from 8 to 10, the QR code will be scanned within the first 30 minutes and will invigilate the student for those two hours only. Although your submission will only be required to be done in terms of your answer script if it's a take home exam will be required that you do it on my exams platform, not on the app, as my colleague has alluded earlier on to say, don't uh, uh, do your submission on the Invigilator app. Such submissions will not be accepted because what we have found out is that uh, some students will say that I could not finalize my submission because I was left with three or four pages. That is not the intention of the app. The intention of the app is to invigilate, is not to receive submissions. The intention of the app is only to invigilate. So when you finish, uh, the, when the session is finished or the invigilation is finished, it takes eight minutes for those instructive uh, instructions of taking yourself, your selfie as well as your, your, your answer script, whatever instruction that you receive when you, are, when you are locked on or when you scan the QR code will be uploaded towards the end. It only takes eight minutes. If indeed you find that uh, it asks you to upload even the whole answer script, which is not supposed to be the case, we are going to close that, uh, that instruction so that it doesn't require you to actually upload it. But uh, previously it did, and students will, will actually think that if they've done the submission on the app, they're finished, forgetting that they have to do the submission on my exams. And the, the good thing about the submission of my exams is that you are given an extra hour after the exam is completed to do that submission. Take into cognizance that you might experience connectivity and any other network issues. So that uh, one hour itself can also allow you to go to an area where there is connectivity. So uh, uh, the app itself, if you experience any technical problems, there is what we call a WhatsApp line, which is 073-505-8273. It's, it's a WhatsApp line. It's not a, 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 a contact center. It's only a WhatsApp line where you communicate with the technicians or on the other side who are the suppliers of this app who will be able to assist you. Please note that they only assist you with technical issues, not any other issues, not issues like, because some of the students, they only use the cell phone, uh, one uh, device to write their exams, meaning that once you start scanning the, uh, the code itself, it will open up the assessment and towards the far right hand corner, it will also give you access to my exams platform. So some students, when they've scanned the code and they can't get access to my exams platform, will contact the technical help desk and the technical help desk will refer them to UNISA. If you can not access my exams within the app itself, please contact our contact center, which are, it, the number has been given to you is to say you phone this number 0800-001870, because that is a UNISA issue. That is a, uh, you want to access the site. So you, you, you need to phone the user contact center so that we can take you through that. 
Yeah, I think that's all for my side, colleagues and students. Uh, what will happen is that we will actually provide you with uh, the student guide in terms of the navigation of the app. I will also post it on the chat so that you can have access to it while waiting for information to be shared with you to, towards or when we near the exam period. But like I said, uh, this information will be shared with you by a primary lecturers who will actually provide you with a QR code or put the QR code on my announcement. What we want the students to do, which is critical, is to ensure that they do the demo exercises. If they don't do the demo exercises fully, they will experience problem. Most of the time we find that students are struggling. They say it's the app problem only to find that it's a user. They didn't do the download. They don't have any connectivity. They say it's, a, it's an app. That's not the case. Most of the cases that we have investigated, it shows that it's a user issue. They were downloaded. They downloaded the app on the day of the exam. Because once you download the app and do the registration, on the day of the exam, you need not register again. You are just going to scan the code. And if you have done the registration, if you also are going to write during the second semester, you are already registered as a student. You just have need a QR code that will be shared with you by the lecture that you can scan so that you, so that you can gain access. So we, 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 we hopefully, colleagues, we will have another session that will be called with regard to the proctoring tools because we need to have uh, uh, this many sessions in regard to proctoring tools so that we assist our students fully so that they can understand the importance of this proctoring tools that UNISA is, is using for their examinations. I think Prof Mahano, I'll pause here. I saw uh, some questions. Maybe I, I can try and respond to those that are, are, are showing on the chat. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Mulukwane, thank you so much. There's a question from Megan. When I registered on the app, it won't accept my live email address. It says uh, I must contact here, yeah, it seems, the university. I think because it is still early and the modules are not yet sent to the service uh, provider. I think that's that's right, Prof Mahalu. Remember, as I've said, that uh, once the information is shared with the support team, we'll be able to send them their details because the exams have not started. Once the timetable is ready and admission is done, that's when we will, we will actually register all the students that are going to write for May, June. But if a student is coming back from the previous exam period, uh, it, it shouldn't be a problem for them to actually register. Thank you. I think uh, she got the answer. It is still early uh, for one to download the app and to register now. But later on, when your student number has been sent to the service provider, then when you register, it will recognize you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I think there's a confusion of Moodle and what? Just know that my UNISA, my UNISA is Moodle. Just know that your, your module site is on Moodle. I think they, they are being confused now. So um, that's that. I think uh, we are okay here. Dr. I don't see any pressing issue other than the registration. May we applaud Dr. Uh, thank you for the presentation. We will do more of these sessions. Prior to, I mean, closer to the exams, we are going to call him again so that we are alert when we go to our exams. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Mahana. Thank you. I'm going to call Mr. Rankwitiki and Mr. Shivambo to share the academic integrity, disciplinary cases. Um, they will share their time because now we are moving to the module BPT 1501 after your presentation. Over to you, Mr. Shibambo and Mr. Rankwitiki. Can you share the, the period?
Okay, can you make this slide presentation mode? Thank you very much, Mr. Rankutik. Over to you, sir. Slide presentation again. Yes, I'm um, sorry, Prof. I, I didn't unmute myself before, hence I had to go back, but let me take it back like this. Uh, yes. good, uh, good day, Prof, and good day to all the students and the colleagues uh, in the College of Education. Um, SAGE stands for College of Education, 2022 orientation uh, students and colleagues. Um, my name is Mr. P. Iran Kodeke. I'm the College of Education Academic Integrity Chairperson. I will be quick since due to time, I understand that students are tired and they are really can't wait to knock off. But however, this is one of the most critical aspects that I'll be touching on. And the presentation will also be availed on uh, various platforms and uh, students are always welcome to inquire uh, in this regard. Uh, then the first point that I'll be touching on is the definition of academic integrity. It refers to the values of honesty, trust, fairness, truthfulness, accuracy, respect and responsibility in teaching, learning, writing, research and community engagement. The definition is being adopted from the UNISA um, policy, the 2018 exemplary academic integrity. Uh, this, um, this will be the point of departure. Uh, I'll try to be as fast as I can. However, I will try to elaborate on important uh, key factors. All academic activities by students are expected to be based on sound ethical grounds and should be the result of a person's own skill and labor. That is uh, according to UNISA in 2017. According uh, activities that undermine academic integrity are dealt with by the registrar in respect of the students in line with ordinary disciplinary procedures. You shall see that as I go to my next slides. Then um, uh, students who are having values, um, every UNISA student should uphold. It's like as we can see that in the middle we are having honesty, then that means for you to uphold the academic integrity policy of UNISA as a student, you should have trust, you should be um, have um, respect, you must be responsible for your work, there should be sense of accuracy, there should be sense of fairness, and those are the ones which really would make you a, an accredited, um, respectable teacher as you will be one after completing your qualifications. Then I'm going to touch on this um, activities that violate academic integrity. Um, I'll start with this one. So there are two which I'm going to dwell much on that is plagiarism and cheating. The other ones I'll just go through. Um, plagiarism is the act of taking the words, ideas and thoughts of others and presenting them as your own. It is a form of theft which involves several dishonest academic activities such as the following. Cutting and pasting from any source without acknowledging them. Not including or using incorrect references. Paraphrasing without acknowledging the original source of the information. We do understand that as students I've seen on the chat, most of the students are, are requesting to say they want their study material. As much as you'll be given or you will have access to your study material, that doesn't mean that you should always or you should, under any given circumstance, copy the information from your study material and write it as if it is your own. All the information that you'll be having, you should have to paraphrase. When you paraphrase, we mean that you write it in your own words so that it might not look similar to the other. And after doing so, you're not done also. You still have to do what? Acknowledge the source. For example, if maybe you're doing a certain module, MIP 1501, for example, there was a question whereby you should discuss the use of numbers in grade three, for example. So you should, when you take information from the study guide, you should, however, still code to say the use of Numbers in grade three is to help learners understand um, collaboration within this and that if that will be the response from the study guide and in the brackets again, you should also code, uh, I mean, or reference that study guide and that will be pure 
way of writing, as uh, Prof. Jojo also indicated in under academic uh, writing, that students should be able to argue, not to just take everything from the book and just write it as uh, their own. And again, uh, the, like there's a way in academic um, students, it is more about they say than I say. It is not always about the book says, then you are done. No, it should be about they say, I say. But you still do what? You still reference in that regard. Allow me to go to cheating. Yeah, this one is, is, is one of our common problems that we're having at, uh, as an institution, and it has been highlighted by uh, the latter presenters. Cheating includes, but is not limited to the following students. Completing assessments on behalf of another student, copying from one another student during an assessment, or allowing a student to copy from you. This is the common problem that students, most students don't, don't understand. Unless the assessment type is not group work, it is not permissible for each of you to, to submit similar work. That one is not. Even though you might discuss as classmates or as a group, maybe trying to find a common understanding on a certain topic of a module affected or a unit, but the information should never be the same. Therefore, that is why each and every one of you within the group or the pair which discussed should be able to phrase it in their own understanding or their own ways so that it could not be. The other thing that other students do, whereby those are the cases that we normally deal with at institutional level, is that you'll find that the students uh, take uh, this, like they write then and saying, hi, I've written, yeah, I've written, then take my work, man, just change the student number and submit. We are having markers, and even our lecturers are able to pick that. It will be very, it will be very unfortunate if you are found to be one of those students who have copied either from a book way to way that is verbatim to verbatim or without acknowledging the source and there will be consequences for that but with the consequences on my following slide i mean slides i shall take you through so that you do understand on how fair we are as an institution in order to uphold the academic integrity policy at um, the university the second one is using social media, e.g. WhatsApp, Telegram, or other platforms to disseminate assessment information. Yes, as Prof. Magano have been on the chat saying, do not, do not do this and that, especially when coming to social media, WhatsApp and Telegram in particular. There are a lot of cases that we are dealing with. For example, in January last month, we were dealing with a lot of cases from, from uh, Telegram. During an exam, some students can say, hey, there are groups. People will be having a group, for example, they can say MIP 1501, that's the group whereby they always discuss. During an examination, some student can say, hey, help me with question number four. That is not allowed. Without you having to paraphrase whatever is being said, an examination, it means you being assessed as a student. With assignment, yes, but it will mean that you have to paraphrase that and acknowledge the source. We don't know how you're going to do that. But what we're trying to say is that you must always refrain from being dishonest um, in your academic. With Telegram, we understand colleagues or um, like uh, our colleagues and students that most students they find those links somehow. I don't know how they have them. Everything is there and all that. But however. You are strongly advised to say, do not, please do not, because of the consequences are not nice at all. The third one is submitting corrupt or irrelevant files. Uh, as uh, uh, the other colleague have said, uh, yeah, but I remember it, uh, it is from the exam. When the like, students should learn on how to perhaps maybe uh, do, uh, when we say corrupt files, some students are submitting corrupt files on tables. Students are smart, we know technology is technology, but um, at point, this, like it is also cheating. Even though we are making, um, uh, we are like, giving those students uh, second chance sometimes, but it is still cheating because of when you submit a corrupt file, knowing very well that you are going to, it's, like it's not going to open or going to be marked, or students uh, deliberately just take any document and put password there, of which that document wouldn't be an assessment that is 
should be uh, submitted by the student and they know that they're going to get a second chance. Then when you submit irrelevant files, that is what was said, that when you submit a wrong file for either an assignment or an exam, you're going to be awarded a zero. Hence, students are having more than one opportunity to do what to submit. You can submit and resubmit. And after submitting, before you click submitted you, or, or submit button, you can still view, go to preview, view the file that you have sent. Check if the number of pages which are on the attached are the same as the, the um, assessment that you have prepared. If not, remove it as uh, Dr. Mbakele have shown, then go back and do what and put the correct one. Then lastly, uh, it is buying completed answers from tutors or internet sites, contract or cheating. We do know that um, in, like in our college, we're having uh, modules which are having um, a lot of students, whereby some students will be uh, given portfolios to write, but they don't do that. We are having so much cases in that. And what you'll find is that there'll be some bogus emails or SMSs being sent to your phones and of which as the institution was working on trying to control that in which whoever who is using the name UNISA in trying to benefit themselves are being put to uh, justice. Because of if you, if there's someone who's selling you information, there are some, they call the same tutors, what, what, then you buy assignment there from them. Student, bear in mind that they will not sell it to you only. They might sell it to you and the other colleagues or the other classmates who are doing the same module with you. Then what will happen when the markers or the lecturer assess you, when they grade you, when they mark your script, they will, it will be very clear or easy for them to find the similarity in your responses. That is when that will be flagged. Then when that is being flagged, students, it will mean that there will be some consequences. And believe you know, those who are from metric last year or all those who have done metric, you do understand on what happens when you write your final examination or any exam, you will be told of what is going to happen. In most cases, they will tell you that you will be suspended from all any school for five years. And that will be a delay for your studies also, because of now you are post metric, you are at university, so you should be in charge of your schoolwork. That is why at UNISA we do understand that we are an Odell institution. Students, as Dr. Hanaway has unpacked, they have enough period of years to complete their studies other than at contact universities. Meaning that perhaps you are employed, you are the breadwinner at home. What you can simply do is what? You can take the modules which you know you'll be able to handle for that period, uh, uh, period time so that when you are not seen or being found as a victim of that. And the other reminder is this, if you cheat and if you are being taken to the uh, disciplinary hearing and you are found guilty, even on your academic record is going to show. So when you will be having to look for jobs in future, that will be a bet. Um, thing written on your, a bet loss rather, or, or information written on your uh, academic record of which the employer or the principal or the school governing body, which seems to be the component when they hire teachers, might say this is a bad example to our learners and we cannot want to be with this person. Um, moving forward, yes, this ones are uh, activities that also are, are violate academic integrity. We have uh, falsification, altering results or evidence, referencing a source that has not been used. Sometimes students will just write and uh, then they want to put a different source. As long as that thing is written, I mean, that information is not from them. They just take any source as long as we, we are going to say they have reference. That is also uh, cheating. Uh, altering results or evidence. For example, here is if you cannot write as a student, it's fine. You cannot write your exam. I've seen on the chat there was some clause whereby, I mean, some question whereby the student was saying, what if I cannot write due to medical condition? Yes, it's fine. We want, we want you to attach what? A medical certificate. But some students are capable of falsifying, like uh, defrauding that. Then that is will be more of a case of fraud. Students just maybe 
tip up the name of the actual patient or they just go to a corner with someone who can be able to falsify the information so that it, they will claim as if they were sick. And in most cases, you okay. see a lot of things Mr. not responding. Nikki, can I interrupt you? If you okay. can round up, summarize, I'm mindful of the time now. Okay. Because Gambo must also take um, part and then the major module which is coming and three more people. Thank you. Yes. Yes, noted, Prof. Yes, as I've said, uh, this one are more of the uh, reputation, not real reputations, but of that. But however, that is more of the act of uh, dishonesty by the students. And as I go forward, call, uh, students, you're going to get this copy, as I've said, on various uh, platforms. This is the more of the repetition of what I said, but this is taken from the academic integrity policy uh, on page nine, and this shall be found, and this is more of the same. And the other point that I would want to emphasize here is that students should always remember that there is always a declaration form. In each and every written assignment, there should be a declaration form which you attach to, so you declare that the work that was that is being submitted is your own. And the last one is consequences. Consequences. A student disciplinary hearing with punishment depending on the category of the rules violated. That is where you'll be finding that uh, if the act of dishonesty was detected by the uh, lecturer or the marker, there will be a memo sent to the office of the register whereby the student will be called to disciplinary, which in most cases result in cancellation of the module and suspension of a student for two to five years. So let us, by all means, refrain from that. Lastly, accessible documents for, for reference. Students, if you go to UNISA uh, website, you shall find for your perusal the policy for copyright um, infringement, the student, like the student, and also the student disciplinary code, not limited to this. And with that, um, I thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Shall we applaud Mr. Rankwiteke for this academic integrity? Very important um, part of our learning in higher education. Thank you very much. Is Mr. Shibambo in the house? Okay. Let's move to BPT 1501 in the absence of Mr. Shibambo. BPT 1501, students have been waiting for this module, but we had to do all these other areas, especially the last one, academic integrity. We are inundated with cases now that we are trying to finalize and the students are still awaiting their results. Oh, I can see hearts, hearts, hearts from students. They are excited now. <laughs> <laughs> Memwila and uh, Memwidipa, you, you, I can see your students are excited. They just want to listen to BPT 1501, the signature mod module. Hooray! So it means they're going to pay attention here. Over to you, madam, for your module. Thank you, Prof. Mahanu. Good afternoon to everybody. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, we are able to. If you can just uh, make it a presentation mode. OK, thank you very much. Uh, I would love firstly to make a smaller correction. Miss Mudipa has resigned, so it's myself and Mr. Monjani. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Munchani, welcome. Welcome to student orientation. Over to you, Memuila. Thank you. Uh, the BPT module as an online module, the signature module is different from the other module. It has, we have a model of presenting of our tutoring this module and the, mo the, mo the model the module the model that BPT is taking is a kind of a tripod mo model because it has three legs that 
are responsible for making sure that students are ultimately going to uh, receive a maximum learning when they are learning BPT. The first leg we have got the content specialist, which are the lecturers. The responsibilities of the lecturers are to set up plans and programs. That means tutoring plans, assessment plans, uh, whatever plans that is going to be involved in the tutoring of BPT. And we also ensure that we quality assure the content that is to be presented to students and we will also the content we are responsible for developing the, uh, the content that is to be tutored to students. We also ensure that we improve the module and in improving the module, we do some research. We develop, we research on the module so that the module should be a, a little bit easier and accessible to students. And the other thing we monitor and support the teaching assistant, which is the other, uh, the other leg of the tripod. The other leg of the tripod is the student support, which is other teaching assistants. The teaching assistants implement the plans, the plans that were developed by the content specialist. And then they support students throughout their academic career and they deliver content. And they also they control assessment. That means they mark, they guide you on how to go about uh, doing the assignment, but don't ask them the answers to the assignment questions, please. You can just request them. I don't understand here, then they will guide you. And we, we, we encourage that they use a collaborative approach because we believe that learning, it's not something that comes from within ourselves, but when we share ideas, we learn better. And hence, they will just facilitate your gaining of knowledge as you collaborate with your fellow students. And the third leg of the tripod, which is the last leg, is the ICT. And the ICT is responsible for creating uh, the sites. We have got two different sites. I'm going to explain them in the next slides. And they are responsible for student groupings. When you are supposed to be grouped, how are you grouped? And also they are supposing they are responsible for allocating teaching assistance to uh, groups. That means when they when you are grouped, you are allocated a teaching assistant in your respective groups and they are also responsible for solving technical problems that we have after you have been grouped because sometimes there are you know the technology sometimes it fails it doesn't do what it's supposed to do therefore all those kind of challenges are referred to ICT and ICT assist us in that regard. Uh, when after the, the, the ICT has grouped you, you have the MyUnisa, which is the Moodle platform. I've indicated the Moodle platform. When you log on MyUnisa, as it was indicated by uh, Dr. Mpahlele, there would be different uh, modules that will be uh, that you have registered. One of them is BPT. Uh, there's a screenshot there of uh, BPT what you are seeing presently, BPT 22 semester one site. Everybody now is able to see BPT uh, semester one master site because you are not yet grouped. And in this master site, you have access to official study material. Uh, let me, okay. You have access to this official study material. Every student must or should you should have gotten all your study material, which is a tutorial letter 101. And you have on the module site, the master site for semester one, you have access to announcement. 
unfortunately, I, I, I cannot go into announcement, but what I need to make you aware of in the announcement, we have only two announcements. The first announcement is about grouping, and the second announcement is about this orientation program. The first announcement is about grouping and access to assessment. And you also have, because the, 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 I couldn't take the whole uh, screenshot of the, of, the, of the module site, but you also have, also, you have additional resources. There's nothing presently in additional resources because you are not yet as yet grouped. Immediately you are grouped, then we're going to put some, in, some uh, additional resources in the additional resources tool. And you also have lessons one to six. In lesson one to six, you have, we have got the content of what is happening in BPT 1501. Normally we don't put the, the lessons on the uh, semester one side, but because of the new, ch the changing of the learning management system, we felt it was proper for us to put lesson because we were not sure when are we when will student be grouped even if you are not you are not grouped as yet but you have access to the study material and hence you have lessons six and there were supposed to be assignments in those lessons but you don't have those assignments in it, like assignment one we I've in, we have indicated that it will be posted in the uh, discussion forum and because you don't have a discussion forum on this on this site, so it's going to be embedded in in your group site. All the assignments, and then let's. I think assignment two. It was indicated that it will be uh, announced by your TA. But immediately your group, your group site, you are going to have access to the study material that you have now, and also the assignment will be put in the in the in the in the group site. Uh, let me go to the next slide. Oh. Not I can't move. moving. I can't move. <laughs> OK, go back to the original presentation where you see double slides when they are small. When they are small, OK. Yeah. OK, exit and then it will move. OK. And the presentation and show. Okay, then I go back again. Okay, the, yeah. that was a slide yeah. anyway. They will move fine. <clears throat> oh, it's it's going back to the to the first part. I can just. Okay, this was the, the 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 main site, which is the semester one site, and because we don't have the group sites, there's nothing to say much except that you have access to your to your uh, you you have access to the group site immediately. You are grouped, and then this would serve as a le lecture halls for you and your teaching assistants. Announcement: All the communication that you have with your teaching assistants happen in the group site you sh you if there is anything that you need any information that you need your first point of contact is your teaching assistant don't send an email to us before you communicate with your teaching assistants if you do that after you're grouped we are not going to respond to you but we are going to refer you back to your teaching assistants and all assignments are also found in your group site. And thank you very much. OK, now respond to questions. They are crying. I see tears. I see I'm more confused. Um, they, they, they are saying on the study material side, there's nothing on announcement. There's nothing. Um, also, when will we be grouped? When will we be assigned to a teaching assistant? Um, 
So those are the clarifications that they need. If, if you can respond to that, um, what does the welcome page say? What does the announcement site say for now? Uh, and when will they be grouped, etc.? And then they say, that I think submission date is 25 February. So there are so many now, I'm, I'm also getting confused. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Memwila, can you respond to the students queries? They are crying, I see tears, heartbroken. <laughs> Maybe I should share the site that they have access to. So that they are, they, yeah. maybe if they are not can, aware. If you can go to the mod, module site and, and then show them what they must do, because um, they are here for this module in particular. Quickly. Can they see the module site? I can and we, we don't see for now. Yes, we can see. Okay, okay. This is what you, all the students should be should have access to that's what we have yes now we can see uh -huh. what on this they do can they have an announcement them? which is this one oh let me log in because it did kick me out oh okay okay i'm in now they've got this announcement access to assignment and student orientation. That's what they have access to. These are the tools that they have for the semester one site. I indicated that they have official study material. In here, they have the tutorial letter 101. They've got additional resource. There's nothing in additional resource. Announcement that the one that is open, there are two announcements and they've got lesson one. These are the lesson one and the navigations, lesson one up to lesson six. Okay. So students have, they have access to the study material, but not assignments. Okay. If they, think they are grouped, that's when they will have access to the assignments. And as I've indicated, opinion is done by ICT. We are finalizing everything probably by, I'm not so sure, but the sooner we we, 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 we start, the better. But we, we are hopeful that this week we can start, they can start doing grouping ICT. Oh, so it means as soon as the students are grouped, then they will be able to access everything. Yes, as soon as they are grouped, they will have access to two sides, this side oh. and the other one, which is, which, uh, ends with the letter T. And oh. the ones that ends with the letter T, that's the, their group site, and they will have access to their assignments. Okay. Can you go back to announcement and open and so that they can see what is in the announcement? Because I see here we don't have this, we don't have that. Can you just go back to announcement and uh, see on the 4th of February, students, if you are watching, this is what Miss Milwa put in your announcement. If you can open it so yes. that they can see, read the announcement to them. Dear students, welcome to BPT 1501. Kindly be informed that you will have access to your assignment. Immediately you are grouped. In the meantime, go through tutorial letter 101 and the lessons found on the site. Ensure that you go through the lesson the lessons and complete all activities a week before the assignments opening day. You will not be able to submit your assignment if you did not complete a lesson. Thank you. Regards BPT 1501 coordinators. Thank you very much. And then that will mean that that was the message posted on the 4th. So, but for now, Memuila, it means they cannot read this because they are not yet grouped, or can they read it? Can they? Every student has access to semester one master site okay. because every registered student has access to the site for BPT. Okay. I yes. see here Tulu Fellow is saying that is very new. We didn't get that. 
So now we don't have official assignment known by UNISA. Oh, ma'am, I see by yours, it says BPT master's is just BPT or oh, oh, first semester. Okay, fine. So now it means all the students are able to see this. Let, 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 let's make sure that as students, we have claimed our My Life UNISA account, and then we are able to access the site. Um, and then when they experience challenges, Memuila, what must they do? Must they contact you now or? If they experience challenges, they must send us an email now because they are not yet grouped and take a screenshot of their challenge. Okay, thank you very much. I think that is clear, students. You take a screenshot of your challenge and you email Mem. Mem, you'll write your uh, details on the chat and Mr. Munchani Vincent also write your details on the chat. And then can they access tutorial letter 101? Yes. Okay, can, can you go to it okay. so that they can see where it is uh, located under study material? That's tutorial letter 101. Okay, students, that's your tutorial letter under study material it is there it is loaded so can they access it even before they are grouped ma'am yes because they have okay. access to the site immediately they register for bpt they they are linked to, to the site okay so it means uh, all the students can can group it i'm sorry can be able to go to announcement can go to study material in the meantime study what the tutorial letter is saying Meanwhile, we are waiting for ICT to group all the students. Thank you very much. Uh, the questions are just too many on the screen, but um, I hope you are not yet out, ma'am. Just go into the chat, give them your email address and uh, Mr. Monjani, and respond to the questions that are obvious. They are just too many. They are just too many, and uh, we don't want our students uh, to think that we are neglecting them. Let's respond to them. Uh, students and colleagues, we are left with um, 20 minutes. I'm going to be very much unfair to the remaining colleagues. I'm going to give each of you five minutes. Mr. Shabangu or Mr. Moloto, Ms. Masalesa, Dr. Kodisang, or Dr. Wells, and the two minutes to Prof. Patudi. Over to you. By four o'clock, we close the session. Over to you in that order. Thank you, Mem Wheeler. You can unshare the screen and then respond to all the questions of the students on the chat. Mr. Munchani also assist. There are many questions here. Let's assist our students because they were here for this module as it is a common one, and uh, they must just get their feet on the ground with this module. Can I request um, Dati Shabangu, five minutes for you? Okay, thank you very much, Prof. Mahanu, uh, for the time. I don't know if you can quickly see my, my screen. Not yet. Yeah, um, as we were introduced, colleagues, we are coming from the College of Education Student Support Office under uh, the tuition and learning. Is it uh, now visible? Click, on it. Click on it again. Uma. Prof. Yes, it's coming now. It's coming. Okay. Okay. What about you? What about you? Yeah. In the meantime, let me just carry on because most of the things I was going to present about are already covered by the colleagues who presented earlier. Just briefly from our office colleagues. Then I can do a magazine or no. How Mod, come can you mute the speaker, Mod? Can you mute the person who's speaking? What's the speaking? What's the problem? 
Osmotom. Tate Monchani, can you unmute yourself? Sorry, sorry, colleagues. Oh. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Prof. Colleagues, um, we are coming from an office student support from the College of Education. We are a team of seven members. Um, it's uh, myself, Shabangu, Mr. Muloto, Ms. Matume, Ms. Dihangwana, Ms. Tengwenya with Funza Lushaga, Ms. Ngobeni, and Ms. Maliwa. We are the only expert uh, student advisors in the college responsible for your basic student work stages. Coming from the application process when students are applying, we are there to advise. Through towards registration, when you need to select modules, when you need to understand your curriculum, we are there to assist you. And we are also through your third student work stage where you will need further support when you start dealing with the submission of assignments, any challenges with your exams, any challenges with your finances, any challenges with any, any requirement that you may require as a student. So we will be there to assist you throughout further guidance regarding your assignments, your agrotet, including the online exam. We've got a dedicated inbox, but strictly for online exams. The email address will be given right at the end. And we also there to guide you in terms of any challenges that you may experience towards the e tutoring, and we will be able to channel you or refer you to the relevant section. And then also colleagues within the College of Education, since we are offering this a teaching qualification, We've got the component of a teaching practice which will be mainly addressed tomorrow. But still, for further advices, we are the central point where we can be able to guide you regarding your placement, where to go, regarding mentoring, supervision, duration of your practical, as well as the relevant subject during the... Uh, we will take you through until you reach the fourth stage where you will be graduating with your qualification. The verification and auditing of the qualification, we will be able to take you through that process and confirm that you've met all the requirements. We will make sure that your academic record is audited so that you can get complete and be able to register with SAIS as a qualified teacher. <clears throat> it is important, colleagues, to share with you all our internal service departments. As a student with SEDU, you will be from time to time be required maybe to interact with the DSAR, which is the Directorate for Student Admission and Registrations. This may relate to your registrations, cancellation of modules, change of personal details, as well as updating your academic record when necessary. The second one is DSAA, where our previous colleagues presented they are coming from that section, Directorate for Student Admission and Assessment Administration. They are dealing with assignment submission, <coughs> examinations, as well as your year mark, issuing of timetables, agrotech and supplementaries. We also have got this teaching practice unit that deals mainly with placement of students into schools, allocation of supervisors, mentoring, practical challenges, we also have got study material production where when we have any inquiry about our study material, we will be able to communicate with. Now, as well as the DSF, which is regarding your Funza Lushaga, your, your NSFAS related cases, we've got CAC that talks to, as well as ISC regarding my life, my UNISA access, and then from the college, <coughs> we've got those telephone numbers from all of us as student advisors in the college. We've got a general email inbox for all SEDU related inquiries. Whether they relate to any issue, you are welcome to communicate with us using that central email. And then when it gets to the time of the online exam, please use the same two exams at unisa.ac.za as a dedicated 
inbox only for exams, not for other related inquiries. And thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Shabangu. You really respected time. Shall we applaud it? Mr. Shabangu. Mr. Shabangu is the one who's leading the team of student support, always on top of the game with the colleagues that he mentioned, Mr. Moloto, Ms. Dihangwane, Ms. Maliwas Kosana, Ms. Mod Ngobini. They are always there to respond to student queries. And um, even now they've been responding to most of the questions on the chat. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Shabangu and your team. Um, Ma'am, I call Ma'am Masalisa, the regional director, regional director to talk about the regions where we can go if we are in Cape Town, if we are in Durban, if we are in Eastern Cape, uh, let's do that. So, Mayor Masalisa, are you still in the house? Okay, it seems she's not here. Can I call Dr. Kodisan Chifiwa? or uh, Dr. Rosano Wells for counseling um, services. When we um, are troubled, we need counselors, students. Good, o over good to afternoon. You, Dr. Godisa. Okay, good afternoon. Um, let me try to load my slide. Uh, Um, for the interest of time, as it's trying to load, um, I would, of course, not go through the whole slide um, because of, of time, but the information, you, you can access it online and it will also be available. Um, I was presenting earlier on um, to another group of students to say, Student counseling is here for you to have conversation about your studies as a person holistically. And you don't need to come right at the end when you had to drop out of your studies or things are really difficult. Because what is said, my experience is that students normally Sorry, shy away. Dr. Kodisang, can you click on the presentation? We don't see it and the switch of the video. Um, switch off the video and then I click on I your did. presentation, upload it. I tried. I think due to the network I saw um, earlier on, we have been struggling to load uh, with okay. another presentation. Um, the presentation will be available to students then uh, unless they, uh, because I've shared my presentation and unless I and share and somebody can try to see whether you can share from your side. Okay, Maud, can you try to share it and then just talk over your slides, ma'am? Yeah, um, so I was still saying that um, what is said uh, is that most of UNISA students, they go through challenges on isolation, not reaching out. Um, but for me, the most important thing, the reason student counseling is here is that students can have a platform where they can talk about anything related to their studies. And I want to quickly talk about common questions um, that students experience because that could then resonate to most students. The first um, part is, uh, I wanted to talk about is the questions around uh just want to get to that for the interest of time yeah uh questions about careers even though we are sitting here with students who are registered but time and again people say i'm interested in becoming an educational psychologist but i'm currently registered for the teaching qualification am i in the right track 
sometimes some students are very clear to say, but my interest is on uh, helping kids with disabilities. Is this the right uh, choice of qualification? So it's important that you talk to the counselors about what you are doing, the type of the teacher you want to become, and also the options you have beyond teaching when you have got a teaching qualification or which qualification is the best if I want to become a teacher. And it's important to feel free to come through and have a conversation with counseling about this. The, the main issue when you are studying, I always say to people, when you are studying full-time um, uh, uh, distance learning, you are in the same position as if you are studying full-time. Because when you interact with students around study skills, students always say, I don't have time to study because everybody think I've got all the time in my hands. And then you find students saying, I feel overwhelmed with the study load. I don't know what can I do, especially now with people registering late or postponement of registration with the due dates of assignments. Most people will be saying, I don't know how to balance my studies with other roles. I need assistance with planning my studies. I'm struggling with time management. I don't know how to study so that I can prepare assignments or I have failed in exams. I'm not sure how to, to continue. And the role of the counselor is to help you, one, to manage your feelings of being overwhelmed and the anxiety, but also to help you to manage. You know, it might be your time. It might be your workload. It might be other relationships. When we look at a student at UNISA, we look at you holistically. We appreciate that you might be a mother, you might be a child, you've got other responsibilities. And with other aspects of your life, they also affect you as a person. So career counseling or our role as the DCCD is to also help you to cope with other aspects of your life that affect your studies. We are still living in COVID. Most of us, we have struggled. We have experienced loss on different levels, loss of income, loss of professions, loss of relatives. Um, some of us even have health-related issues from COVID or even sort of anxiety where you are worried, will I have COVID and all that, which is also affecting UNISA student. And as the DCCD, we have been supporting students who are stressed, who are impacted, who are affected by COVID and other issues that came with COVID. So it's important that you contact us so that you can have a space to talk about this issue. And, and our role is to have conversation with students during, before and after. We are not here to look at you as a student only even after you have completed your studies, student counseling is still there to help you with graduateness and also preparing for opportunities. This is important for me during your studies. It's important to learn how to cope with personal difficulties that impact on your studies to become a graduate. And I can imagine, especially if you are training to become a teacher, it's about effective problem solving and decision making skills all the time, but also managing relationships. At UNISA, you have started a relationship with UNISA, with so many stakeholders that you must navigate and negotiate your needs in all those relationships. And it's important that you learn the skills. Most of us, we don't know how to negotiate. And that's one thing that discourages students to reach out because they are always scared they're going to be judged or they look down on themselves due to self-confidence issue that if I reach out to my lecture, they will think I'm stupid or they will think I don't know how to speak English. But the most important thing is to reach out so that people can be able to support you. And that's the role of the student counselor so that you can be held and you can feel hold by somebody while you are navigating all the territories of UNISA. It can be very overwhelming, but it's possible and it can be done. I have already spoke about managing career and graduate schools. We also run seminars which are related to CV writing, online branding, and interview skills. I just want to finish up with one slide that is important. Um, it, it should be right at the beginning. 
if you go online, you will find that on our website, we have got all these resources. Some of them are downloadable resources like podcast, which we have recorded at UNISA Radio in partnership with UNISA Radio with different um, topics. So we have got self-help resources that are available 24-7 that you can use, whether it's about time management, whether it's about planning, whether it's about exploring your, your careers and all that. Due to the interest of time, I would like to end it here. It's unfortunate that we could not go through the whole presentation, but you're welcome to contact us uh, through an email. Uh, then we can have sessions on Teams or face-to-face. -face. I thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Kodisang. We, we really appreciate the snippets that you gave us. Uh, and uh, can we applaud the Dr. Kodisang colleagues and our students? Um, we we really appreciate this time. And uh, I've just spoken to Professor Van Veik, Mr. Monchani, and uh, Mem Muila. They are going to respond to the students' uh, chats that are busy here. Can I call Professor Patudi to, to come and close? give a word of um, uh, vote of thanks. Prof. Uh, Patudi, the you. floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Prof. Mahano, um, for, for giving me this opportunity you know, to convey our word of thanks to all the participants, participants uh, in this induction day. Uh, this is the, the first day of a three-day series uh, aimed at familiarizing our first-year students with UNISA systems, you know, in order for them to feel at home and also to be ready to tackle their studies head on. Um, let me start first by thanking the ex Executive Dean of Education, Professor Bine Magwe, for the warm welcome to the staff and to the guests of the day, our, our students. Uh, thanks. ED for reminding students that learning at an orderly institution, a choice which I believe was made with care, has its own advantages and disadvantages. You know, uh, sometimes learning at an orderly institution is a lonely journey, and this distance has even been made to grow even much wider by COVID-19. However, she promised that this lon loneliness said is there to make this journey comfortable and easy to navigate. And the steady staff is here at your service. Uh, I like the analogy that uh, the ED used of a, of a home with rooms, that even if we're in different rooms, but we all belong to the same household. So we have to pull together for, for positive results. And another, again, analogy that she used of uh, saying that uh, we're like a village. Uh, we know that members of a village are bonded together by being related to one another, sharing the same culture and even the language. So I want to say to you students that we have joined a village and you have to identify with the village ethos and common goals. And those goals are that of uh, becoming future teachers. Let me thank also uh, Dr. Neido speaking on behalf of the Dean of Students. The Office of the Dean of Students is there to represent your interests so that your aspirations are catered for. Uh, this office, as was explained by Ndadenato, is that it works closely with SRC, a student representative council, you know, to ensure cordial relationship between the students and the university uh, management. I really want to thank Ndadenato for sharing with us all the work that they do in the, in the, in the Office of the, of the Dean and that they are always at the service of the, of the students. Remember, you students, that uh, you are the valued clientele of the university. Without you, the university would not exist. Um, I'm also mindful of the time. Professor Mahano, I think she gave me two minutes, and it's already two minutes past four o'clock. So I am going to thank all the presenters for the day. I'm not going to mention them individually. I'm just going to, to thank all the presenters for the valuable information that you shared with students. And uh, I, I hope that this information shared with students will be used to uh, familiarize them, the students, with UNISA systems, 
so that they are able to navigate the systems to find information and the assistance also that they may require. For more information on the clarification, please contact the presenters in their personal capacities. They left their details, I saw them on the chat or even on, uh, on their presentations. Make sure that all your queries are attended to. And this was the purpose of the day, that all queries, questions are attended to. Let me thank also the, the program director, Professor Mahanu, for steering this ship safely and successfully up to its docking station. And also let me thank again uh, the committee that assisted her in putting together this program. If it weren't for you, we really wouldn't be having these students, you know, gathered in this fashion so that we could be able to share with them all what that is needed for them, you know, to become successful uh, in, their, in their studies here at UNISA. I liked the scripture reading that you shared with us early in the morning about planting a seed. And I think this must always remain with us students and also the staff members who are here. That planting a seed needs care, nurturing, you know, coupled with lots of water, nourishment. And we know that even the, the, the flowers, you know, when they bloom, they also need also a little bit of, of love. Uh, if you are a seed that is to grow into a plant, start now to take necessary care if you are to grow into a healthy a plant. And to the staff of UNISA, thanks colleagues for taking time to be with us since this morning. It's been a long, long, long day, starting from nine o'clock this morning up until now. It's, a, it's five past four here, but uh, we really appreciate your, your presence at this important uh, meeting. Lastly, let me thank all our students, our guests of honor. Uh, in my language, they always say that So you are the kings and the queens. And we hope that this relationship that we have fostered today will continue to be amicable and grow until you complete your studies. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Professor Patudi. And thanks to our dear students. Tomorrow, we are meeting with our first year teaching practice, second year teaching practice, third year teaching practice. And I hope we are going to really gain a lot and the presenters are ready to start with the first years up to the third year. Thank you to all the presenters. Professor Patudi has thanked you a lot. And all our students, we really appreciate the caliber of students that we have and we really wish you all the best. UNISA is here to build us and to give us careers so that in future we are also known as UNISA alumni. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord keep you. May the good Lord bless your families, your parents, and all your dreams may come through where you have challenges. May the good Lord help you. May Allah help you whatever faith that you affiliate to, may you be assisted and supported and may your dreams come true. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, colleagues. Bye-bye. Baita Basa. Uzuri. <laughs>